Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Pick Aside Podcast. My name is Joel Moran and I'm here with River Brown, Andrew Velez, and Joe Dells. It's now episode 309. In this episode, we are going to be giving week one overreactions. Talk about Tua's 466-yard performance, the Browns shutting down the Bengals, ranking new quarterback debuts, and more. This is now episode 309. Oh, week one of the NFL season has finished. We're on to week two now. Thank God. How are you guys feeling about week one so far? Um, A lot of ups and downs. Some highs, some unbelievable highs, some unbelievable lows for all of us, honestly, really. Um, our Broncos lost a game we shouldn't have. <laughs> the Giants uh, lost 4-0. However, my savior, Tua Tungvaluwa, my goodness, that man is on a different level than 95% of the quarterbacks <laughs> in the National Football League. It makes me happy, and it makes me feel blessed that I get to root for him and watch him every single Sunday, sometimes on Monday, sometimes on Thursday. If you're looking for uh, our reaction to the Jets news, because we're not really talking about the Jets, we talked about that on the Fantasy Reaction. Joel was on. Um, shout, out, shout out Fantasy Reaction. Shout out to you. Thanks, thanks for pulling up. Thank you. Um, and just real quick, because we're not going to talk about the Jets, but I do real quick just want to talk to Jets fans. And you too, because shout out to uh, the Joel Moran, show, Joel Moran Show, just put out a new video. Jets fans, <laughs> Jets fans, it was a bad night last night. It was an awful night last night. Aaron Rodgers, torn Achilles, confirmed, he's done. Guess what? Pick it up. It's a new day. The sun rose, and now we got to move forward with Zach Wilson. I'm tired of all of the Jets fans out there that are saying, why us? We're cursed. It only happens to the Jets. Suck it up, man. It stinks. Everyone's hurting. I'm giving you guys this one day. By the time you're here, it's going to be Wednesday. I'm giving you Tuesday to go and sulk and cry and be sad and sit in a dark hours, room. Man. You get 24 hours. But once Wednesday hits and you wake up, the reality is Zach Wilson's our quarterback. We still have one of the best defenses in the league. We still have one of the best running backs in the league. We still have one of the best receivers in the league. Life is going to go on. God willing, Aaron Rodgers is back next year. But I am tired of all of the Jets fans saying how this is just the worst thing that has ever happened in the history of sports. Does it suck? Yes. This Jets team was also 5-2 and two with Zach Wilson last year before Brees Hall went down to an injury. The sky isn't falling. This team is not going 3-14. and 14. Are they going to make the Super Bowl? Probably not. But they're not going to be a laughing stock. And also to all the people out there who hated on the Jets, who wanted us to fail, who want to see our demise, who want to see us face plant, I don't want your pity. I do not want your pity at all. Do not sit here and say, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, this is terrible. No, you wanted us to fail. I think we're going to perform. Everyone thinks it's, it's gloom and nothing's going to go right for this team the rest of the year. I think they'll be fine. They're not going to win 12 games, but they'll be fine. I do not want your fucking pity. Please keep that to yourself because we start all off season long in the comments <coughs> saying the Jets are going to fail. They're going to be a laughing stock, this and that. I do not care about your pity. Not even a little bit. Well, that was great. I'll be honest. Uh, Josh Allen, you're killing me, man. <laughs> you you, I, I, you got to stop. I, I, I'm hurting. You can't keep doing this shit every year, man. This shit, I got a headache. Uh, last night was rough for me. What a terrible way to end my weekend, man. I, I thought I had a solid weekend. You know, I had the Browns, Lit. Purdy. Lit. Chicago didn't look too good. Philly dragged out of a W, so, you know, you take it by the grace good. of God. Mm-hmm. I go chill in the first half of uh, the Bills and the, the Jets game. Go play my little men's league game first half. I'm like, all right, you know, unfortunately, Aaron Rodgers went down. Looks like we're going to take the game. Come back to my phone. He's throwing three turnovers. He just fumbled the ball. Um, bro, just got to lock in. I see uh, the discourse on him is nasty right now. It always is. So, bro, just got to lock in and get ready for the Raiders. He struggles I don't against know if the Jets. Always, he does. It's always nasty. I definitely wouldn't say it's always nasty. No, when he plays like this, it gets nasty. You can understand. Where it's coming from. He Yesterday has, was bad. He has the most three turnover plus games since then. I, mean, I know he has the most turnover since entering the league, but those first couple of years yeah, were it, ugly. It makes sense. He uh no, but it's getting bad because Bill's nation, like Bill's mafia is now saying a lot of nasty things about him. You know, we still got one of the best quarterbacks in the league. So, you know. 
it's up to him to bounce back. He never plays good against the Jets over the last two years. He has not played good against the Jets at all. Those are his big turnover games. So you got the Raiders coming up. You got the Commanders. You got the Jaguars. Buffalo Bengals soon, Miami soon. So you got a couple games to get back into the swing of things and pick your head up and play great again. Until you play the Jets. I think you play the Jets in Buffalo week nine, I want to say. So get your shit together, man. Listen, I love Dell's optimism, but no. What happened to Aaron Rodgers was the worst moment for me as a Jets fan no, in history. I, I witnessed, in my Jets fan history. I witnessed back to back years. We're one game away from the Super Bowl. To me, that I, does not matter. I, because I, to, to me, I mean, to me, back to back AFC I'm Championship. Proud, I'm proud of those seasons. I'm proud of those seasons. We weren't. We were a wild card team in 2009 and 2010. We won two road playoff games with the quarterback in Mark Sanchez. To me, is it is it disappointing that we didn't go all the way? Yes, but at the end of the day. We made it far, and I'm proud of those moments. What happened to Aaron Rodgers, I mean, come on. He is the first week one opening day starter to get injured in four snaps or less since 1950. Sucks. What what happened to Aaron Rodgers is one of the rarest occurrences in sports history that only happens to the Jets. Yes. That's just the shit I don't want to hear, bro. It's week one. We are 1-0. It is week one. I am not going to sit here and throw this season away because Aaron Rodgers got hurt. You have Dallas this week. By the way. We do. No, 100%. No one, I bet not, once, once Rodgers you. went down, nobody thought we were winning that game. I'm not telling you the season's over. I'm just saying that, oh, yeah, I'm upset, and I'm pissed off that that happened. This is a 100%. terrible moment, bro. I, listen, what you said, I'm here for. You you get up the next day and you go here. about that's your job. In, man. You got to handle bro. business. That was I'm, locked in. I'm, w- I'm with him. You, got, you have to have this mentality. You have... A playoff contending, you have a Super Bowl contending defense. It's a matter of what can your offense do to to be the counterpart to that elite level defense. Last night, Zach Wilson was just able to do enough to squeak out a W. And even even then, the game still went into overtime. The defense was otherworldly. Brees Hall, Dalvin Cook had a un, had had a great game together. It's just what is. That quarterback going to do for you week in, week out. But you won a game against the Buffalo Bills, a game that with Aaron Rodgers, people had you losing. Of course, people did have you guys winning as well, given the fact that your defense yeah, we is so elite. You guys were under the underdogs going into the game. To come away with that W is huge. You should not be looking at any week thinking, ah, this isn't it. Let's just get into ne- Let's just look forward to next week. Going against the Cowboys, not an easy matchup, but your defense is elite. Their defense is pretty damn good, too. Obviously, mm-hmm. we saw that this, this past Sunday night. But with your defense, you can beat about any single team in the National Football League. Is, are, is your expectations definitely drastically lower now? Absolutely. But you shouldn't be just completely giving up on this season when you have that high level of a defense. Oh, no doubt. I'm not no Debbie Downer. I agree with what Joe Dell just said. The point, though, is Joe that Dills. what happened to Rodgers, my goodness. You, you, if you would have told me that was happening no, it's horrible, before bro. it happened, I'd have been like, I will do anything for not for that not to happen. I, I will streak naked on the street for that not to would happen. You, um, I would do anything for that not like, to would happen. You that was the worst easy, thing <laughs> that can possibly you know? happen. You said anything. I'm trying to guess some. Uh, would you, uh, you know? <laughs> I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> He's not just have to think. I know yeah, his yeah, answer. I know his answer. <laughs> Shit, my answer might be the same. <laughs> my answer might be the same. No, my goodness. But hold up. But before we get on to the first topic of the show, week one pick them. We do them on the Patreon. The first week of the season, we released it on YouTube. But going for that, that pick them episode will be exclusively on Patreon. What were your guys' records oh. for week one? My record you told me was... The show. You're like a... Oh, my fucking God. My bro. record was seven and nine. Okay. And I thought about this because I feel like week one, I try to be too logical. Week one is always my worst season because I try to be too logical. But the truth is, week one, anything goes. The Rams beat the Seahawks. The um, Cardinals were in a close game with the Commanders. The Commanders were about to get upset. The Buccaneers beat the Vikings. I thought that that was going to be kind of an upset pick because I took the Buccaneers spread. But so many things happened. I mean, the Jets Seven beating the Bills well. with Zach Wilson. I mean, week one is always a crapshoot. It's my worst week all the time, every single year. The game that separated for me was that Lions and Chiefs. I did go 8-8 eight eight this week. So I finished 8-8. Eight eight. Mm-hmm. You had a good... You had the a Giants good and the Bills fucked me. 
Yeah. yeah, I would have had a good record if they won. I had a stretch of games where I just got wrong. It was the entire 4 p.m. slate. I picked the Broncos. Should have known better. I'll be honest. Don't do that. I picked the Patriots. You picked God, the Bears, too. I picked, yeah, because Christian Watson, and I thought Romeo Dobbs was out, but Romeo Dobbs caught the touchdown yeah. pass. You know Romeo Dobbs is that man. Uh, Broncos, Patriots, Seahawks, Chargers, Bears. Cut all wrong. All wrong. Uh, you had to know. That, way that's, way, that slate ruined me. Yeah, New England was the only one I could be like, come on. It was a close game at the end. Yeah, but you had to know. It was never going to happen. Yeah, probably. No, oh, it was really close. Jalen Hurts almost cost you guys the game. Penalties cost the Patriots the game. Yeah, Hurts, yeah. Uh, I don't know yeah, what the Mac fuck Jones was going on. Mac Jones played well. Kendrick Bourne was abusing you yeah. Kendrick Bourne was doing his thing. Mac Jones had a great game. Yeah, Kendrick Bourne had a nice route against uh, James didn't Bradbury. You, didn't you tell me the, 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 the Patriots were going to be able to run the ball on us? Zeke was pretty solid, I thought. He averaged like four yards per carry. Yeah, it okay. wasn't great. Uh, what Rem- Ramondre did do really great, though, was pass catching in the sure. backfield. He really was effective in that part. Gainwell was good. Gainwell was really good. That's our guy. He's hurt. Swift stinks. I, I'm sorry. He doesn't, he doesn't he, play. I mean, I was going to say, he didn't get any burn. <laughs> he c- dropped the ball. Why don't he, pass? He got one attempt. He dropped it. One, one, Gainwell one a target, I should say. I, know, I don't think he I practiced today. Yeah, uh, he, he did not. That's not great. It's pain. I mean, we have another running back. We'll be all right. Yeah, Penny will probably suit up then. And then Hurts. Oh, wow. Him. No, I'm saying he's also he is legitimately one of our running, running, backs. running back. I'm That's sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean on. to say it like it's that. Racist. But he's legit. Yeah. Uh, is it, Look at this guy. I mean, I can't be racist. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be racist. <laughs> Look at this guy. That's a stereotype. It is fringe racism. Fringe. No, he. Uh, I you probably can be stereotypical. Right. That is stereotypical. I could be prejudiced. You could be stereotypical too. I stereotypical. Yeah, it fits the profile. Called a running back. Uh, what do you oh mean? well. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Be better. Damn near MVP. Uh, oh, well, I, maybe I stated it wrong. He's going to be a part of the running game. Would you like me to be more specific? I like that. I, I love that. Dang. All right. That was actually Thanks. better wording. That was now. perfectly okay. worded. I'm sorry, guys. I, I thought we, I didn't think we were being dicks on here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. You're not going to call Jalen Hurts a running back. Get away with it if I'm on the show. We've called Lamar These Jackson guys, a running back at one point. And that is wildly, wildly But I think it was jokes. Giggles. Everybody watching right now, listening, Dells. Is an ally. <laughs> <laughs> We're here, man. He's not. Lamar. <laughs> he's, he's not. He's not. Who, your favorite quarterback is Brock Purdy. You can't talk to me. My favorite quarterback is not Brock Purdy. It's the other guy. It's Josh Allen. Oh, even Just better. not right? helping your case. Yeah. That is even better. What are you talking about? <laughs> My number two is Fields. I thought Purdy is two. No, he's oh. like three. Okay. Four is Stroud. Come on. I'm here. Right, twin. Yeah, come on. Stop it. I don't. Your favorites are just all the physical, strong men. I'm not gonna, you know, you you just like weird stuff. I ain't gonna, <laughs> you know, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna get into what you like. Your kinks is weird. <laughs> That's all that is. Man. I gotta say, I, I know. I yeah, add it's, AR to that list for sure. Yeah, he's you know he's tough. He's, he's tough. tough. So for we we mentioned week one pickums. We all had a 500 sub 500 record. Let's talk about Mojo because we made some bets. We did. We did player props. We also did money lines because Mojo has two apps. It's the regular Mojo app. It's a sports book only operated in New Jersey. But they also have Mojo Fantasy, which is in 19 states. And you can bet on player props, enter contests, and they have cash prizes. We're going to have our own contest this weekend for week two. Let's we'll go. let you guys know more details on that on the second podcast of the week. But, Drew, player props, who did you take week one? So I had a few of them. I was feeling a little bit bold, trying to have a little bit of fun for opening weekend. But... I went with J.K. Dobbins over on his rushing at 58 and a half, going against the Texans, one of the worst rush defenses in the National I believe they were the worst rush defense in the National Football League last year. I thought that that was a lock. Unfortunately, J.K. Dobbins out for the rest of the season with a torn Achilles. Devastating for him. One of the most unlucky football players that there, that there is right now in the National Football League to not just tear his ACL, but now two seasons removed from that, tear his Achilles you really feel bad for the guy, and you pray that he gets back soon. Jahan Dotson, you know that I've been high on Jahan Dotson all offseason long. I took his over on receptions, and then I also took him anytime touchdown. I folded. I put more money on him scoring a touchdown than I did on his receptions. Either which way, the reception said it was three and a half. That was easy money, cash money. But then the anytime touchdown, he didn't end up scoring. Derrick Henry, this was probably the surprise of the, of the day for me for the fact that he didn't see... 50% of snaps at the running back position. Tajay Spears outsnapped him. That should never happen. We've never seen that since Derrick Henry has been the lead guy in Tennessee. I took his over on, on rushing attempts at 18 and a half. I believe he only had 15. That was a loss for me. I took Aaron Jones anytime touchdown. 
That was a lock. He had two touchdowns. I tried to make up with the with the loss of Derrick Henry with Keenan Allen over six nine and a half. That hit, understanding that Justin Herbert and him just have a great connection, and Keenan Allen's going to get his. But I think Keenan Allen only finished with like seventy six yards around that. He st- he stalled at seventy six for basically the entire fourth quarter. And then my worst loss. This one was tough, man. Darren Waller, four and a half receptions. I put a hundo on this one. He had three receptions in one drive. That was right as the second as the second quarter was about to end. And then he just did not get another look the rest of the game. But what saved face on the weekend to, I guess, the start of the week, those New York Jets, something about it. I saw Zach Wilson take the field. And you guys like to say that Zach Wilson really doesn't have that aura, but something about him Who taking that? that field, <laughs> I felt the I felt the aura. I felt his. I felt the just the, the vibe switch. I said something magical is happening tonight. I'm putting some money on Zach Wilson. Got him at 27 cents. We took that one to the damn crib. Shout out to the New York Football Jets. Unfortunate that you guys are going through some pain. Absolutely. I would never wish that on my worst enemy. It just so happens that I got two of my best friends next to me that are Jets fans. So I'm crushed even more so. But a great win regardless. You had one of the worst moments that you're going to have. But you know what? At least it was kind of glossed over with the fact that you were able to walk away with a W against a division rival. Week one mojo player props. I hit on two of the three. First one. Calvin Ridley over 64 and a half receiving yards, Easy cash. eight receptions, 101 yards, a touchdown. I don't, I don't even forget about what Bro you probably said. had that in the first half. Yeah, he did. I mean, Calvin Ridley was exceptional. Next what one, Brock say? Purdy. I said that Christian Kirk could potentially have more yards than him. He was wide receiver three. That's concerning. I have in my fan, two of my fantasy teams. I'm concerned. I'll be honest. He just did not get looks. I don't understand why. Number two, I had Brock Purdy under 226 and a half passing yards. That hit, he finished with 220, I so believe. He was right around there. He could, I mean, oh my God. There was a third down play. You took he that off hate alone. It. Ooh, my yeah. goodness. I was saved by the bell. They were blowing the Steelers out, so he didn't need to pass too much. Yeah, yeah. Then a third one, <laughs> said, yeah, yeah. Lamar Jackson. I mean, I took the over on his passing yards. I thought he'd have a great performance. New offensive coordinator, new offensive weapons. And Lamar Jackson let me down. Come on, Lamar. <laughs> oh my God. That, that Texans defense, the offense didn't look great by any means, but that defense looks solid. That defense is good. Talk to me about the Falcons, bro. Didn't you lock up? I thought that was going to go next. No, this guy can't <laughs> do that, bro. Yeah. <sighs> your first time, bro? Jeez, I thought you... Sorry. Okay, <laughs> apologies. Here we go. Lock in. So I took the Falcons spread because I thought it was a little bit too low. You know, three and a half for a team that Falcons, they got a lot of additions on the defensive side. They have Arthur Smith. They have Desmond Ritter. They have Kyle. They have a lot of offensive talent, but defense, they upgraded big time in the offseason. Then the Panthers, rookie quarterback, fresh head coach. You know, they have no real receivers. Shockingly, when I looked at the numbers, they ended up winning by 14. When I looked at the numbers, just glance numbers, total yards, Carolina won. Passing yards, Carolina won. Rushing yards, Carolina won. Average yards per play, Atlanta won by one, but it was the turnovers. Fumbles, Carolina had a tur- uh, fumble, two interceptions, even sacks allowed. Carolina had more sacks than the Atlanta Falcons. So it was just those turnovers that were big for them. Like third down efficiency, Carolina was better at in the third down. It was just them turnovers, a fumble, two interceptions. Hard to recover from that, especially when you don't have nobody big time on that offensive end for the Panthers outside of their rookie quarterback. So I thought the spread for that was a little bit too low. Atlanta looks like a clear better team how are you so, feeling about the panthers winning the division i flipped so oh, it doesn't matter here we go what you been, now i picked the falcons okay. two episodes ago oh, i you flipped did? quickly oh i didn't even remember we that. had our playoffs at the falcons he didn't, that when you did. he didn't even mention them in power rankings i had no oh. idea where you had them well the falcons weren't in it we, we did a, we did the playoff thing i said the falcons winning oh, the division okay, yeah, so I forgot about that. flipped quickly yeah these guys suck good move now, those were our week one player props now going on to week two you guys can check us out pick us out podcast we'll be dropping our week two player props, and we'll see if we win. I mean, I had a good week. Drew, sounds like you bounced back. I can't. The, the Waller game really put had, me in a little bit of hope, but the Jets blessed me. What you had him doing? I had him getting four and a half receptions. He had three in one drive. That was it. I mean, it, that no, game it was, was just, horrible. Yeah, that game it was, was really shit. bad. I was asleep for 90% of it. Yeah, what happened to you? I was just, I KO'd, bro. I was on the you couch. Drunk? Watching yeah, four high not really. Yeah. <laughs> not even, man. <laughs> <laughs> I really was just tired. I was on the couch. Feet propped up. KO'd. Woke up at nobody, 2.30. Nobody woke you up? Nah, man. 
good <laughs> response, bro. <laughs> I thought you guys were going to say something. You should have nothing to say. <laughs> it's all right, man. People were, were Saying putting, you were out, putting out allegations on my 100% hand. said you were ducking. Uh, yeah, I had, we, to, we, I had we, to clear yeah. up those allegations. We told him. We quickly. told him, though, you don't duck. No, no. never. Yeah. No, we said you, you ducked. Uh-huh. Did I? <laughs> I said you got drunk. He was kind of right. It made more sense to me. You just got drunk, fell asleep. I would probably do some shit like that. Fall asleep on the couch. And, you know. A drink or two is not going to put me on my ass. Yeah. Kind of a lightweight. Oh, says you. Okay. You are a lightweight a little bit. I mean, Riv, you're the biggest lightweight here. I drink the most. You're the biggest lightweight here. But I drink the most. You so. are the biggest lightweight ah, here. You, sure. you might drink the most, but your tolerance still feel like it's the uh, lowest. Joel's being quiet right now for a reason. That is the fact. Am I, am I the biggest lightweight? I think when you get drunk, though, you just get very... Uh, I think you're lying. Well, I don't know what the word looks like. Touchy-feely? Yeah. Got him. So I'm just the most outgoing when I'm drunk. But yeah. I think... It's very I, loud. I don't, I, yeah, I don't think I'm the biggest lightweight. No, I think if like everybody's going out to drink like an hour in... You you're have drunk to be, first. You have to be to be fair, out. though, how many drinks <laughs> have I got an hour in, though? I, I, I drink the fastest. Mm. You know, I'm already like three in. Yeah, you don't like, know how to pace yourself. Because fuck that. I don't I'm trying disagree. to get drunk, trying to get drunk. Yeah, I'm trying to get it fast. I'm trying to get it up <laughs> fast, you know? Wow. So we're in love with Mojo Come Fantasy. The hell we'll, be, down. we'll be giving our player props every single week. It's a new app that turns sportsbook odds and selection into fantasy contact contests. Here's how it works. There are thousands of NFL and MLB player props. You build a portfolio, and the better your portfolio performs, the more you cash in. Pick as many props as you want and try to beat the crowd. It's a whole new way to play fantasy. The props act like stocks, so you can buy and sell live all game long. It's the only fantasy app that lets you make moves after the game starts, so you're not stuck with a bad pick. You can cash in on a hot start or just hang on and let them ride. That's it. Make picks, make moves, make money. Check it out on the Apple App Store now. They're coming to more states and adding more sports soon. The streets need them in New Jersey. We need them terribly in New Jersey. Week one overreactions. Here we go. Who wants to go first? I'll let you go, Drew. So I have two. I'm going to save one. I have five. Two MVP. That's, I had to know. That's what it's, that that's is one coming. of them. Was that, that your pick or was that your dark horse? No, that was my pick. Um, my overreaction is that the Los Angeles Rams are going to make the playoffs. I like that. They will not win the division. It will be the Niners. However, I do believe the Rams will make the playoffs some way, somehow. Going into Seattle, coming away with that W, very impressive to me. It was really a tale of two halves. That first half was definitely closer than what the second half ended up being. That's where the Rams ended up really putting some distance between the two of them. But Stafford, reminding the world, reminding those that watch football that he is still one of the best to ever step in between the lines. He was throwing dot after dot. He still has great zip on his ball. The touch, the placement, the finesse that he had. He had this throw on the sideline over two defenders. Oh, my goodness. It was a thing of beauty. Finished with 334 passing yards. No touchdowns, no INTs. Really just played an extremely clean game. The offensive line, which was a huge question mark last season, did not allow any sacks this past Sunday, and also some credit because he's throwing to a first-year receiver in, in Puka Nakua, who we talked about in the fantasy reaction last night, and Tutu Atwell, who up until this point really has been disappointing. He, Tutu Atwell goes six catches, eight attempts, 119 yards. Puka Nakua, 10 catches, 15 targets. That's a regular. And that's for the fact that if Cooper Cup is not with the boys right now, suited up, he'll be back hopefully by week five while he's on the R right now. But someone's got to catch the ball, and that's what happens when you're in an offense with Matthew Stafford and he gets comfortable with you. He's going to force-feed you the ball. 15 targets for also putting up 119 yards. Kyron Williams was able to get into the end zone twice. And the defense only allowed one touchdown. That was to DK Metcalf on a fade route in the, in the red zone, I believe. But Aaron Donald getting back, getting a sack. The pressure that they were getting on Geno just made him extremely uncomfortable. Geno didn't even throw for 150 yards. The, the Rams defense went into Seattle and put on a clinic and made a statement that they're still here, and when they're healthy, they're still one of the better teams. My overreaction is that I have the Rams making the playoffs. So I'm you right. don't have Seattle. That would be the, that would be the one. That yeah. would be the one, man. How many overreactions do you guys or have? Or honestly, we'll see. I only had we'll one. See. Oh. Okay, so I, mean, I can I'll, think of more. I have I have five, but I'll narrow it down to two. No, um, give your five. I've, give I've, your five. I've, I was like, fuck it. I'm just gonna list Says them you. all. Says you. Says oh, you. You have no right. Yeah, that's you fact. have no that right, sir. All right. Well, I got two now. Okay. Yeah. Well, give me your two first. I'll give you one. Okay. Brock Purdy makes all pro. Ooh. Ooh. All pro's nuts. All, all pro's here. crazy. Listen, listen, listen. 
He's going to throw 30 to 35 TDs, bro. He's going to have like four interceptions. If he's, if he's all pro, they'll win 14 games. If he's all pro, Joel has to get Brock Purdy's number tattooed on his back. For sure. If he gets all pro, yeah. All pro is crazy. All pro is here. All pro is crazy. Number 13. <laughs> it's Kurt Warner. He'll, he'll, they'll win 12, 13 games for nice. sure. Yeah. He won't throw more than 10 interceptions this year. I doubt it. No shot. He'll get 30 to 35 you know what, TDs. Bro? And I actually, I'm glad that you said this. Uh, I don't know if I have him winning all pro. Great overreaction because that's an insane statement. Pro Bowl, that's a lock. That's a really good. Ah, pro Bowl stink. Let me not say lock, but that's a, that's a better statement in my opinion. Targeting past the sticks, which I hear Brock Purdy struggles with. 11 for 13, 168 passing yards, two touchdowns, zero INTs. Mm. A perfect, perfect. Who said he struggles with passer that? Passer rating. There's members. Members at the present. pick aside uh, building? I just know that there's been disrespect on his name. Oh, yeah. So course. you think he's a top 10 quarterback, Riv? He wins. Uh, if oh, he's reaction. He, no, well, <laughs> technically speaking, <laughs> if he is if an all pro, pro, he's top, top two. He's top two. Ooh, I he like that. Top two season. Oh, I'll push that. Yeah, okay. 100%. No, no, no. Holmes, no. So, Josh. But if he had type of season, you think he's a top 10 quarterback. He's got to no, be better if he, than if Tua. He gets, he's if, be if, he gets, if he gets all pro, overreaction of shit. But if he gets all pro, I won't say he's top 10. I'll be like, he's top 15 for sure. If he gets an if all gets pro, which all means pro, he, he is the top two, quarterback two in, in his league. position. Like, right, he's not a top 10 quarterback. Because I think, no, because I think all pro just means statistics. So he can have a great. I think he can have an amazing statistical season. So he's gonna have the second best quarterback statistically. Season. Overreaction for sure. Uh, it's, over, it's overreaction. It is an so overreaction. Here. Um, I mean, it's it's, oh, it's wow. not like uh, does Joe Burrow have an all pro? All pro? He doesn't. Think so. Oh, he no. doesn't. No. Oh fuck. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, that sucks for you. Um, oh, Jalen Hurts has one though now, doesn't he? Right? He does. He does. Ah, he cute. Does. See, he didn't have an insane. Uh, from a passing standpoint, it was like 21 He was second in MVP. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. he, he was really good, though. He had yeah, 13 rushing touchdowns. Purdy's 13 yeah. wins. He has 35 TDs. I mean, seven you're, t- you're telling me that Brock Purdy's going to finish top five in MVP. That's what you're saying. That's your overreaction. I'm that's, with it. That's your overreaction. We're here. Ah, fuck yeah. it. Fuck it. He's going to have the wins. He's going to have good numbers. That, that's what I'll be saying. Overreaction. No, no, no. That's yeah. what I'll be saying about the playing both sides. You'd be trying to say Brock Purdy is going to break out in this huge way, but you're not ready to stamp him as this top but 10 it's, quarterback. It's his overreaction. So wait, he's not a, a top 10 quarterback. Wait, Why wait, wait. Wait, 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 that's he's, he predicted wait, 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 Dels, 30 Dels, Dels, yeah, Dels, That's fine. Dels, when we had our last episode, did I not predict Purdy would be a top 20, 15, 8 ish, 18 ish quarterback? Why can't you go to top 10? Because I don't think he'll be top fucking 10? top there's 10. So there's so many good There's so many yeah, yeah, guys. Yeah. Look, yeah. You, want, you want me to be crazy? He's, he's that's just playing both sides. That's what he's doing. No, you want me to be nuts. I'm being realistic. He's trying to semi have a team. Like Kirk Cousins. 18 is like fucking Tannehill in You had him at bottom five. If he goes from 25 to 18, that's a great That's a great jump. Rev, in your opinion, who's better, Kirk Cousins or Brock Purdy? Kirk Cousins. Okay, right. So, like, Kirk Cousins so easily better than Brock Purdy. And nobody would dare put Kirk Cousins in the top ten. You just so why all pro, I understand. Bro. I listen. It's hard it's to defend you here. It's an overreaction. Yeah, that's it's an, over- an overreaction. Has to be at least realistic. What are we doing? That's why my overreaction. No, the fuck I still, it does. I still yes, it feel does. Says who? It's an overreaction. It. You know what? He heard you my overreaction. You just said he's gonna be an all pro. Listen, they could have the best record in the NFL. He could throw a thirty a plus well, touchdowns. Can they have the best he could record in the NFL? Four thousand yards. Can they have the best record in the NFL? Not with the Cowboys. No, no. But can they? No. So oh the, my god! Not over the Cowboys. But what? can they? I hate yes. when he gets yes, into they this can. Movie. They can. They, they can. They, can he not throw can. thirty fucking touchdowns? Yes, he was on pace to last year, and so. he's not going to throw ten interceptions. I don't think. I don't, I don't think and his throwing, percentage is going to be extremely high. I don't think he's throwing thirty plus touchdowns. He'll That's get smooth. damn close. He's had two touchdowns every single game last year, and two touchdowns week one. What's two times seventeen, bro? Thirty-four. I don't think he's getting to thirty. That's all I'm saying. Two times seventeen. You don't think he's getting to thirty? He has CMC. He has Brandon Ayuk. You don't think he's getting to thirty? I told you so. Debo. Yeah, I was yeah. right. Yeah. First of all, count as the bet. Nah, wait a right minute. That For number. Brandon Ayuk to have this breakout year that you believe in, Purdy has to be pretty fucking great. He just had a hundred yards two days ago and two tutties. Two. Say it again. Two tutties. Who threw it to him? Yeah, Brock oh, Brock. that's what I thought. What breakout season with Brandon Ayuk? I already think he's a top ten wide receiver. No, no, no. You you may think that. Sk- <laughs> wait, what? Ten. You may whatever. I don't. I'm not even gonna go back and forth on that. You may think that skill wise, but for him to have the numbers, he had he barely cracked the thousand last, last year. year. He 
Yeah, he cracked a thousand. Yeah, a thousand Barely. Last year. Like, that was mm-hmm. fifteen. Yeah, he, that's a nasty Eight thousand. Touchdowns. You want him to get to the thirteen hundred range? Yeah. And for him to do that, no, Purdy's gonna no. have to do. Okay. Even, yeah. All right. Yeah. Brandon yeah, Ayuk. Who else they got? Brandon Ayuk. Fuck else they gonna do? Brandon Ayuk with Sam CMC. Darnold, Sam Darnold. Remember He's Sam Darnold? Not bro, remember, that. remember, Purdy's supposed to throw ints. He was supposed to throw two the other day. That's that's also supposed to get benched by Steelers secondary. Not that good. You you knew that. Pat Pete said that he was gonna pick. I thought it was gonna be better. I thought the passers would get to him at least. It did a couple times. T.J. Watt got to him a couple sacks. times. T.J. Watt really, one of them once. They missed he Cameron the Hayward fumble. on the inside a lot. Yeah, he, he wasn't there. But they had one yard. What I'm telling you is that I never predicted Brandon Ayuk to have this dominating statistical season because they have CMC, they have Kittle, they have Debo. It's really hard to have like 1,400 yards when you have so much great other weapons. That's like game. not true because A.J. Brown just had 1,400 yards and Smitty just had 1,200. That's literally not true. Dallas if Goddard you nice, was, you nice. How long was Dallas Goddard injured for? That's a great You question. guys don't have a running back like CMC who demands 20-plus carries a game. He had 22 carries. You have a run committee that yards. gets about 20 carries a game. Yeah, but I'm just saying, it's hard for – is it not hard for you to get like 1,400 with yeah, all those if, weapons? If you're in a great offense, it's, 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 it's possible. Really There's 1,400 surprises. Debo is Samuel ceiling. had 1,400 receiving, and he also had what? 600 rushing? Yeah. Ayuk was in a dog My brother house. in Christ, you, Dallas, saying, Dallas played 12 games. It's he had 700 in yards in 12 games. They didn't games. have CMC, though, that year, too. They didn't, but I they mean, still were still heavy run. That's Elijah a huge Ma- addition to your offense. No though. doubt. That's 100% sound. But that's also with the fact of they were switching out, in and out, Elijah Mitchell. And I'm blanking on who was the other guy off the top of my head. Was did McKin- was McKinnon on that team at that time? I don't think. It was but, I, else. but I know for a fact Elijah Mitchell was getting a lot of burn towards that time of the season. But regardless, that offense ran through Debo while Ayuk was there, while Kittle was there. But you're right. CMC is a different animal, different beast way more versatile than any running back that they've had and probably since Gore. So probably I, more versatile than Gore. Oh, oh no, sure. for sure. Yeah. He's a better running back. I mean ultimately ultimately I'm saying an Ayuk from a talent perspective and just what I know he can do from a skill perspective, I do think he's in the same tier as the Devontae Smiths of the world, T. Higgins. I think Brandon Ayuk is a legit number wide number one wide receiver. He's an elite player. He's really good. I don't know if he, he's top 10, though. He's an elite player. The top 10 is so crowded. When we get to the back end of the top 10, it's super crowded with a bunch of different players. He's better than Monra. Yeah, I think he's better than Monra. He definitely threatens the outside better than, than better than Amon Ra. He has he has he's more physical at the catch he's point bigger. than Amon Ra. He's bigger. He's more explosive after the catch than Amon Ra. He's a better route runner than Amon Ra. But then you can better route a top runner five than Amon? route runner in the league. Oh my goodness. Top five? He's a great Brandon route runner. Brandon Ayuk is an elite route runner. It's a lot of elite route runners, though. Like, you you're think right. top five? You're top right. Five Brandon Ayuk, can, he can step into that conversation with almost anybody. He's that good. And he black, blocks his ass off. He does. Yeah, Ayuk, he, had, he had a big Ayuk block on the not, CMC touchdown. He's not a better route runner than Jet. He's not a better, better route runner than Tay. Not a better route runner than Diggs. Not a better route runner than Keenan Allen. Mm. I think that's debatable right now. Him and Smitty are really close. Is he a better route runner than CD? Probably not. Ah, <laughs> that boy. That's close. Like, I think that's legit close, though. That's I conversation. Would I would take CD. I would take CD as well. I think he's, like, in the 7-8 range. Like, Brennan Ayuk, to me, CD Lamb. What? You know, CD Lamb's going to have better production, but I think Brennan Ayuk is just as good of a player as him. Like, Brennan Ayuk is that good to me. Nah, CD, CD's different. CD is different. CD's, CD's different. the only when, weapon when in we gonna, receiver in his offense. When are we going to put the respect on CD name? It's not. It's not res- I apologize it's not, already. It's not, a apologize. Lack, it's not a lack of respect to CD Lamb. i out the doghouse. It's just respect <laughs> to you Brandon have, Ayuk. Yeah. It's like, no, CD, we all CD respect. Yards. We all respect Brandon Ayuk. But CD's, I feel like, is on a different level. I feel yeah. like he just doesn't get talked about enough because he's not in a years. super pass heavy offense like other wide receivers well, that rack up. I want you to production. thank Brock Purdy at the end of the fucking it's still not year a pass heavy offense. when he That's gets 1,200 yards. That's still a run heavy offense, though. That's not. A but he's going to get twelve hundred yards. Brandon Ayuk is going to have twelve hundred yards. He should. This year. I think Brandon Ayuk's that good. He should have that. Well, he, yeah. But if he's going to have twelve hundred yards, he could possibly get to thirteen hundred yards. And if he does that, what are you going to say then? Oh, well, this is still a run heavy offense, Bro, brother. Man, it don't really matter. It is. I mean, the the Eagles, to a degree, last year with two one thousand yard wide receivers were kind of run heavy too. That's my. But that's my. That's, that's, that's also that's what a, hurts. That's also my yeah, point. That's also, and they have CMC. You know. And Smitty, they don't have the Eagles didn't have like a Pro Bowl running back. Miles Sanders made it, but you know, he's the, I'm talking about from I a talent Smitty. perspective. Smitty in a run heavy offense, like you said, had 1,200 yards and seven touchdowns. If if Ayuk is that talented as what you say, well, he, thousand, he should he get that. He had eight last year, easily. Uh, but then okay. again, you don't believe in the quarterback, so this all makes sense. No, listen, Brandon Ayuk, <laughs> even it's a Kyle Shanahan offense. You know that offense is going to be efficient. It's, of course, we're talking yeah. about just the coaching tree with Shanahan, McVay, McDaniel. 
that's arguably the three best offensive play callers in the league right now. They make it, they make the offense really Reed, quarterback but, friendly. Yes. Always, Andy Reid is up there too. He's number one. But just the easy buttons, I don't know, man. When you look at what McVay, Shanahan, and McDaniel do, they just kind of make it. They just make yeah, the Mahomes, super Mahomes efficient. makes a lot of shit. Yeah, Reid's a great play caller. Don't get me wrong, but Mahomes makes a lot of shit happen where. That tree kind of, you know, guys sometimes just wide the fuck open. You're like, how how is this happening? Like, we why is no one guarding Tyreek Hill? With Matthew Stafford and no receivers, light up the Seahawks, yep. you know? I thought the Chiefs had a chance to do that versus the Lions, and really, I, I, I kind of I, I kind of chop it up to Mahomes not having that great of a game. They I know the receivers dropped won passes, that game. but Mahomes <laughs> didn't play well himself. Kadarius Toney just wasn't on the field. They would have won the game. Jim Lee, if he just didn't play, they would have won. Receivers dropped some balls, but he missed some reads. Yeah, yeah like every pass to Sky Moore was kind of inaccurate. You know, Sky Moore could have done more. To Darius, didn't he drop one and it was an interception? Yep. Yeah, that's what, that's, the the that's what cost him the game. And there was another one, the last drive, where he had it. It was a little bit behind him, but a catchable ball that would have put him in field goal range, and he dropped it. Should have been better, but I'll move on to my overreactions. Was 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 my overreaction painful because it was Brock Purdy? Because no, if I, I said anybody I else, I don't I mind. Feel, I just I you just, don't if, mind. If, no, if you think that Brock Purdy is gonna be that good, I just want you to. He just wants really, to try to catch you. I just really he want you to, to be like. Me. I he think he's this you. good. I don't think he's you. good. I think he's incredible. So I don't think he's top it. ten good yet. It's fucking year top two. Top ten incredible. I mean, if you're incredible, if you're a he's a franchise pro, quarterback. I mean, come on. I bro. think no, I don't think so. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, has to prove a little. I mean, I understand it's only six games, but notice I. I never said I you can't get to twelve hundred. You lost me when you said fourteen hundred plus. That's when you. lost I didn't say fourteen hundred plus. I don't you think did you say did. fourteen hundred at first. I, no, I fourteen hundred is ceiling. I think I said thirteen hundred. You said. I said I think someone you said, said fourteen. You said fourteen. You did. I think that's the ceiling. Do, Everything goes right. Okay. Fourteen hundred plus. Fourteen hundred plus. I don't think I said nah, that. That's nah, fake nah, crazy. That's be, like thirteen hundred. Yeah, you're top seven eight in the league. Okay. All right. My reactions. Um. I have five, but I'm going to narrow it down to two. I just say all five. Fuck it. Okay, well, I guess one of these really isn't even overreaction because they're the favorites right now. I think the Dolphins win the division. With Aaron Rodgers going down, with Josh Allen not looking great, I think the Dolphins end up winning this division. Um, the other one, I'm going to do a Drew overreaction special. So I'm giving you the Dolphins. I'm turn- getting turned on. But the Broncos, mm. I have bad news. I, I don't finishing last? I don't think the Sean Payton-Russell Wilson marriage is going to work. I think going into this offseason, you're going to hear rumors. The Broncos are looking to move off Russ. The relationship between the two of them isn't great. You have Russ, who's kind of this, like, family guy who wants to, you know, be in the public a little bit. And he's he a little bit. I don't, I'm not going that far. <laughs> um, but Sean Payton is a very, you know, in-your-face, um, a lot of bravado. You know, he, like, said, don't be a, you know, pol- uh, what do you say to Russ? Don't don't kiss don't babies. Care about don't be being a, a public figure. Exactly. Right yeah, so... Just their personalities really don't even mesh. So, uh, Russ, I thought, looked better than he did last year. But Sean Payton, I think, will outlast Denver. Excuse me, will outlast Russ in Denver. So, this offseason, I wouldn't be surprised if they move on to a different quarterback. Um, only thing I hate about that statement is the fact that this is your response after watching that game on Sunday where we did lose. We did only put up 16 points. We had six drives. We're going to talk about it later in the show. That's insane. Six drives, only having six offensive drives means one thing. Your drives were long, which they were. And then two, the defense can't get off the field, which it couldn't. And Russell Wilson was over 70% completion percentage. Yards was low for sure. I believe he was 27 of 34. It was a lot of checkdowns. But name an explosive weapon on this team that's not in the backfield. You You can't. Yeah, you don't really have. Marvin Mims could be that one day. Um, But you're relying relying on on a rookie. You're relying on Jerry Judy to get back. How long have we been saying that Broncos receiving room is mid, even if they're healthy? I'm with you. I mean, I once heard Jerry Judy's a top five. I don't don't think top five. Jerry Judy's going to come back and be a big plus. But Jerry Judy's Judy's not changing this offense. He's not ready tonight. He's not changing this offense. He'll improve it for sure, but he's not going to come. He's changing a game changer. I think that he w- he definitely he needs to be a game changer. There's no waiting. He needs to be a game changer. Like our second option was Lil Jordan Humphrey. He caught a touchdown. Lil Jordan Humphrey. His name is Where Little. We are li- <laughs> Lil, Lil, Lil Lil Apostle. Hi- that hyphen. is kind of fire. Correct. I'll be honest. That's fake. No fire name. Fire name. No Russ wasn't playing with weapons out there. No, and then Troutman was was terrible. 
No, they don't. <laughs> they don't. Have, they don't. Well, they don't. Playing. Son was, so, yeah, no, son, son was okay. He's Son's, he's not yeah. an explosive receiver. That's no, just no, no, not what he not. is. The last time he's he, been great. He needs to separate. Years. 2019. He's always been kind of. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 2019, 2019 was really good. he had 1,106 touchdowns. Torres ACL, unfortunately, just really hasn't been the same. I mean, listen, do you, think, that they're, do you think they're finishing last in the division? Because the Raiders kind of, to me, I'm like, their offense is kind of cool. They'll, I like I their offense. They'll probably within a couple games Like I said, because we kind of got away from the conversation. That to be the statement when again Russ was not the main issue. It it is an overreaction. It's a good. It's well, a. I'm here for. It's a strong overreaction. Talk your you shit, got bro. three more, Dells. I do have three. Um. So the other one, flipping on the Steelers, they're gonna have a bottom ten offense in the league. I, <laughs> I, I don't believe. I don't believe in this. Once Matt Canada, hopefully one day he will get fired, and then maybe we could go back. But as long as Matt Canada is there, this is what they're, gonna, they're gonna be bottom to ten. Um, Drake Jackson had three sacks. Yo, Drake facts. Are, Drake Jackson Drake. had a good ass game. The other ones, Anthony Richardson, I was always high on him, but I think he'll be the best quarterback in the 2022 and 2023 quarterback classes combined. 2022 class wasn't great, but, you know, a little some extra in there. If Anthony Richardson plays the way that he did against Jacksonville the entire season, he's rookie of the year. So he'll be better than Brock Purdy? Yep. That's crazy. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you said 2020. Wait, wait, wait. Say that again. 2022 and 2023 draft classes. Oh. Yeah. Better than Purdy. And my last one was the, better than Purdy. Uh, the Chicago Bears don't take a leap this year. Ooh, that's not out an on them. They, they so don't. Early. They don't take a leap. That was actually okay. one of my overreactions. I, I think the defense well. is going to be bad. Like a it bottom, wasn't that a bad. Of, that game. Thirty points. The Packers. Okay, be a right. Bottom five unit. I think again. The defense got on the field a lot. To be fair, because the offense couldn't do shit. But they had some modest moments. But I, you know, I ain't mad at the overreaction. It's not Second most pressured quarterback was Justin Fields. However, the defense didn't look great by any means. Uh, Edwards and Edmonds, both of them, they looked terrible over the <laughs> middle of the <laughs> field. It's it's almost rip, like their average jo- linebackers. No, not a, not an incorrect statement. Really, could not get any pressure on Jordan Love. One of the least pressured quarterbacks Nothing. in the National Football League this past weekend was Jordan Love. That was one of my overreactions. The Cardinals. Well, we we had expectations for the Cardinals to be one of the worst, if not the worst, team. The Cardinals and the Bears will be fighting for one, two, three, four because the Panthers are going to be one of the worst teams in the National Football League. The Texans will be one of the worst teams in the National Football League. Cardinals will be one of the worst, and I believe the Bears will be one of the worst teams mm. in the National Football League once again. You know, my overreactions, I don't know if this is an overreaction because it was my, like, original pick, but I think Jalen Carter is going to run away with defensive rookie of the year. Look great. Uh, oh, my goodness. He was dominating the Patriots. They had to double team him multiple times in that fourth quarter just to stop him from doing anything. Let me ask you a question. You it's say like that. They allow us but to last, just pick guys last episode, on the board. We were talking about how can you trust that they're going to stop the run? You're trusting a rookie. You're trusting a <laughs> second year player. And Jordan, excuse me, and Jalen Carter was just that. He, well, he could Carter, easily be better than Javon Hargrave from last year. I mean, I mean, for Ooh, one, I, Har- as, a, as a run as stopper, a run yeah, stopper, yeah, 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 I mean, for one. Jalen Carter, I don't know if you guys forgot, but that was my second overall pick in the draft. But what I does that have to do te- with the statement that you made? I've always been a Jalen Carter fan. I think I thought I think he was anyone the best. that understands Jalen Carter thought, plays football. I thought he was the best defensive player in the draft by a mile, and I thought that the Falcons, the Bears, they all whiffed on not getting him. It's just that Javon Hargrave is a Pro Bowler. Like it is hard to replace him. That pass rushing juice, it is hard to replace. And you have to also understand that while. Jalen Carter dominated week one. The Patriots were start were starting two backup guards. Cole Strange did not start, Late and Michael and sure. Wenwu did not start either. So it was against two backup guards, but nonetheless, he dominated. I still got to give him his credit because he did his thing. I just don't see another defender in this class that's going to rack up the numbers Jalen Carter's going to rack up because he's playing with a good defensive line. He's not the sole focus where you look at – you look in Houston – Will Anderson is going to be the sole focus of that team. He had a good Christian game. Gonzalez he had a really good game. was awesome in coverage in his first game, but cornerbacks usually don't make it. When Sauce won the award, that was Mickey Mouse. really that was really a huh? rare for a cornerback. <laughs> oh, it wasn't huh? Mickey Mouse. We know Sauce Gardner's like that. Uh, do really? we know that? Do we yeah, know that? Really? Do know that? Arguably the worst oh, defender huh? on the huh? Jets. Oh, and one. Oh, listen, listen. You know what's funny? Um, hold you know what's on, wait funny? a minute. Wait. What we're not going to do is <laughs> nah, you know we're not going to lie about what Sauce did last night. You know, you know what's funny, bro? Is that like. Josh Allen had like 35 to 40 plus dropbacks. Sauce gets targeted four times. He had an awful game. Like, I know. if you watch yeah. what he was doing, he was great last night, too. There's a reason why our defense only let up 16 points. Like, everybody was in yeah, Jordan Whitehead went above and beyond, man. Shout out to him. Yeah, shout, Jordan, to, shout, shout out to Josh shout Allen. Shout out to Qu- Quentin Williams. Also, Quincy Williams also went Although, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jermaine minute. Johnson getting a sack yep, last night. Big. So, you mean to tell me that your defense. 
allowed 16 points because of Sauce and not Josh Allen. No. We were also pressuring Josh Allen the entire night. I think so, I don't, like, that's not was, what I said at all. D-line no, was I think Sauce is elite. I think he's a top two corner in football. But to lie and act like he was great last night is cap. He I wasn't thought he that was good. Great. I thought he, he wasn't he that good. He played his assignments perfectly. I don't think he was that good. You know, because on that on that play where Josh Allen threw a third interception to Gabe Davis, who was right there, it was Sauce Gardner playing zone. Oh, yeah, he made sure. he muddied up that look. Like there are other things that don't show up in the stat sheet that showcase how good he was, you know? I know that he got targeted. I mean, Stephon Diggs. They're drawing up the entire offense for Stephon Diggs. Here's all I have in football right now. Pat Sertan being the best corner <laughs> in football. It's you, all I have. We, through week one, you got it. If you week one, it's Pat. If, if you want to have yeah, Pat Sertan in one, I don't have yeah, a problem. No, no, we'll come back in week two. That's Pat all it is. Crazy. It's like, listen, I, I like Sauce. I don't have anything against him. It's what I have. My claim right now is that Pat Sertan's the best corner in football. Listen, so I'm, I'm going to keep to Devontae Adams was exceptional. He... Special. He got digs in a couple weeks. Statistically, Devontae didn't have a good game, but he wants some reps where the ball didn't get to him. Mm -hmm. You know, but Pastor Tan, he won the matchup. There's that's for sure. Five balls thrown to him, only two completions for eleven yards. He was unbelievable. But I do think that Jalen Carr is gonna run away with defensive rookie of the year. That was my pick. Mm -hmm. But my real overreactions that I mean, one you see coming, the other one you guys are not gonna see coming. Um the Cowboys are making it out the NFC. After the beating they gave the New York Giants. 40-0, 40 to 0, all you guys at the table picked the New York Giants, the team of destiny. You picked them out of spite. <laughs> you, Mr. Daniel Jones, has no weaknesses. Nuts. The Cowboys dominated. They had the biggest ass kicking of the day. I actually, number two, I think the Browns had the biggest ass kicking because their defense, I thought, shut down an elite offense where the Giants were always kind of like, I, I wasn't very high on them. Other overreaction. Talk to me. Talk to me. The New York Jets are making the playoffs with Zach Wilson. Interesting. Here we go. They're making the playoffs with Zach Wilson. This is what we didn't see coming? Yeah. I think we saw oh this coming. Oh, my God. Now, now listen, Dallas. Now, know, listen, Dallas. It was the worst save of his life. I was ready for something exciting. You mentioned, I thought you were going to say, like, 5 and 12. You mentioned your soliloquy. I'm looking at the teams in the AFC. The Chargers, we think, are a playoff caliber team. What I just seen from their defense, granted, it is the Miami Dolphins' explosive offense, I don't trust Brandon Staley. I think that our defense could shut down their offense. I think we match up well with a lot of the teams that people can classify as playoff teams. We have an elite defense. It's going to be top three in the league again. With Brees Hall healthy, we're going to have a top 10 rushing attack. The offensive line has to improve. <clears throat> Zach Wilson just has to play average, and we can make the playoffs. That's all he has to do. And hopefully he go on a Mark Sanchez run, and we can win two games on the road, and then make the AFC Championship, and then be whoever we see there, and make the Super Bowl, and then win it all. <laughs> but ultimately, our team is fucking amazing. That's why last night I was watching the game, and I was like, fuck, if Aaron Rodgers... They didn't get hurt. We could win the whole damn thing. We well, might have smoked them Here's boys. The thing, and, and and I never wanted to take a victory lap on your offensive line in the way that it happened yesterday. There's no way that I'll take a victory lap over a season-ending injury with Aaron Rodgers. But me and my, my pops had this conversation. What I've been saying all offseason long was my biggest concern with you guys is your offensive line. And in one drive, you guys had four snaps, three passes, one run, and in those three passes, he was pressured. I'll be honest, two of those pressures were on Aaron Rodgers. The one where he got injured was on Aaron Rodgers. But that was also a scheme where something that's been going around in, in media right now is that Aaron Rodgers was talking about getting rid of the cut block. Yeah, I, I don't know why. that. If he doesn't like it, I don't know why Hackett would call it. But he also, the play he got hurt had Garrett Wilson. It's If you're cut blocking, you got to get that ball out right away, or you got to go down because that line is no coming. had no time. Well, he no, had, the play he got hurt, Garrett Wilson is wide open in front mm -hmm. of his face, and he just, for whatever reason, didn't throw the ball. If he let the ball go right there, and that was a design for Garrett Wilson. Of course. All the way. If he let the ball go right there, he does not go down. Yep. Uh, that was 100% on Aaron Rodgers. I don't think the play he got injured was on the offensive line. Also, just being realistic about it, if it didn't happen on that play, it was going to happen on another play. It really did it, it feel was, like... It was going to... like. His calf snapping up like that, it didn't happen because he got hit super hard and it wasn't his, like his, his leg it was broke just, or something. Yeah. It just felt like that was something that was going he to happen. A, he had a regardless. calf injury, remember, in OTAs or maybe beginning of training camp. I don't remember. And that's one of like that's one of the worries. I saw some PTs out there talking about like Joe Burrow. Like 
Bengals, you have to make sure he's 100% because when you have those calf injuries, a lot of time you see down the road that the Achilles could, you know, could pop. That's what happened with KD in, in the finals. Yeah. So I still, I still look at this offense. That is what happened with KD, and that was terrible. One of the worst injuries we saw in the finals. But you still need help at that wide receiver position. Your offensive line's still not great. Zach was running for his life even after Aaron Rodgers left the game and Zach came in. Zach was making some some crazy, crazy situations for himself, scrambling outside the pocket, scrambling like 15, easy. 20 yards b- behind the line of scrimmage, then throwing the, the ball away. <laughs> but me a heart attack every but time. you <laughs> still do need that second wide receiver. You, stu- you still need your offensive line to get better. Lincoln Thompson was not good yesterday. Dwayne Brown was not good yesterday. Makai had his ups and downs. He was great in run game. For sure. But- for sure, your your sketchy. your run blocking was solid. It also is in due part to the fact that Brees Hall is not human. Yeah, Brees Hall is one of the best running backs in the National Football League. Some some people here did not believe in Brees Hall, and and that and dude's a stud. I I can't. Fathom Pointing now. at me is nuts. He's amazing. I'll be he, honest. He's always been the best running back. <laughs> Never a doubt. Actually, nah, right? he's Never too good. But that okay. running back attack, Listen. that running duo, will be. Your, hopefully your focal point of your offense. It's a shame because Garrett Wilson is one of the best, most talented wide receivers in the National Football League. But you need to cater to who your quarterback is. I am rooting for Zach Wilson. I want that to be stated on this show. I want the best for the Jets and Zach Wilson. What we witnessed yesterday was extremely sad. I want to see Zach Wilson succeed, and I want the best for the New York Jets, but mostly because the story would be fantastic. You know, the, you know the best for the Jets comes in the way of your Dolphins, right? But the Dolphins are going to win the division. But the best for them would still come in the way. In That's the not true. Of your Dolphins. That's not true. I had them making the playoffs with my Dolphins still being number one in the division. You didn't division. have them making the playoffs. I did. You had three AFC East teams? I did. Oh, shit. I thought you only had two. Carry on. I had to respect them. That defense is elite. It could easily be the best defense in the league. We saw what happened when Zach Wilson is at quarterback. They still were able to shut down Josh Allen. And that's also in due part to Josh Allen playing very careless and very, very, lack of a better term, immature. Kind of just, oh, fuck it. Stephon Diggs is over there. Let's just chuck very it. Very backyardish. Like, it, that's just not how. Josh Allen is just Brett Favre. That's who he is. Okay, so you call him yeah. still one of the best of all time. I'll take that's, that. That's, that's fine. A, he's a gunslinger. You know, you got to take the ups for the downs. But there still are weaknesses on this Jets offense. There's, in my opinion, no weaknesses on this Jets defense. Yes, sir. There's not. Yeah, there's not. Really, the only thing that scares me is the schedule we have. Um, we got the Cowboys. Then Tough we got the game. Patriots. <laughs> the Patriots is the one I'm worried about the most, really. Just you give Zach, off, they give Zach hell. Just based off of history. Oh, Zach, facts. Zach you guys haven't beat like, him in a that, while, right? That is the game that can ruin Fucking the entire morale damn. of the season. I, mean, I don't know how many games we lost. 14 in a row? 15? How That's the been? game. Was that Versus the C-Mile Walt game? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm, I'm, without Aaron Rodgers, I'm scared what the pitchers are going to do to Zach Wilson. Like, what Bill Bowser's going to do? Wasn't that the game he was seeing Ghost, or was that Darnold? No, that was, that was Darnold, Darnold back in the day. Whew. It just hasn't been good for Jets quarterbacks. That's why I wanted Aaron Rodgers so bad. But, um... Do you have any more overreactions? I have no, that more. was it. Because I have an overreaction, and it segues absolutely flawlessly. Okay, Riv, give yours, then he'll topic. give his. Oh, uh, my overreaction is the Browns are winning division. <laughs> Oh, that's your pick. Yeah, that's, no, I didn't. No, I had him. Uh, I had the Ravens winning. Okay, I changed it though. Okay, it's now the Browns winning division. They're the best defense in the AFC. Oh, second, in the you division? guys. Are, you guys are really good. I think the Browns can compete with you guys on the defensive side. They got their, their play secondary play. is fucking aggressive and they're nasty. They, got they have a one on one. The defensive line yeah. is great. Offensively, I think they have a little bit more than you guys if Deshaun is back. They you know, do. but the, but in terms of the weapons, they have Coop, DPJ, Moore. They have Nick Chubb. One of the best running backs in the world. Yeah, like Quietly they, had 100 yards very, very No, it wasn't. Calmly. If you watched the game, it was very loud. Got into yeah. the uh, receiving game, too. He had, I think, three or four receptions. Yeah, boy, it was, yeah. it was, uh, I was, nice I was coming, bro. It was so good. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it, was, it was amazing. But yeah, the Browns, bro, they're... they're, they're, they're <laughs> now, nah, that was insane. The Browns, bro, so they suddenly just <laughs> threw that in there. <laughs> the Browns are here. I've tried to tell you guys, bro. The Browns just got slapped. You got, they played the Ravens or the Steelers next week? I forgot. They the fucking Steelers. Steelers. I'm going to spank okay. it on them. Okay, that's a good one. Bengals play the Ravens. My it, last over- on the road too, I think. Okay, okay. My last overreaction, like I said, it segues absolutely flawless into the next topic. Tua Tungavailoa will be your 2023 NFL MVP. Mm, he started off well. 466 passing yards, three touchdowns. Hey, did turn the ball over twice on the first drive, fumbled the snap in the red zone. Not ideal. Did have an interception that was pass interference. That was not called. Neither here nor there. Because the defense picked him up, and what did he do that next drive? 
a deep ball touchdown to Tyreek Hill. Play after play in that fourth quarter, where also if you guys hadn't, if you guys didn't know, the Dolphins never had an offensive series where they were leading. Every single series, the Dolphins were behind, and Tua had to play from behind and get that that score to to put them in front. Um, 110 passer rating, highest graded quarterback, also uh, in in terms of PFF grading. 23 passing first downs compared to the Chargers' 10. Did not take any sacks, was pressured one less time than Justin Herbert. Um, stepped up in the pocket, and, and I hear a lot of out of structure. That's that's the one thing lacking in Tua's game. Just does not really get out of make out of structure plays. I saw time after time on third down where he's stepping out, he's moving outside the pocket, he's stepping up in the pocket. The biggest throw of the game, one of the best throws you're going to see all season, and to his best throw in his career so far, he steps on in a pocket and a three-man rush. They're playing man coverage. Derwin James is kind of just in no man's land, not respecting the speed of Tyreek Hill. Tua steps up in the pocket, just lets a fucking ripper go on the sideline on third down, converts for a huge game, puts Tua over 400, puts Tyreek Hill over 200 passing yards on third down in the red zone. Oh, and by the way, since 1994, there is no better quarterback in the red zone than Tua Tunga Vailoa. Mm. And on third down in the red zone, third and goal, throws a fade route, just an absolute dime into the hands of Tyreek Hill. Just the confidence that he was playing with. I told you, it was personal. And Joel thought it'd be a perfect time after he threw that interception to, to those jokes, to retweet my tweet. I appreciated that because, you know, give me all the love I can get. And, and he thought that shit was sweet. And that, <laughs> it, that, that Tua wasn't taking this one seriously. He goes the very next drive touchdown. What's going to happen with the Miami Dolphins offense this season is going to be so much fun. Tyree Kill said, hey, I'm going for 2K yards this year. What? He's I'm off to an, like he's, a, he's on to an unbelievable start so far. Oh, and, and Waddle had a very quiet 70, 70 yard game as well. That's definitely going to get up. It's just that they were playing way too much man. They were sending way too much pressure, disrespecting Tyreek Hill. You should never play man coverage, even though that's what they did last time. And that wasn't going to work a second time because, again, I told you, it's personal. He is going to put up unbelievable statistics. He showed so much progression in just this one game alone. I'm excited for what the season holds. You know, when it comes to the oh, game plan the Chargers had last year, I'm really surprised that Brandon Staley just rolled out the same one. Just and did it, was it again. Like, we're going to do it. You know, the entire offseason, of course, there's going to be a bunch of counters for the defense that they played. And that's exactly what they did. I think the most impressive thing they did was uh, they motioned Tyreek Hill to the opposite side of where they usually motioned him. And the thing about Tyreek Hill is that last year, they were able to neutralize him because they were pressing him and jamming him at the line. But when he's running in motion and the ball is snapped, he already is hitting his full acceleration point and he's running his fastest. And as a corner, that's impossible to cover. Can't cover. You, you can't you can't cover that. So I feel like that little switch that McDaniel made in that offense is now going to have defensive coordinators staying up, fi- trying to figure out how they're going to stop it. That's why, to me, one of the marquee matchups in week two is Patriots and Dolphins. Because the Eagles were one, were a high-powered offense last year, and the Patriots, they devised a really good game plan to get them out their rhythm. So for me, I think the Patriots' defense, that's going to be a great test going up against that Miami Dolphins offense. But Tua was exceptional, 466 yards, three touchdowns. He did have an interception. Um, they won 36-34. I think great game. the improvement yeah. with this game is that you've seen Tua move on from habits he had previously where – Last year, he trusted McDaniel's offense in the plays that he had called for him. So if this is the read McDaniel wants me to go to, I'm going to go here. Even if I see that there, it's muddied up a little bit, I'm still going to try to throw it. Where this year, he's moving on from that. He's moving on. He's moving out of the pocket. And that's when you get these you know, out-of-structure throws. The throw you mentioned was the most impressive throw of the day. But I think one that doesn't get talked about one to is in the red zone. It was either to Barrios or Craycraft. Okay. Um, he moves left. His first read wasn't open. He moves left in the pocket. He throws it. 
and it's dropped in the Got end it. zone. Correct. It, that it was should've, the K Craft. Yeah, mm-hmm. it should have been a touchdown. He threw it way one, too. He threw it a little harder than what he needed yeah. to. But still, but Craig Craft should it. catch, for catch sure. it for sure. But something like that is just a growth that I've seen from Tua and the Dolphins. I mean, they generated 17, um, 17 explosive plays. They had six big time throws. Tua had the highest average depth of target. Um, he was blitz on 17 dropbacks. They were 11 for 17, 148 yards, 53% success rate when they were blitzed. So, yeah, all around, this was a dominating this was offensive performance. A beating to Brandon Staley's all defense. Like, it was a humbling experience. And it's funny because the Chargers always have this new stat about like how well they played, but they still end up losing. The defense didn't play well, but heading into week one, Teams who rushed for 200-plus yards, held opponents for under 100 rushing yards, did not commit a turnover, won the turnover margin by at least two, were 110-0 and 0 since 2000. <laughs> That's now 110-1 and 1 because the Chargers lost. I feel like the Chargers always have a brand-new stat of how they blow lose it. and blow games that have never been blown before. So even with like a good Justin Herbert game, a great – Running game, rushing game on the ground. You can see Kellen Moore's effect already on the offense. The defense couldn't stop a nosebleed. And this Dolphins offense is going to be another high-powered offense again. It should be a top-five offense in the league. And I'm curious to see moving forward how defenses are going to try to counter this offensive attack. Because when it comes to Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, it's just hard to cover them man-to-man because you can try to press them at the line and jam them. But we saw J.C. Jackson try to do that and Tyreek Hill just swiped his arm out. Tyreek Hill gets ahead of him, and now it's a wide-open touchdown pass to the end zone. They benched J.C. Jackson that entire last drive because of how badly he was getting fried. So when it comes to that, it's like it's a, it's it's hard. You know, you can try to press them, but if they beat you on that line, You're then it's, it's a touchdown, like, pretty easily. So it's just hard. I'm curious to see how the Patriots are going to play the Dolphins. And honestly. before you guys go real quick, I want to give some shout-outs to that offensive line, which was a concern outside of, Left tackle where, oh, wait, Teron Armstead didn't play, and they still had no sacks on to a tongue of Iloa. But Austin Jackson, actually, all jokes aside, he put together a very impressive performance with lining up in front of Joey Bosa. He did a great job in the run, great job in the passing game. Great to see him come out there week one and really do a great job in that offensive line. Last thing I want to mention, that throw to <laughs> Braxton Berrios on third and 15. That was tough. Getting outside the pocket putting it in a spot where only Barrios can go and get it. Impressive catch by Barrios, nevertheless. But my goodness, he could do no wrong. He Got was unbelievable. I had a, I had a rough Sunday. <clears throat> he is the only bright spot of that Sunday. He was unbelievable. I thought to me that was the best game to his play. I, I, I understand where you're coming from. That's the best game he's played. From start to finish, yeah, I agree. Because that Ravens game, there was definitely some hiccups. He just limited all the mistakes. He played so sound. He trusted himself. And also, the anticipation that he plays with, I can go on and on and on. I see River. He's tired hearing me talk. I understand. I had a question. Oh, because, um, like, um, Miami's offense is going to be high power, and Tua's going to have the numbers. We know that. Like, this isn't – we're all smart at this table. We all have brains. So we know that Tua's going to have a statistical grade. He was, like, first in damn near everything last year before he went down. Are you concerned at all about the run defense coming up? Because you might play the Patriots oh, bro, and defense, Ramondre and Zeke could legitimately have big time games. The defense is horrible. It is not good. You give credit to to the Chargers rush attack. Absolutely. Both Eckler and, no, Eckler had a day. and Joshua Kelly were able to be effective. Eckler had over 100 rushing and Joshua Kelly and Fishing. I think 16 attempts had yeah. 91 yards and, or, and a touchdown as well. Keenan was guys able gave to have himself a solid on, game. On the ground. No, it was atrocious. Like going forward, are you not they were concerned able, about that? They're still able to get pressure. Definitely still concerned. Mm-hmm. Christian Wilkins usually does a great job. And, of course, Emmanuel Agba also. They do a solid job of stuff in the run. They didn't do that this past weekend. No way, no how. But I think that with time, there's still things to be cleaned up. It's just the fact that this offense is going to be put in a position to put up as many points as they are, that it's going to bode well where – if we do believe where now Joel's along the bandwagon, I appreciate that. The Dolphins win the division. Tua continues to have these crazy statistical games. <laughs> MVP is right there for him. I think my only problem with Miami is if you figure them out, how is that defense going to be able to bail them out? Like like the Jets, for example. I'm using them as an example. Offensively, they, made, they with Aaron, you didn't get to see much, but with Zach – 
as long as they manage the game, they manage the game, their defense is going to be able to bail them out in multiple situations against any offense in the league. With Buffalo, you have Josh. The defense is all right. You know, so Josh can either bail you out with the defense. With Miami, the offense can bail you out, but if the offense gets figured out defensively, how will you be able to stop other teams? So here's the thing about that where good, valid concern. This past Sunday, Tua throws that interception. Again, I do believe it was pass interference. Bears got pushed in the back. JC still made a nice play on the ball, caught it for interception. That drive after, a third and one. Oh, yeah. Kua is able to still get to to, to Justin Herbert, bring you, him you almost, almost to a safety. You got clutch up. Tua goes, throws a touchdown on that next drive. The defense made a timely play there. Mm-hmm. Was bad, made a timely play. On that last drive where they score with like a minute 30 left, the Chargers get a chance to... to to score a field, to make a field goal to win the game mm. because Jason Sanders, who was solid all game, misses the extra point to put them up three. The defense comes up big again very close. and stops the Chargers. Of course. So I understand where you're coming from. They need to make timely plays, but just how versatile this Dolphins team can be, this offense, Mostert got going. That was great to see, taking advantage of a poor Chargers run defense as well. But again, when Tyreek Hill's moving all over the field, and Waddle's not even really the like, – he had a, the quietest 70-something yards that sure, yeah. uh, of the weekend. And he still had a solid game. Impact the game almost immediately on that crosser over the middle of the field. And he's just yards after the catch. The two are going to be special. So what Mike McDaniel can do with this offense, I understand your concern, but it's a matter of when, right? Like, is it going to happen? Like, I, I got to believe it to see it for, for sure. these guys to get stopped. It happened last year. Uh, yeah, but think, just week one coming in and being able to answer that that question so quickly off the bat mm-hmm. in dominating fashion, I think it allows me. To be I optimistic. think New England is going to be a tough test defensively. Always you know, are. I think um, you know that's going to be. I think, but I think Tua usually does well against New yeah, England. I, I'm glad you mentioned that four and zero. Of course, against yeah, the New and England. And Tua, what are the stats though? Uh, his yards because he started against them his rookie season as well, and he only had 145 then. And he also had 109. I really just care about last year with, with McDaniel. He played two games last year against him. Uh, excuse me, he only played one, and that was opening day. He went for 270, a touchdown, no INTs. He was sacked three times. 70% completion rate. Well, 69.7. 70, 69.7, correct. In his career, he has a 68.5% completion percentage, 181.5 yards against Belichick. Um, he's thrown three total touchdowns, two INTs. I just it's going to be a good matchup. I just think for it for us, it's just about can he do it for a stretch of game? Like, can he do it for a season? You know, I think he's going to have these big games. He had one last year against Baltimore. You know, it was a little different than this one. He In the fourth quarter is really when he broke out. But I think for two, it's just can he have a stretch of 15, 16 games of just great performances and not have those four or five straight games of just plays in elite defense, plays bad, you know, or makes mistakes. I just think for two, it's just about being consistent. You know, and being able to dominate an elite defense, a great defense, a good defense. You know, last year against the Niners, he didn't play well. Against the Chargers scheme, he didn't play well. He played solid against Buffalo, but he had some moments where he just wasn't good against great defenses. And that's just what you want to see from Tua. This is a great start. He silenced the Dallas early with this one because the Chargers, like we mentioned, was last year was a thorn on his side. You know, they locked him up pretty bad. And he had this game probably all summer on his mind, oh my for, God, sure. for sure. So to put up 466, to have Tyreek put up 211, this offense we know is scary. He's going to put up numbers. It's just for Tua, just about really being consistent. This Miami team is great, you know, offensively. It's just about can that defense be able to stop the run against teams? And then offensively, can they be able to beat the counters, and beat the elite defenses. That's really it for this team. Remember I, last year, I'm sorry, Joe, you haven't spoken at all, but remember last year, his worst game of his career, in my opinion, was against the Chargers. 145 sure. total on the game. This was nasty. He had 265 in the first half. He was on different timing. Yeah, no, he was. This yeah. one was a tone setter. This one was a statement. It's not the same Dolphins. It's not the same two of last year. He's improved. I think defensively, I don't think the Dolphins are going to be like this bottom five unit in the NFL, right? We saw against the Chargers, shit was not right. The Chargers were able to do anything they wanted, and the Dolphins were able to do anything they wanted. I think Fangio eventually will get these guys together. Just probably needs some time to mesh. Um, And, of course, you're going to get Jalen Ramsey back at some point during the season. So, I think even though week one wasn't great defensively for the Dolphins, brighter days are ahead. Um, So... The offense is always going to carry this team and be the reason that they could, you know, reach their ultimate ceiling. 
But I do think the defense at some point during the season will be at least respectable. And with Fangio, it could be more than respectable. It could be a really good unit. Um, offensively, I mean, Tua, like, he has this ability to have these insane blow-up games that, like, you, you really don't see except for, like, the top elite with Mahomes and Josh Allens. Like, not even Justin Herbert's have multiple games where they're throwing 450 yards and multiple touchdowns. When Tua had that game last year against Baltimore... And like you guys mentioned, that was really just the fourth quarter. The first three quarters was kind of whatever. Fourth quarter went fucking insane, scored 28 points. That was like, okay, that's a move me moment. That's the moment that I didn't think Tua had in him, right? That was the moment where I was like, okay, he, he goes from around the 20th quarterback wherever to he's in the Kirk Cousins tier, he's in the Dak tier. Let's see where we go from there. I think to Riv's point, that's the next step for Tua because originally the question was, has Tua stepped up into an elite status of quarterback? For Tua to be in the least status, and I think the next tier would have been Aaron Rodgers and Trevor Lawrence. Of course, Rodgers isn't playing, so maybe it's a tier of Trevor just by himself. For him to get to that tier, he needs to put multiple games together. I need to see, like Trevor last Doesn't year. Doesn't Trevor need to do that, though? But Trevor had a stretch of nine weeks last year to end the season, plus he had the playoff game that he won where he had to come back. He threw four in as well. Yeah, and then the second half came back and won. So if Tua yeah. wants to be... Shout to the Jaguars defense. If Tua wants to be put in that <laughs> in that conversation with Trevor Lawrence, and I think it's another gap to the Justin Herberts and Josh Allens, Agreed. if he wants to be put in that conversation, I'm with you, Riff. I need to see him do this for probably a two-month stretch, eight to ten games where he's going up against great defenses, where maybe things aren't always going his way, although he faced adversity in this game where, you know, he was trailing for damn near the entire game. Um, that will be the ultimate test for, I could say, all right, Tua leveled up again this season. Mm -hmm. Now he's in a status where he could, you know, he could go to a Super Bowl. He could be a Super Bowl winning quarterback. So once he's able to, to have that large stretch of games and not have like these couple games last year where – Detroit and, and uh, Chicago, he goes off. And then the next, like, four or five games, he's kind of mid. You know, so as long as he's more consistent with it at if a high level. If he wins the division, I'm moved. Hell yeah. I'm moved like shit. Because I, like... It's like, one of the best divisions. Res respect, well, now with like, the respect, like, Kirk Cousins doesn't get talked about a lot. And people think he had a bad game. His bad game, statistically-wise, was 344 but yards Kirk, but also, and two TDs. Kirk won the division last year, and you're not putting him in that, in that tier. No, because I think that, that division is not as hard as this one. You know, well, I think, now is this division, isn't it kind of like... We love I still, Jets, think, we like I still Jets, think the Jets are better than eighty, like most of the division last what, year. Man, I'm, I was moved by that Patriots performance with the Eagles. To be, to be trailing at 1.16-0, and, and honestly, they were a play away that they just could not make in that, in that last stretch of the, the fourth quarter. Up. The Eagles defense definitely came to About play in that last time. Time stretch. <laughs> but they rallied, man. Mac Jones looked damn good, made some really good plays. And I say that no joking either. The, the Patriots looked very, very good. They made Jalen Hurts look extremely uncomfortable, essentially all game. Really just, they, it, Jalen Hurts lacked consistency against the Patriots, and that's in due part to the game plan of Bill Belichick and what he had schemed up against him. But this division still is great regardless of whether Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback or not. You have to respect that Jets defense. You have to respect Bill Belichick and company and Josh Allen and the Bills, although they did have a tough loss yesterday. They were a team that automatically needs respect because Josh Allen and that Bills defense have earned that. I feel like that's just putting too much emphasis on a team accomplishment. Like winning the division, I think, is a team thing. understand. If yeah. Tua plays great and they don't win a division, but he's exceptional the entire year. I agree. I think you can still have the conversation of moving him up a tier because he's playing great. But to Riv's point, last year where Mahomes had the statistics, Jalen Hurts, because they had the best record in the NFL – on top of it, he was playing extremely well in his own right. He was the odds-on favorite until he got injured for a good portion of the season, even though Mahomes had yeah. the division. That's, that's, that's MVP, age. though, not like teams, Winning matters you know? to a But degree. that's what we're talking about. But that's what, ultimately, that's where my but I'm, initial I'm points moved stems if he, from. If, he, if Tua plays 13, 14 shit. games, and he's great for all 13, the goal 14. Is to play 17. I moved for sure. The goal is but to if he like wins the division also, then I'm like really like that shit puts in a different – because this is not an easy division. This has been the Bills' division for, for years running now. But I do think like to the Trevor Lawrence point that you mentioned, Dells, I just think there's just some – there's just a talent gap really that's, that separates the two. And Trevor Lawrence can – Trevor Lawrence and Tua? Yeah, like Trevor Lawrence can process with the best and – that's an unfair just fit, statement, can, bro. He can fit the ball. So can Tua, bro. Not like Trevor, though. So can he Tua. Can, no, he can, like, the throw he had to really between two defenders, 
Tua has upgraded for that, sure. How about that throw to Braxton Berrios? No, it was, but it, it, it wasn't. You that. know what I'm talking about? Yes. Talking about the one to the, the one that no, the one that was on basically the on the, the no, the one that was basically on the ground in between two defenders. He has to throw it to that low right of an of angle. Field. It was on the right side of the yeah, field. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. That was a great throw. But the he ball has come, those capabilities. I don't, I don't think that you was, have. I don't think Tua fan. I'm not saying that you are Ridley specifically. That was fucking crazy. I don't think you are specifically, but I don't think any Tua fans like. We could be realistic with Tua. Like, we could say he he has been a great quarterback. The shit he does great, throwing with anticipation, sure. being able, one of the most accurate, if not the most accurate quarterback in the league, getting the ball out quick and field. on time. Like, he is truly elite in those facets. So don't take it personal when we say, like, oh, well, he doesn't have the arm Trevor Lawrence has. He doesn't have the mobility Trevor I'll Lawrence never say has. That. That's just, it's just, all quarterbacks are going to have, you know, except for Mahomes, all quarterbacks are going to well have said. things you have to pull from. I don't disagree yeah. there. I think that you, I understand very firmly mobility. That's what makes Trevor special as well. Yeah. Out of structure, that's where Trevor Lawrence has had to live in his tenure so far with the Jaguars. It's just in terms of placement, in terms of touch. I see, I see what Tua has been able to do. Again, that this game versus the Chargers was essentially a near perfect experience for Tua Tungavailoa. That throw to Ridley was fucking insane. Yeah, like that's some shit. It's, but I know that Tua can do that as well. Not, that Not same with the throw. same zip. Not with no, the no, same no. I, Like, I think Tua gets intercepted there. Like, where, that's, where that's, Trevor that's, threw it from, that was a 30-yard li- yeah, that was a 30 yeah. yard throw on a line but Tua, that didn't lose any velocity. But Tua's, Tua's velocity looked damn good It's not like Trevor. the Chargers. It's, it's not like Trevor. Like, it, it's just simple as that. Like, it's not a knock on Tua. It's, it's I know really it's not, not but it's, it's, I know he does I know shit you're better than, there's him. some shit he does better than Trev. I know you're not knocking him. That's your opinion. I just, from what I've watched and from what he showed me this past Sunday, there's no throw I don't think Tua can make now. I felt that way. So he can make throws like Patrick Mahomes can make throws? Okay, that's, that's not the I same. I think that's unfair to say, though. The throws he can make from Josh Allen, from Justin Herbert? Fuck no. He can't. Like, that's fine. That's fine. Because can make great at what you're great at. But what, do, but what do we even mean by that? Because it seems as if, if we're going to talk about Mahomes, that's unfair. He's in a class of his own. We all understand that. Josh Allen, we've already spoken. He's erratic. Yes, his arm strength is unbelievable. Well, it's Mahomes yeah. and him. Mm-hmm. But but what do we mean by that in terms of deep balls down the field? Josh Allen can make almost every throw Mahomes can make. Is, no, it's, it's is like, Josh Allen anywhere near accurate as Tua? No. No. It's about making, it's about the difficulty, the degree of difficulty on the throws that you make. Like Josh Allen can move to his right and throw across his body to the left side of the field the line. and not lose velocity. Josh Allen could throw football. 65 yards on the run. Yeah, you know, he's, like he's, those, he's got those, an unbelievable that, arm. And I think that's what separates the elite quarterbacks from the next tier. The only elite quarterback right now that doesn't have that type of arm strength is Joe Burrow. I wouldn't even Joe Burrow can't even make the throw that Trevor Lawrence made to Calvin Ridley in that game. I, I don't I don't even think Joe Burrow can do it. Joe Burrow is just a great processor. And like Tua is super accurate with the football, so he's been able to walk into the elite tier like that with the lack of talent. Like, like he doesn't have the talent of the elite quarterbacks. If Tua continues to work on an out of structure play and continues to get better, like is that a possibility? It is a possibility, but ultimately the top end talent from these other quarterbacks, like Tua is just not gonna have that. Like and I, I they're just think very few people, very few people to have that. For, and for McDaniel's system. I think you would almost prefer to have the pinpoint accuracy, maybe the best touch in the NFL over the, oh, I could just go out of structure, Josh Allen, but I'm going to have four interceptions. Like, I think for McDaniel's system, you would almost prefer the, that quarterback because the the offense is just built to have guys open and Tua could hit them with such precision that, I mean, it's it's really like the top of the league when it comes to what he's good at, he's fucking great at. I just do feel like Josh Allen gets underrated still like I know the four turnover game is bad no doubt but Josh Allen is the entire Bills offense like every single concept within that offense all every play is made for Josh Allen to bail them out the third and long situations like Josh Allen has to make hard plays all the time can I ask you there's a question? no does. easy yeah, button a, in the offense I said I said the fancy reaction I said it felt like every play going against the elite defense to be fair but it felt like every play last night was it was difficult my question to you guys at what point does it become a concern that in his mind he feels like he has to play superhero ball every single time he's out on the field and the last few times that we have seen him on the football field he has not looked that great. Talking about Josh. Correct. Does it get to a point where you be when at what point do you become concerned? Because what now, are you concerned about? Because now we're talking 
that he's playing superhero ball and that he's trying but to do way it, too much. In, the, in this offense, he has to be. With the weapons, yeah. he has to be. I, I, I don't disagree, but with that, and now he has that mindset of, oh, I need to be the best rusher on my team. I need to be the best, one of the, I need to be the best passer on the field to, every though. single time. I agree. It's, it's never going to be, it's never going to be, he, he has. has. No, he I'm won saying over these last year. couple of games that we've the seen. The last two John, games? So against the Jets, against the Bengals, against the Dolphins, the These Dolphins. Are three, against the Dolphins, he was not good by in any. The Buffalo? First game. I'm talking in that playoff game. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I, I forgot they played the. First. Okay, for, well, for starters, last year they won 13 games. No, of course, yeah, they last had year they a, won a solid team and season. And it's Josh always, was great. It's he always was MVP before. It's he, always going to be yeah. that because this offense is always going to be constructed around him, and this offense is always going to have the limitations because it doesn't have the weapons. The offensive line is not that good, and they never have a running back. Josh Allen. Just he's he can do things that not not many quarterbacks, maybe two, can do, and he can just carry an offense. If it's coming across like I'm trying to shit on Josh Allen, that's not what I want. What I'm saying is get him some help so he does not need to do this. We've been saying this for to years. Answer, to, answer Bills don't question, want to, do it. to answer your question specifically, thank you. I am not worried unless the offensive production drops. Okay. Last year. He led the second most efficient offense in football. For sure. Even with the erratic play, even with the turnovers, the Bills' offense was second in the league. So to me, I mean, the turnovers, yeah, like they matter, but if you're leading the second offense in the league, does it matter that much? much no. it, it only matters if you're an average he's offense. Like, he's like Luca, and the, bro. And the turnovers. Not even trolling. He's like the Luca of their offense. He does everything for them. That's not an incorrect statement from where he's trying to he, say. You, he I looked understand. at you like you just said some bullshit. No, no, no. no listen, <laughs> he didn't say crazy bullshit. No, no, it's not. Uh, it's uh, not crazy. Luke is the Luke is the entire offense for Dallas pre Kyrie. No, Josh not. Allen is the entire offense for the Buffalo Bills. Just he's their understand rusher, where he's coming he's their from. I, I know. I know. Yes. I, I just, I just want to stick to football though. Um, <laughs> this guy hears basketball and he starts getting PTSD yeah. for whatever reason. No, no. Oh. I really just want to stick to football because Luca. I don't know. I don't want to get into that. I think he's like more twenty seventeen like Russell Westbrook. So inefficient. Wow. Uh, you just I said don't think he had, he's inefficient, but Russell, Russell Westbrook, Westbrook that was year, inefficient. That year at the rim, though, he was one of the more efficient players. You, at the rim is one part of Here it. Here we go. Football uh, episode. You know what? <laughs> you got worse with the with the comparison. I'll be nah, honest. Listen, I just don't. It's, Luka, it's, it's not crazy. I didn't, I didn't it's not crazy. It's because not, Luka like, hasn't won a little erratic. He's not exactly. the most accurate passer. He's going to have turnovers, but he's going to give you some insane high. Bro said, bro went from Luka to Russell Westbrook. The glazing of Luka right there was insane. That's essentially what we just No, no, it says this guy always wants to say something about Luka, man. It's not a knock to Luka. What the hell? Nah, if nah. Andy, that's praising. You know what, God? Because this is how we compare the two. Luca's run, where he lost to Golden State, is Josh Allen's run against the Chiefs. Although Josh Allen was probably better than Luca in that series versus Golden State, as Luka's opposed second to Josh. All time in points per See, game. In what are we doing? It's the same concept. That, but Luca that, runs that, the that, offense. That, that, Josh that's that's runs why, the offense. That's why I wanted to stick that run, to bro. just the football. As long you as Westbrook. As long as the you turnovers. As long as the turnovers aren't outweighing what he does. From a touchdown yardage efficiency standpoint, like last night. then mm. I'm not worried about it because he has to do so much within the offense. There are going to be games like this that we see, but there's also going to be highs. I mention it all the time. Definitely in, in 2021, when he went on that perfect playoff run and he was flawless, that regular season he got blown out by the Colts. That regular season, I think he lost to the Jaguars, if he I'm did. not mistaken. The Titans game, It was too. a 9-6 like, game. So, like, Josh Allen had those stinkers in a regular season. I'm with you. But because in the playoffs, he, wa he was perfect. Now everybody's like, oh, this this is just I who mean, he gonna, is. You're going to have he stinkers. Plays and I don't, you're not going to play 17 That's just not who games. he is. I don't but think the interceptions are that bad. Because before that, it was 15. Before that, it was 10. It's the fumbles. Yes, it was on bad. Fumble. It's not it was. that bad. Yesterday, no, no yesterday it was bad. It, no, it's bad. bad in the sense of yeah, he's gonna have he he does not play good against the Jets defense last two years. But I'm talking about the interceptions in totality. Like he had 14, he had 15, he had 10. It's the fumbles that add on to the interceptions that's the real issue. Also, the the, the play calling yesterday, it's partially on Josh Allen because he shouldn't make risky throws. But once those Rodgers, were nut throws. Once Rodgers goes out of the game and it's Zach Wilson, you're saying if we just get field goals, we're winning this game because they're not going to be able to score more than 21 points. We need a punt return touchdown to yeah. get us that touchdown. Shit yeah, lost. Like, man. ultimately, for me, I think, <laughs> I think Josh Allen, like, he's going to have a handful of games this year where he's throwing three touchdowns and or four or four touchdowns and having no interceptions. He's throwing for 300-plus yards. He still, to me, has the highest ceiling of any quarterback not named Mahomes in the NFL. 
like just what he can do, how he can be a one man offense Trevor to me. Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence, he's getting there. I think he can be in that discussion. Herbert. Herbert. No, nah, because he just doesn't have the rushing ability that Josh Allen has. And I think right now, a knock Trevor on... Trevor doesn't have that, though. He doesn't, but I think the knock on Herbert is that Herbert far too often is a little bit too conservative. I don't disagree. Like, you kind of want him to be less robotic. You want him to have more movement in his game. You want him to take deeper shots down the field. Where Trevor Lawrence, you know, there are a new number of examples where the design is for this crosser coming wide open... But Trevor Lawrence sees this post, and he's going to throw it. It doesn't matter if, if the original design is to this guy. He's going to go for the whole shot. I think right now Herbert is still kind of playing within the constructs of the offense and not trying to go for, you know, the big top. Like, go, he's not trying to go for big mm-hmm. time plays. Where I feel like that separates Josh Allen and Trevor Lawrence. So, for me, I, I feel like Josh Allen still has – the highest high outside of Mahomes. I think Trevor Lawrence is getting in there. And Trevor Lawrence could be there after this year. Like I think Trevor Lawrence could have an he to me was my dark horse. Who would he kick pick. out? Got to kick so you always got to kick somebody. What else. a guy! Get out of, well, listen, somebody got to go. Lamar? Well, listen between between Joe Burrow and Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence is more talented than Joe Burrow. No, I'm saying because I'm I'm confident Mahomes, Joe, uh, Josh will finish top three at the end of the year. And then you got Herbert, who I think will still be top four. I'm talking about who who would Lawrence kick out? Like, would it be Lamar? Hurts. Would it be Hurts? Like, are those one, like who would he? Or he even kick out Herbert? Is he going to be that? Well, I great? think Trevor's already better than Lamar. Um, oh, Trevor! Else? I think he's as as a quarterback. I love Lamar. I love Trev's a fucking dog. As too. a quarterback, I think he's better Man. than Jalen Hurts too. I, and I think last season he played better as a passer as well, especially the last nine weeks of the season. Trevor Lawrence was a top three quarterback. I think it's mm-hmm. definitely realistic. For Trevor Lawrence to finish as the second best quarterback in the league after this season, like it's that realistic. I think it can happen. So even over Joe, yeah, even over Joe, yeah, he's that good. Like he's that good. Trevor Lawrence is amazing. Caleb would be better than Trevor Lawrence. No way. <laughs> I heard he's. A, I heard he's. A no, <laughs> Caleb is fucking nuts. He's so damn good. No way. I'm being rude. I'm being. <laughs> no rude. way. He's a little rude. I'm being rude. Caleb can do anything. Got, got just wait until Shador Sanders gets into that bag, man. I'm excited for this draft. <laughs> oh, you're you're now part of the. Club. Let's not speed up. Let's not mean? speed up this season. Yeah, been, we got We got a whole. I've been season. with Sanders. Let's you just. Been, you locked in every Saturday. This is how. This is our silver lining. Let's enjoy the college football season. Let's enjoy what Caleb, Drake, Shador, they're all going to do on a football field, and then we can Scott enjoy the. You, the saw, draft. you saw more people watch the Colorado game than Texas Bama. Of course, it's f- the, the culture. Crazy. It's prime time. No, no, no. It's, te- listen, Texas it's Bama prime. is the like. Did you watch it, two- Dels? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I still have the messages. I bet. In the group I, chat. I bet on Colorado. Nice. Oh, you just watched because you bet. I was gonna watch regardless, but I was like, Drew, if I'm gonna watch, watch. I might as well bet on. You did. Got to respect the guys. Okay. Just got to make sure. Come on. I don't know if you guys remember it, but in the First group chat all, uh, a long time ago, different. I told you guys to invest in Shadur Sanders. Of course I Sanders. remember. Yeah. Well, I you guys actually don't, but I'm not saying you're lying. Mm-hmm. Told you to invest in Caleb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's but that, I'm, yeah, but I'm I, up like Yeah, no. Nah, I have the message. Shadur was like a dollar. He's no, like, I'm he's not saying you're lying. He's still you. stupid is he? cheap. Is he he's still way too cheap. He's seven. Seven still. Like he's going to be, end of the season, he could be $20. Yeah. Like that, that right now is a great investment. Go look at Anthony Richardson last year and how much he rose just because he became a first round projected player. Yeah. Sanders is on that on, on that that trajectory. trajectory. I love Mojo for that, man. There's come ups to be had. There really yeah. is. There's it, come really ups. Is. To it, it's be a had. shame. A lot of y'all not in New Jersey. <laughs> got, no, it's for sure. Because I'm telling sure. you, like, if you get on Mojo, this isn't a promise, so y'all can't sue me. <laughs> but I'm just saying, if if like on Mojo, I've seen returns of like double, quadruple my my money. Like it's it's that crazy. On a just not even that of an extreme. Tua went from twenty nine dollars to forty one. I went up two bands. That's the come up that can be when you have a guy that is five dollars. If you really invest heavily, like a Shador, who right now is on a trajectory to be potentially a top ten pick in the draft, yeah. you can make some crazy coin. And you can take your money out anytime. Like for example, like Shador Sanders is at seven dollars. Let's say you buy one hundred shares, so you get seven hundred dollars. Let's say. He rises up to fourteen. You now get one thousand four hundred from your initial you investment, and he and he can literally rise to fourteen within like the next couple of months. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's like that, you know. What's going on over there in Colorado is so fucking awesome. Hey, get in, 
September 30th, it's Colorado USC. I'll be watching would, the game. I would get in before uh, that, that game. One I'm worried because that's going to be a game. Caleb versus Sanders. If Sanders is able to go toe to toe, that, that I'm not. Gonna wor- I'm not worried about she Shador. Will. More so, I'm worried about Colorado and that defense. Oh, you know what USC? Well, Caleb's going to be them. able. He's going to do it to everybody. Just can you keep up? Yeah, that's I'll be College watching those games in, uh, in lab class. Yeah. I mean, won't even cap to you. Watching the lab, we used, uh, dissecting at the game. You right had school on Saturday. Saturday? Saturday, yeah, lab class. Man. I'm glad you're locked in, bro. That's it. Eight to one forty, one forty. I mean, kind of locked in. Eight you're to one forty. Oh, that's a class. long ass class. Class is class. Oh, bro, I can't. I'm, let me not talk shit. You know how many Yankee games I sat during class oh, I wasn't, and watched. I didn't give a fuck what you said because I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, regardless. facts. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Eight to one. Eight to ten thirty is uh, the lecture, and then um, you got their little thirty minute break and eleven to one forty five is lab. Those eight thirty classes can eat it. Man. And when twelve hits, I will put the Colorado game. I told my professor I'm putting the Colorado game. This is a different. Like this is. For the culture, you got to said understand. this for my job. No, I told him this is for the culture. That's this why is a, I a love monumental it. moment. So if he Wa- says no, it's racist. Yes. Okay. Watching like during lab is different. Just during lecture, you might, you might, I might as well not even be in class. The teacher could be yammering. Yeah, no, I need to like lock in for hours. lecture. Lab, really? I can kind of finesse. No, know? I could never finesse lab. Only lecture. You're different. Lecture, You're saving just, lives. Okay. I'm just saving a frog, bro. I understand. I had to do labs and shit like that too, but I say for lecture. The teacher could just go on for that hour and a half. I don't listen to a word she says because I'm just going to go off the PowerPoint. So that hour and a half, I'm playing Clash of Clans. I'm watching highlights. I'm doing notes for the podcast. That was the only way I was able to do both at the same time. See, no, my teacher, he had a bunch of words on the PowerPoint, but he was defining because I didn't know what the fuck they meant on the PowerPoint. So uh-huh. I had to really listen. Like, I know what you mean. Is. Sometimes I had to do that. Yeah. I honestly did better when I listened, mm-hmm. and I put myself at a crazy disadvantage by just you know bullshitting and, and studying by myself. Because obviously the professor knows more than you do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, the only class I like, like, like I had a um a sports class. I was watching Eamon Thompson highlights in there. I don't pay attention to sports class because like I don't need to. I know listen. what you're saying. Yeah, I can just uh, because you know. First one that comes to mind is John Carlos press conference when we got John Carlo for the from uh, the Marlins and he was getting introduced for the Yankees. I I was in. It was when it was when I was in scene hall. I'm blanking on the class, but you got you had two exams. So essentially, you had your midterm, you had your final. The rest of the class was bullshit. <laughs> so I'm watching his press conference while I'm here. The professor's right there. I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Honestly, shouldn't even have gone to that class. I barely did. On to the next topic. More dominant win, Cowboys or 49ers? Do we all have the Cowboys? <laughs> I mean, they had zero <laughs> points. 40, 40 to zero is like, it that's was- the game Giants fans are going to remember for probably the rest of their life. That's how bad of a loss they had. Okay, so since I knew that you three would pick the, the Cowboys. You went the opposite route? I, I, I tried for show purposes and argumentative purpose to go the other way. Let's see how good I can do. So it's very hard to argue against 40 points to zero points. It's almost impossible. One of the biggest blowouts that we saw on Sunday. losing fans the more you talk. Here we go. But what the Niners did offensively and defensively was dominating on both sides of the football. Where we look at Dallas's offense, Dak really didn't have to do too much. The pass game didn't have to do too much. Tony Pollard was menacing. He was extremely efficient. Two touchdowns, average five a carry. He was fantastic. But CMC by himself, monster game. The team had five sacks as well. Brock Purdy, we mentioned it. Passed the sticks. Perfect passer rating. Was was essentially perfect. As a passer, they were getting pressure on him. T.J. Watt, essentially. Let me just say T.J. Watt was getting pressure on him. He had three sacks, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery as well. T.J. was amazing. Wanted to give him his flowers. But three sacks from Drake London. One sack from Javon Hargrave, who made his team debut. They essentially could do whatever they wanted on both sides of the football. Uh, There were no elements hindering the Niners and the Steelers game. So the Steelers had opportunity. It's just the fact that the Niners were just so much more dominant than the, the Steelers were. You you put the graphic up that at one point the 199 to the, 1. The Niners had almost what 300 yards of offense and a oh, 191. Yeah, at That's one point it was, it was 199, 199 to 1. Until the last drive yard. of the first half, the Steelers had one yard. I don't think of you offense. understand how nasty that like, that <laughs> shit looks crazy. The Niners held on to the ball for 37 minutes of the game as opposed to the Steelers' 22. Pickett looked uncomfortable the entire game, (laughs) so much so that we were hyping up the Steelers before the season started. Joel's already saying, I'm done. I'm moving off. I understand where he's coming from. Najee couldn't get anything going. Deontay now with a hamstring injury. Matt Canada, one of the worst offensive play callers in the National Football League. It's only inevitable until he gets fired. The Niners put on such an unbelievable performance on both sides of the ball. 
that you could say that it's right there with the, the Giants and the Cowboys. However, 40 points to zero points just for conversational purposes. You kind of just did this to, to, to get a segment in with me talking about the Giants. I understand. I'll definitely I'll definitely take that on the chin. But what the Niners did was unbelievable on both sides of the ball. They no looked uh, great running the ball. That first drive, because uh, obviously, first, let's yes. talk about it. Your best drive. This isn't a Niners versus Cowboys. I don't know It isn't happened. a Niners versus Cowboys. It isn't a Niners versus Cowboys. It's really, let's just talk about the Giants and how horrendous they are. So let's do it. That first drive, running the football, Fire. they looked fantastic. And then they get into the red zone. They have that play on third down where John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt goes, hikes the ball to Daniel Jones. <laughs> Daniel Jones has to get on it. And then they kick the field goal. Gano was terrible, by the way, also. And then they get the, the block field goal. That was the game. Yeah. That was the game because they were dominating the run, like you mentioned, both Saquon and Daniel Jones. But then the rain started coming down. Daniel Jones and company, and I say company because really, Daniel could only do so much. He was put in a position to fail. Never a chance. And he was he was sure. he was not good by any means. No. He had that the first interception was Mickey Mouse. The fact that they're even calling that an interception on him when <laughs> Saquon catches the ball, turns, gets Boom. popped by Trayvon Diggs, and it's a pick six. The the terrible throw was on the sideline. That was ill advised. He should have just thrown it out of bounds, trying to make something out of nothing. Apparently, Darren Waller changes his offense, but set, allowing seven sacks. On the right side of the offensive line, Glowinski gives up nine pressures. Evan Neal gives up eight pressure. Glowinski was all-time bad, and Evan Neal, we were talking about it on the show yesterday, is going to go down as one of the worst offensive linemen picks, one of the worst top ten picks in the, of the last five to ten years if he doesn't figure it the fuck out. <laughs> We've seen offensive linemen be bad their first couple of years, but around year four, year five, where it's time for contract, they get it together. He was horrendous. Arguably the worst tackle in football last season. And he started off on a terrible note again this past Sunday night. But there's credit to be given. The Dallas Cowboys line's hey, elite. So um I saw some picture. Fucking guys know what I'm talking, whatever. Twenty twenty two. That'd be worth it. Kavon, first rounder, Evan Neal, first rounder, second rounder, Wandell Robinson, third rounder, Joshua Azidu, offensive lineman. Mm -hmm. Third rounder, Cordell Flott, a cornerback. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to say these names. Fourth rounder, Daniel Cordell Bellinger. Flott. Yeah. Fourth rounder Daniel Bellinger, He's solid. fourth rounder Dane Belton, Micah McFadden, it's linebacker. Not a good draft class. This was all 2022. This is in one year. Kayvon Kayvon Thibodeau, so, uh, very good draft. That pick. damn near went one for eight. Kayvon Thibodeau is a great draft pick. Evan Neal. Let's be honest. Have any of these offensive linemen in this draft been great? Icky's been better than him. Icky's been way better than yeah. him. Yeah. Last year, Icky was solid. Icky's a starter. I mean, so was Evan Neal, but that's by no, no, necessity. No, Icky's like a starting level player. Evan Neal. Evan Neal is not good. You know what? I lived through Garrett Bowles being very, very bad for a long time. But then year four, when it was contract time, suddenly he's amongst one of the best left tackles in the game. So I was having conversation with Max because obviously one of the biggest Giants fans I know. But he told me, listen, Drew, you're being very critical on Evan Neal. Rightfully so. But it takes time for these offensive linemen. It's hard to defend this. Max doesn't it is deserve so, this. Man. No, he doesn't. He you definitely know, doesn't deserve this. I'll be honest. Kayvon Thibodeau and George Karloftis, I don't think there's a big gap. I think they are they provide similar impact. Kayvon, Kayvon Thibodeau was, was great last season. Kayvon Thibodeau was solid, you know. He, Trayvon Walker looks like he's, he's taking that next lead. I was, I was happy for, I was happy for Trayvon. Too. He really he de yeah. he had his moments, but more so than not, he was very very good. And I think Kayvon is just you know he plays in New York. He was a highly drafted edge rusher, but you know I don't really see him becoming this like star uh, edge rusher. Here here are the only bright spots of the team, and very very limited. Uh, Saquon looked good. Mm -hmm. Saquon looked very efficient. Uh, Dexter Lawrence looked promising as well. That's it. That's and, it. Andrew Thomas got banged up. No, I'll be honest with you, with you Drew. I could give a damn about the Giants. Like I, I know they were gonna be bad this year. I could give but, a damn about the were, Giants. But is crazy. It, which is wrong. He, no, 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 we knew what he's hilarious. doing. No, no, All no. he's doing it here is, is setting funny. me up. No, for for it's me, this yeah, this this topic is not about the Giants. Trust me, it's about the Cowboys and the Niners because these are the top two teams in the NFC. The Eagles. Well, you should have worded the question. Top three. I said more down to win Cowboys for Niners. Listen, for me. Wait a minute. I looked at I looked at a stat. I looked at a stat. Right. Why, why did we talk about? Why is that the? It's not about the Giants. I care less about the Giants. Why would you hesitate? About what? You said against the Eagles? Yeah, what? I mean, Jalen Hurst, man. He okay. against the Patriots. How Joe Burrow, though? Ah, man. How Patrick Mahomes We know, Mahomes we, we know week one, look. Burrow, not that good. <laughs> week work. Week, wait, wait. Here's the thing, but week one, Mahomes is supposed to be essentially Jesus Christ re reincarnated. I Listen, wish he would have faced the Broncos. He would have been. This shit is embarrassing. What do you mean? 
Because he would have been J- ready. Jalen Hurts didn't look great. 17 but he got points, the dub. imagine that. That's all, you, that's all you could ask for. Get the dub. Didn't play in the preseason. He looked rusty for sure. Listen, the Eagles, the Eagles, Cowboys, not as the top three teams in the NFC. But week one, both of them had the most dominant wins. The Niners were dominant. I am not going to say I overestimated how good the Steelers were going to be yet because it is the Niners defense. And I think that they'll face much easier defenses going forward. I have hope that the defense can improve. Once they get Cameron Hayward back, they can stop the run. CMC had 152 yards on, on 22 carries. I think Hayward's going to be out multiple weeks. He is. The Cowboys won 40-0 to zero, week one. Last time that happened was 1995. They won 35-0 to zero against the Giants. They won the Super Bowl that year. You know, I, I'm thinking, uh, talking about the Giants last year, the team of destiny. I think the Cowboys this year might be the team of destiny. They, got, they made the most moves. Of any NFC team in the offseason. I don't think you know how that goes, man. To get better. I don't think you know how that goes. The team of I feel destiny. Like team of destiny, you can't yeah, be like no, one of the You can't be great. No, that's exactly you correct. Can, you can be destined if you're great. Of are course you, you can. What the hell? Is, what, what do you mean? Was, was LeBron team destined? Of destiny? So here's the thing. The, the, my logic behind it is they're a bad team that were going on a run. They're destined yeah. for it. The Giants. Like, yeah, the end the of the season. You make a wild card. Like the Giants were the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Team of destiny. Correct. Can you not be a great team and be a team They are one of the favorites to come out the NFC. That's not a destiny, destiny. Joel, Joel, if that's how you want to word it, I'm okay Unless with it. Unless there's a I'm crazy storyline. You know like, how I use like it. Like, it's Dak Prescott's last year. He's going to retire. Then, okay, Team of Destiny. But Aaron Rodgers it, going to New York Jets. They go yes. to Super Team of Destiny. Peyton like, Manning that's, being a, story a, a shell no story. of what he is. There's no story behind team Dallas. Of destiny there's only choking the and failing and miserable. LeBron James slogan for Nike. What for the hell is years going on? Has you just destined. said don't destined use basketball, for, no, no, and then you I'm, brought up LeBron. This is an advertisement slogan. This Wait. says this is broad. It says destined for greatness. You can be great and still destined for he, greatness. He was chasing the goat of goats. <laughs> That's a and the Cowboys is one and the Cowboys, right here. And the Cowboys are chasing the ghost of not making the NFC no, Championship no, no. game. They're, they're, they're chasing. Plus years. They're chasing expectations that they keep failing every year. That's not a yeah. destiny thing. That's just they need to be where they yeah. need to be. That's not a destiny. Yeah, but if they finally do it this year, yeah, stop being underwhelming. Stop being bummed. If they finally do it this year, all the moves they made, they was destined to do. Well, they're not, so it doesn't even matter. Well, they are. They're probably better than Eagles this year. They're gonna win the NFC. No way! It's Brandon Cooks and Stephon Gilmore. The team of that's the team of destiny. (laughs) (laughs) They're good players. Don't make a point. Good players. That was crazy. You're losing me. You're losing me. Gilmore is one of the best corners in the league. You're losing me. They're good, but we're acting like they completely reshaped something. Like they brought in a corner and a you pick the Giants to win. Why you pick the Giants to win? Why pick the Giants to win? I was wrong. That doesn't make the Cowboys a team of destiny. Why you pick them to win? Tell me why. Give me I some thought, logic. I, some I logic. thought the Giants and Cowboys would split. The Giants get week one at home. The Cowboys get week so, whatever at home. So off of no team evaluation, <laughs> you just said they're going to split. They're they going to win. Man. So off of no on field, hey. this is what they're going to do. This is what they're hey, going to do. When, I'm picking the when Giants. We, when, we did the record, when we did the predictions, what I say? I said, I'm up here guessing. That game, I was like, I don't he fucking did, know. Man. I was like, I'm up here guessing. This is going on the way. He was pretty and hot. And they, they got smoked. The Cowboys got seven sacks on the Giants. Daniel Jones couldn't do anything. There's another, another quarterback that in the playoffs got sacked nine times and was still able to win that playoff game and threw for over 350-plus yards. That was Joe Burrow. I Joe Burrow and Dak are not the same. There's only some quarterbacks that, that can Daniel do good Jones against a battle. Daniel Jones got fucking Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. This Cowboys defense he didn't have, he didn't have time that regardless. Time defense. And you know, also, the, the Niners' offensive output was great. I know you wanted to make the argument for argument's sake. Correct. But – the, the the Cowboys got off to a 14-0 lead they off didn't of have to do well, the Niners played a better defense and defensive touchdowns. Who? The Niners played a better defense. They did. Oh, okay. But I'll, I'll, I'll I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'll, he's I'll completely that. wrong. No, the the, the Cowboys that. game was Oh, no, yeah, but he yeah, said yeah. he said his why he said that, you know what I'm saying? I gave I gave some solid points. No, they were solid points. But yeah. this is 40 to 0. You can't beat that. Shutouts is shut. 30 to 7 with a garb like it was in the 7 is better than 0 always. Get on the board. Please. This is the real week one overreaction. It's a question for Drew. Giants still winning double-digit games? Nah, it was a matter of this one, man. <laughs> I, was, I really needed this one. I am concerned. I, well, it's the Cowboys. It's week one. The Cowboys, who I listen, I've, I've never, even in this offseason, didn't disrespect them. I do believe they did get better. Mm-hmm. They are one of the best teams in the NFC. I did say that they will be one of the best defenses in this league. I was not expecting 40 to nothing. No way, no how. I don't think anyone on this planet was expecting forty no. to nothing. However, not scoring is crazy. Um, I'm gonna, <laughs> st- I'm gonna stay optimistic. It is week one. The entire game. <laughs> it is. And, no, and did you was, see Michael Parsons come out and talk about that? It was fucked up. Why the fuck did they do that? To I don't him? know why Brian Dable has him out there, especially it's raining it out. Reps. Yeah, that's bad. That was horrendous. Nah, bro. When, was when there's like look. six minutes left, you're down forty nothing. Screw the yeah, rest. Burrow got, Burrow got benched. 
Yeah, yeah. smart. That's that was sure. smart. He just got And they paid. were down 21. Like, oh, they, they were, were down 40. They were down. It, they felt like, it felt like 40. It did feel if like, you, if you they couldn't move the ball. Yeah, they couldn't move the ball. Embarrassing. It was the same game, different time. That's essentially what it was. But, to be fair, the Giants, Cowboys, the Cowboys are way better. You know. And Gano misses two field goals, get one, gets one blocked, misses one. The from, block from is less set the tone. It was over. After oh that. my the god! Block, it the set block. so and much then the, tone. And then the tip pick six. Yeah, it the was game like, was uh, over before it even it, fucking it, started. It 16, felt like 17, 0, it was like twenty eight zero, and it was like yeah. mad time yeah. left. It was like there's, oh my. There's god. just right, no. They, they could have got the sixty if they took it really serious. There's no excuse to be made. No, I'm so like simply just. I wish Trey Lance wasn't a healthy scratch, man. I was I was tweeting like yo, put Trey Lance and fuck it. I saw that. Fuck, see what you can do. McCarthy ain't look too bad out there, Dells. Who? Mike McCarthy. <laughs> he barely called an yeah. offensive yeah. game say, plan. Did that have too much of passes? There's a reason why when Kellen Moore was let go, he said, I feel like Kellen Moore be trying to get too cute. He be throwing, he be calling plays, trying to get the ball in harm's way. That got 143 you, yards and 13 completions. You, you CD saw, had, CD you saw, had just about half of that. You <laughs> saw CD had one Cowboys, catch, it was like 50, and it was like, all right. When the Cowboys got up, Mike McCarthy said, you know what? It's gonna rely on a defense this game. We don't need to do nothing. We don't need to get rely on that. We don't need to throw bombs with that. Let's just win the game. Tony Pollard was unbelievably. That's Mike McCarthy, baby. Respect him. It's gonna suck when he has to rely on Dak in a playoff game. He's got the Jets next week. You trust Mike McCarthy against the Jets? That's gonna be a great matchup. Do I trust Zach Wilson against the Cowboys? That's the better question. You should say yes. I don't. Zach might get. Daniel Jones got sacked seven times, gave up 25 pressures. Will the Jets offense have more or less sacks and pressures allowed? Less. <laughs> less? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. It's going to be, it's gonna be, around, it's gonna to be around the same. No, I'll be honest. Are the Jets going to score more than zero points? I will take over zero. I would love your guys' opinion on this super quick. I have Dak and C.D. Lamb in the same league that I do have the Jets defense. Mm. What do I do? Uh, well, and this is do you me have as the choice? fantasy guy. No. I would say I only have a choice. I think you start hoping all pray. three. Yeah. Fuck. Because I think the, the Jets are going to get sacks on Dak. You know, yeah. they can get an interception. They can force a fumble. They get a touchdown. I'm hoping that the Jets get like 10 points just for the fact of like, let's say, a pick. I, I can live with a pick six, I guess, just to get the points. Oh, and, sure. then Dak tweaks. It's a regular pick. and then Dak tweaks out. It's going to be a tough game, but that's, I'm a, good, worried. that's a good challenge like for the Cowboys. I nine point underdogs, bro. I play that's you. a really good challenge for the Cowboys. You do, yes. Yeah. So you Same. think the Cowboys are the best team in the league? Uh, let me see. I think the Niners got it, man. Yeah. But it's close. Yeah. Niners got it, but it's close. In the AFC. We're just talking NFC. Just NFC. Just NFC. Well, NFC, yeah. yeah. NFC, yeah. It's just the AFC is filled with great quarterbacks, but there's obvious team weaknesses, like the Chiefs um, have weaknesses on their team. Nine and a the half. Bills, underdogs, the Bills, the Bengals. Mm-hmm. It's disrespectful. The NFC. The Bills and the Cowboys play this year. The NFC, they might not have like the star powers at quarterback outside of Jalen Hurts with the Eagles, but and Dak. the teams have less weaknesses. Yeah, and Dak is a great quarterback. Give him too. that respect. He's just not like a, a superstar quarterback. Oh, he's we not, know. I, I thought you were saying star. I, th- yeah, I would yeah. still God. count. I Dak think he's as a, a star. star he no, we 100 percent know he's not a superstar. I'm uh, yeah. I'm just looking ahead to this week's games. At one o'clock, we have Ravens Bengals. We have Hot. Chiefs, Jaguars, Hot. and I'm, I'm looking at the fucking night games. There's really not a ton of other. Yeah, we got blessed on Thursday. We have Vikings then the night games. Eagles. Dolphins, Patriots should be good. Saints, Panthers. Eh. What time's Dolphins? Uh, That's the night game, eight o'clock. Oh my god, let's go! That's great. Yeah. When does my um my Tua Browns play? Well Mo, my games. Browns play on Monday. Now the uh, Saints, Saints, Panthers. Are they both play on Monday, buddy. Oh, it's a double header. Didn't see Look this. Look at you. Here we go. Casual. Seven fifteen and eight fifteen. Why can't they have like? Hey, listen. Seven. Watch the eight fifteen one. Who? Tua against the Chargers. Not yeah, yeah. He plays great in national television. Not really. Like prime time games. Tua. Not really. He doesn't. Not really. Did he get hurt? No Wasn't idea. the Bengals game prime time? Yeah, he got hurt. That was Thursday, right? But I'm saying that Chargers game was on it was sure nationally was. televised. That's why it, it was worse because everybody watched it. Yeah. No, but I'm saying it, this weekend was nationally televised. The Patriots and he no against the Chargers. No, I'm saying this week. Sunday night. No, now it's Patriots, correct. Yeah. I'm Another really televised that, game. That is the matchup I'm looking most forward to. Uh, Sunday night? Of any week one matchup, I'll be honest. Like, what? Week the two? Patriots and Dolphins. Week two, you're saying? Got yeah, it. Yeah, week two. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. I definitely was looking forward to seeing Sean Payton go to work against the Raiders uh, quickly. You actually that. said, uh, put the house on it. I didn't care. <laughs> three, t- uh, three touchdowns, 300? I'm I did be- say all that. I want to talk about the Broncos so bad. We got, Drew, we'll talk about them. Drew is 0 for 2 on put the house on it best. <laughs> Which was the other one? The Darren Waller one. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then the Broncos one. Did I say put the house on Darren Waller? I think you did. 
No, I didn't. I put hundred dollars on it. That's the house. <laughs> hundred dollar unit. Yeah. That's, 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 the that's, you know, hefty, that's a hefty amount. I ain't gonna lie. Three receptions on one drive. I'm feeling good. I'm just like, okay, let's see hey, it. Next week against Arizona, I'm with you. Okay. Can they actually? Do you think that's a blowout? Uh, can we talk they about sh- the Broncos? They should please? win by ten points. They should, but life doesn't always work that I way. We need to get the Broncos conversation out the way. Let, let's talk about the Broncos. Thank God. Just, listen, for me, I've watched the highlights of this game. I'm going to go back and watch the second <laughs> half to see where Russ went wrong or the offense as a whole. I don't know what happened yet. Okay. But you, you, talk to you? grade the Broncos' performance of the first game of the Sean Payne era. It, it's hard to, to be optimistic after scoring 16 points yet again. It's seeming like everyone's joking on Twitter. Are the Broncos ever going to score over 16 points? I mentioned it already. Six offensive drives. It's not like the Raiders had the ball anymore, too. They had seven offensive drives as well. We couldn't get them off the field. And Russ was 27 of 34. He had under 200 yards passing, did have two touchdowns. I think he had one turnover-worthy play but did not turn the ball over. It's hard to be optimistic because we lack explosiveness at the wide receiver and tight end positions. Dulcich now is going to miss multiple weeks with a hamstring injury, the same hamstring injury that he's had. He had last season. He had coming into this season as well. On the same leg, it's just not what you want. We lose Caden Stearns for the rest of the season. The only bright spot to yesterday's game on the defensive side of the ball was PS2 because we're not getting any pressures. It, it was. I'm really at a loss for words because Baron Browning starting the season on the injured reserve, is, it, it was deadly for us too because Baron was one of those guys that I hyped up last year for the fact of we lost Bradley Chubb in that trade with Miami, I said, we're okay so long as we have Barron. He comes into the season unhealthy. What really can you do about that? Two Sean Payton moves were made this offseason that ended up biting us in the ass. Adam Troutman and Will Lutz. Will Lutz comes in, misses the extra point after Russ scores the first touchdown of the game, and he misses the 55-yarder, which, hey, that's not an easy chip shot, but you're in mile high. That is the that is the stadium for you to 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 really take advantage of the elements and make high level field goals. Misses the fifty five yarder. We end up losing seventeen to sixteen because our defense couldn't get off the field, and we had a terrible penalty a, a penalty that ended up being thrown because of a, a terrible looking injury from Jacoby Myers. Hope you are okay. But Jacoby Myers torched us the entire game. Damari Mathis. Hey Joel, when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Your concern was Damari Mathis. He was barbecue chicken. The entire game, yeah. what Jacoby Myers was doing to him was flat out wrong. Jacoby was fantastic. Jacoby goes over the middle of the field on that last drive of the game. It was pretty. It was a decent yardage as well. I think it was like third and seven, third and eight. It Kareem Jackson's coming over the middle of the field. He stops Jacoby, but it's a helmet to helmet. They throw the flag. We get another opportunity again on third down. Jimmy G goes, scrambles outside the pocket. The last thing you're expecting if you're a Denver Denver Broncos fan, excuse me, is that Jimmy G is going to be the one to put you to bed. He scrambles for the first down, and the offense never gets another chance to go and put points on the board. It's just upsetting because the Broncos were able to, on those six drives, score three times, one of those being a missed field goal. We had it over two point. We had over two points per drive this game. If we go and have the the average, which I believe was 12, 12 drives per game, we put up clean over 30 points just on average. But again, when you're not getting the ball and you're not being able to score or given the opportunity to score points, it becomes very difficult. For me, I'm trying to be optimistic because the offense looks solid with limited weapons. How's McGlinchey? I'm, I'm giving us... He definitely... Well, I'll be fair. It is Max Crosby, one of the better edge rushers in the league. But he definitely had his way with McGlinchey, for sure. McGlinchey didn't have that great of a game. But overall, if I'm trying to be as optimistic as possible, given the fact that our offense looks solid Talk with our me. limited opportunity, <clears throat> see. I'm looking at the... Dolphins five years, five years uh, $242 million. Up. Dollars. Say that one more time. Up. I don't know if I can do that yet. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm looking at I'll offensive... Tell you what, the devil is on my shoulder. I don't blame screaming. You, bro. you see... You see d- screaming. At, at the same time, both at 4 o'clock, fucking the Dolphins doing whatever they want, and the Broncos over here, it's like, it's fucking 10-3 uh, against the Raiders. Let bro. me get Judy back. And then go from there. Because I, I need to see what this team looks like with Judy. Fingers crossed, he should be back. Javante looked great. He looked solid, yep. Samaj P. Ryan looked great. 
Samaje really looked awesome in his attempts yeah. as a as a pass catcher. He really was explosive after the catch. But th- we have no explosiveness. We, no we get we get no pressure on the quarterback. It's a hard team to root for right now. I'm actually I'm I'm glad you gave me this moment. I'm rooting for a top five draft pick. Okay. Man. I really, okay. really, really need a top Marvin five Harris. draft pick. I need Marvin Harrison well, on you, the Denver if, Broncos. You, I need top two. If you I get, know. If you get top five. I don't want to distract the quarterback. I'm, I'll be honest. He's not our problem. If you're getting top five, he's not our biggest problem. He's not top five on the list of problems. He has 85 million in dead cap next year. Yeah, that that hurts. Here's a list of problems. 105 this year. Here's a list of problems before Russell Wilson is on that list. Shouldn't be a long list. Number one, the receivers and tight ends explosiveness. Number two, the pressure on the quarterback. Number three, the offensive line needs to get a little bit better. Played all right. McGlinchey is going to play better. Any corner outside of Sertan? Second corner, Quan Williams will be back. We need him back soon. Really, really wishing the best for you, Quan. Hope hope you're back very soon. Five years, 240. Yeah, I'm looking at the pass blocking grades for PFF week one. In terms of pass blocking, the three worst were Dan Moore, Evan Neal, Mike McGlinchey. Mike McGlinchey was getting absolutely fried by Max. I that's told you, nice, bro. pass blocker, we're, he's we're not a good pass Can blocker. we take it easy? You're taking a victory lap on one of the we're, best he's been bad, in the though. game. Where's back then? Ah, oh, shit, I was close. <laughs> ah, damn, damn. Okay, it's okay. Hey, Again, Crosby's nice. I'm bro. not upset about McGlinchey getting beat up by Max Crosby. I don't like Max Crosby by any means, but I got to respect his game. C, so you're giving him a C? C. Yeah, I, I grade it as a C-. minus. They lost. They did. Um, How does a I, losing you, team get a positive grade? Should I give him an F? I think you should. Okay. I mean, D. because I thought Russ looked better than he did 46. last year. 46? Mm-hmm. Okay. Out of all tackles. Out of all tackles. Yeah. Uh, a little bit below average. Because um, <laughs> I thought Russ in this game looked better than last year. Absolutely. I thought the zip on the ball, the mobility, um, him extending plays, moving out of the pocket. I thought all of that looked improved. But you brought Sean Payton in to get better schematically. You brought Sean Payton in to get guys open and make the offense easier for us. I didn't see that. I mean, it was 177 passing yards, two attempts of 20 plus yards, zero big time throws, yep. average of a target of, of five, five yards, which mm-hmm. was 29th among all quarterbacks. It was really just checkdowns. You did have the one play that comes to mind was the Sutton where you got a PI call or a holding call. But outside of that, there was really no shots even beyond the sticks. Like everything was 10 yards and in. Um, Part of that is the receivers or lack thereof, where you really don't have a lot of guys that you could rely on to win one-on-one. Cortland Sutton is your best receiver right now. And Cortland Sutton, amongst all wide receiver ones, would probably be damn near bottom of the list, right? Like he's a top 30 receiver probably at this point in his career. Um, So for Sean Payton to come in... I don't in, even think that's right. Huh? He's you think worse? 40? <laughs> he's not top 30. Yeah, so... On top of Teams this, have two receivers better than him. Yeah. A lot of them. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. He's so cooking. For Sean Payton, I'm fucking gutted, man. I think the this worst part is Sean Payton <laughs> is talking all this shit in the offseason. Oh God. He's bringing in these reporters. Uh-huh. He's talking about Nathaniel Hackett. He's talking about last season. And he put up a worse performance this year than what the Broncos were doing last year. Last the year, the Broncos week? were averaging 17 points and over 300 yards of offense. They put up 16 points <laughs> and 260 total yards of offense against the Las Vegas Raiders that were expecting to be one of the worst defenses in the league. Maybe they surprised us and they end up being a top 10 defense. We're saying, okay, this isn't terrible. <laughs> but for Sean Payton's first game, and on top of that, I'm sure Broncos fans love the onside kick, the aggressiveness, let's go for it. That could have lost them the game. The Raiders go and score a touchdown on that they drive, lost. and they only had two touchdowns the entire game. One of it was because they got the ball on the fucking 40-yard line their first drive, and Jimmy G went down and scored a touchdown. So if you're Sean Payton and you're going to talk all this shit in the offseason, you better come correct week one. Broncos didn't. You know, when it comes to the Broncos. Oh, I'm sorry. Cook, Dels. So, you cook. know I don't like Sean Payton. I got nothing against you. Sean Payton crossed the line. That was a great cook, Dels. The offense, the, the onside kick. It was so close to being. It was. An if it was like a game. half yard more, it was nine and a half yeah. yards. Yeah. That was really dumb to do on the first like kickoff. He's of hilarious. See, but the thing is, people would have called him it, dumb. Exactly, they would have called him dumb in like the a, Super Bowl if that shit didn't work out. Like but instead, they talk about him like he's Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's just, it's so bold to do. But Sean Payton's bold. Yeah, listen, you know, did you call it stupid when he did it in the Super Bowl? Well, he got no, it. So it's he not got it. They were down. <laughs> It's the first play of the season. Why not you start start with the pizzazz? Start with a bang. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't work. And you, we trusted the defense. Zinger. Sure enough. You know, listen for me. Miss you, Avero. Russell Wilson. I don't think that the arm strength was like too diminished. I thought his arm strength was pretty much where it's been his entire career. Agreed. My worry was that the athleticism has been diminished. 
the out of structure plays are not there. And what Sean Payne has ran offensively historically has not fit Russell Wilson's strengths. The reason why I think if you guys are bad enough to get a top pick, you have to get a quarterback. I agree. Is because all those problems you mentioned are cool. There was a point in time where people mentioned those problems with the Seahawks and Russell Wilson would lead them to the playoffs. He'd be so great that he'd carry those teams. Like when? With the Seahawks, 2019. Right before he left. That he had DK Metcalf. Did the offensive line is one of the worst in the leagues. The defense was not very good. But he still had explosive weapons on the outside. Yeah, I understand that. But 2019, the team was not that good. He carried them to 11 wins I'm blanking year. on this guy's first name, but I know his last name was Moore. David Moore? Moore? Maybe. A number 83 on the Seattle Seahawks. There's a David Moore. I only know that for the fact that Russell and him used to hit deep ball after deep ball because he at least has someone. His number three weapon was explosive. I would take that right the fuck now on the Denver Broncos. We have no one. No one that's explosive. What a fact of it, though, is that— How many touchdowns? Like three, four? Uh, Touchdowns, touchdowns. The fact of it is that— The year after, they went 12 and 5. The most he had six on 35 receptions. The the, the facts, though, is that in Seattle, there were a number of years where we looked at the roster and was like, this is not a good roster. And Russell Wilson led them to the playoffs. DK I would do yards disgusting yards. things. And Tyler Lockett was still on that team. Correct. Yeah, a thousand fifty seven. That's still great. Yeah, yeah those are great receivers for sure. But I'm talking about the overall construction of the, of I understand. the team of was the, not good. But I understand. Like your that. defense is isn't not supposed to be great still. But it didn't play that well it's this not, past week. And I think it's going to regress. Chris Carson I had twelve hundred yards. Regress. That was year. also a rookie year. DK, I want to say it was put up nine hundred. It was so. Russell Wilson. The point is, is that he's not that quarterback anymore. He is more along the lines of a quarterback that has to play within the constructs of a system, and he's going to be an average quarterback. <laughs> Just like not, not. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about like at his best, he's going to be like twelve to fifteen range, if that. Like I feel he's like... not a top end quarterback no more. And if you even if Duh. even if the quarterback position is not your biggest problem, you have to look to upgrade at a position where. The position is old and is not giving you high end. He's thirty four years old. He's That's not old get, he, for a for a mobile quarterback. Easy. He's thirty four years old. I'm with you on the sense of we have no weapons. I would love to see us push the ball downfield, but we can't. And it's not Russ's fault. He obviously has that capability. He's still a very very solid deep ball thrower. We do not have the personnel to take those shots. I'm with you. Sean Payne was brought to this team to push the ball downfield, move the ball down the field consistently. It is very difficult to do that when we don't have a weapon to do that. Maybe we start to unleash Marvin Mims because he's a little bit faster, a little bit more versatile. But we only saw him have two targets this past he weekend. He didn't play a ton of really, snaps. Really was one of the bigger shocks. Cortland Sutton's not that type of guy. Cannot really separate like that. No, uh, you you guys average. are right. You said top 30. That's fucking generous because <laughs> there's a lot of teams that have two receivers better than him. He's I can, an average off the top receiver. of my head, there's like five, six. We need weapons. It can't be that our two running backs are our two best weapons. That is not a recipe. So to, to have success, and it's a very easy out. Not that I'm saying that's what you're doing. I understand where you're coming from. But Russ is not the one that I'm looking at as the problem. You get him a weapon, he can still make things happen. It's, We're the worst weapons room in the national it's just football. The I never, I never five. said. I mean, listen. If you I have never, a top five pick with this quarterback class, you're not going to get this opportunity. I need every Marvin. Single year. We're not going to get a Marvin. When's the next time there's a yeah, Marvin? It's true, but give me the elite <laughs> quarterback over the elite receiver. I never hold up. I never said Russell Wilson is the problem. He's not right now. He's not the solution either, though. Like he's not, Nels. and that's the issue. Question. If they fall at if they they if they get five or four and Caleb's gone, Drake's gone, who else would you take with five? Shador's up there also. Be there. So you wouldn't take Marvin Harris at that point. If he's sitting right there, any uh, other well, like I mean, if you, those two quarterbacks are gone. You have to see how Shador plays the rest of the year. Like Penix as we stand right now, it's only been two some, games, you know. So it's got Penix, bro. Penix? Penix, Michael Penix, oh, no. Quinn Ewers, if he has Over a good year. Quinn Ewers. No, Marvin I'm Harris. That these are oh. top no no no. Oh. These are top. I'm just talking about just in comparison to Marvin Harris. Type talent. There's very well, listen, few. I don't think, like, if May is not on the board, I would go Marvin. But I think the Broncos still should draft a quarterback within the, the first three round. But we're still committed to, to Russ for years. You guys are, but here's the thing about that. And you mentioned it, dead cap of $80 yeah. million. Yeah. How do you get out of that? I don't see the growth for the Broncos as a team it gets better, moving though. forward. It gets goes to 49. Because, for one... 
49. You have <laughs> a lot of money invested into Russ. The offensive line, you made two big signings. I like Ben Powers. For sure. I'm not a fan of McGlinchey. I know. The wide receivers, Corlin Sutton, I, I think he's average. Jerry Judy is he's good. I mean, he's he's not nothing crazy, though. Is he's he just top whatever. 30? He's not top 30 either. I don't think. He's way, he's definitely closer to top 30. 100%. Than no, no, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Sutton. Like, Sutton top 30. I don't know. You've, inve- you've made so investments. You've made investments onto that defensive line, but that defensive line is very injury prone. And even at its best, it's not a top end defensive line. And then outside of Pat Sertan and Justin Simmons, really the secondary is like, you know, Justin you can just Simmons, target Mathis well, and you can Quan, abuse him. Quan, when he's healthy, he, he put together a fantastic season last year. It's unfortunate that he's starting the year on the injury reserve. But I can't disagree overly There's with what you're saying. There's just too many holes on the roster for me to be like, if I, we just get a receiver, then we can be comp- competing, yeah. you know? If you get a receiver, you can push the ball downfield and actually take deep shots with the personnel you right now. your defense isn't good do right that. now. Well, you it's, can. it's two things. Yes, we're not moving the ball downfield. Our possessions, our, our drives are super long. A lot of check downs, trying to just get to these 10 yards, ex- keep making first downs. Mm-hmm. When it's you have no explosives, exactly. When you have you no get a explos- holding, it's first and 20. Now it's like, fuck. You can't get it. Yeah, yeah. It's no shot. And, and, and listen, a credit to Javante. I'm sorry, Joel. Hey, to a credit to Javante, a credit to Samaje for Javante coming back week one, looking very explosive. And Samaje, same, same there, it goes to him. But man, it, it's hard for me. And I'm putting my fandom aside for Russ. I'm being very sincere when I say this. He is so far away from number one, number two on my list of problems that can that can fit that need to be fixed for the Denver Broncos. That when it comes to this draft, yes, I I do not want the Broncos to succeed this season because that is very unrealistic of me to ask. I want us to be in that top five conversation because I need a game changer. On the outside. I'm tired of the inconsistency. I'm tired of having the highest paid wide receiver room for us to continue wow. to put out mediocrity. We you can the highest, we, paid, highest wide paid wide receiver room. When Tim Patrick, it's yeah. it's super it's unfortunate, unfortunate yeah. very unlucky. Jerry Judy, another one that does not play that does not play very consistently. That when he's on the field, he makes things happen. But that's the question of whether whether he's gonna be on the field or not. And Sutton, who he gave the contract to, and he hasn't played either. And when he has played, he hasn't played great. If Harrison's not on the board, would you still go with whoever the wide receiver two ends up being, or would you rather take? Abaca. Or would you rather take a Sanders or, or a, you know one Here, of the other? Here's the thing, and, and then this is where things get difficult because I feel week one we're talking about the draft. It's kind of nuts. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, for the Broncos because that's that has to be our reality. The defense Already? could not get off. Bro, I so don't you're f- giving up on the season. Wait, the, remind we me, have no skill position players. Remind me what was your prediction for the Broncos before this season? Ten and seven. Oh, I don't know if week one it's you over. could just say it's I'm over. over. Lost to the Raiders. I, they, you, you can't They're beat terrible. the Raiders. You, you They're beat them so bad, years. bro. The Raiders are so bad. Uh, so let me get this are straight. They that bad? Uh, in this episode alone, <laughs> the Broncos are done, and the Giants no more. Double digit one. Now didn't the Giants, that. he wasn't. He didn't say so that. No he more said there's still a chance. Punk asshole. It, will they still get double digit wins? The Giants. I said yes, bitch. Very hesitantly. Uh, now, what do you mean? There was no hesitancy this is, in my voice. This is, uh, well, you're going to be wrong either way. But I respect <laughs> I respect you sticking to your guns. Podcast. This is the issue that I have with the Broncos. And I had it when Sarah. we previewed them was that shit you're talking about with the offense not being explosive, with running the ball and, and checking it down. That's what I thought this offense was going to be. I agree. And your defense is not elite enough to keep your offense in games. See, but that's unfair because last year was elite. But this it's year not going to be not. this year. It's not, not going to be this year. It's, it's hard really makes for defenses year to year to just, remain yeah. at the top of the but league. But we've been top of the regress. league you have for been. three years, four yeah. years. Yeah, but that's why. It's that hard fifth, to keep that yeah. fourth year, that fifth year. Even the it's Niners hard. have fallen off before. Randy Gregory, I mean, God, that's going to be a terrible contract. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. That was bad. He was always like an you injury risk. Stink, but. bro. Now, nah, but when well, Randy Gregory's on the field, he's yeah, good. He it's plays just, well. He just wasn't that good this past weekend. And what happened to the mighty Denver Broncos, man? Yeah, we're Super Bowl champions. Mighty. Oh, and they was, you know, that. winning with paying and shit, you know? 50 yeah, was TDs. at that point. Defense carry. I was put, I put the Manning cast on last night, bro. They were fucking room for the Bills. Wow. I wouldn't say they were room for the Bills. That was Fitzpatrick, bro. No, Peyton was actively root. When the Jets had that kick, the, the touchdown to win the game, he was sick. Was he? Yes. Why would he root for the Jets? Well, he, he was normally, the normally you're just like, you're neutral. You're not rooting ah, for Like, yeah. he was actively rooting for the Bills. To the Jets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we beat Peyton in the playoffs before. We I guess. Yeah, that's but, probably but what it really is. That's, no, that's probably what it is. Them. You won yes. by two points. Yeah, we our defense gave him hell that day, though. He said yeah. we smoked them, and you won by two. But then the year before that, 
Exactly. You, you they beat us. The and we got our payback. Yeah. We got our payback. Shout out to you guys. Yeah, yeah. We did our thing. And you didn't go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, we got our payback, baby. And you didn't and they go lost. to the Super Shout Bowl. Shout out Crow. Who cares? They, they lost lose. too. And it's crazy because Payton still has the Super Bowl for you guys. Didn't Fuck he throw man. an, an interception ceiling pick Go ahead. Super try Bowl? again. He did. <laughs> he did. Because Reggie ran, ran the wrong route. Oh, okay. Yeah. Excuses. <laughs> excuses. It's not an excuse. Running the wrong route. Reggie Wayne came out and said it. Joe Bro, in the last play of the game, he was sacked by Aaron Donald. Didn't have a chance. He did. Yeah, I agree. I agree. He also had a Mickey Mouse seventy-five yard touchdown that we don't forget about. Shouldn't forget about. It's not uh, Mickey Mouse. A play is a play. Make a play. A play, is a make play. A play. What if he could have threw it to the sideline. He could have been inaccurate. It could have been. It's a crazy dunk. because very it's easily Joe Burrow could have gone to having one of the worst Super Bowl performances but of all time. But he didn't. But and Payne Manning won Super Bowl three touchdowns, seven interceptions in that playoff run. It wasn't that good mm-hmm. against really one of the better mediocre. defenses of the Chicago Bears in the Super Bowl, not in the playoff run. In mm-hmm. the playoff run versus those teams. And he, he also came ass. back and beat Tom Brady, the best of all time. Oh yeah, does he have? How does this go in, from a Does he have to Super Bowls Tom Brady? He doesn't. Oh, Tom Brady's a fucking. But what's goat, the AFC why. Championship Tom record Tom between Brady. Tom Brady and Peyton Manning? Do you know? I don't care who got more rings. Okay, I can tell you the head-to-head in the AFC Championship. What what's LeBron's record against Nowitzki? Who's better? What the fuck? All Tom. Who? Nowitzki. Dirk. Dirk's funny. Want to know? Want to know? Undefeated. Undefeated. Never lost. Never lost. Eight points a whole game. Nuts. How do you bounce back next year? Wouldn't matter, Dirk. He was facing a young OKC team. That's a Mickey Mouse. Oh, happened the year after that against one of the greatest coaches. Wouldn't matter if Dirk anyway. That's respectable. Yeah. What happened the year after that? What the Spurs did the year? Ooh. Smoked him. Pew, 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 pew. And then uh, lost He's again in 2015, unfortunately. But he did average 36 points. And then the greatest comeback of all time. For sure. He lost to a team with starting with a starting small four to Harrison Barnes. That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> that is sad. And Steph Curry's <laughs> one of the best players of all Wait, time. <laughs> that's kind of funny. But this, <laughs> Harrison oh, Barnes, crazy. and then Harrison Barnes ended up getting kicked off the team because of LeBron. It's funny James though because after. James Harden also lost to the starting the team with starting <laughs> Harrison Barnes. The, the play, the series right before. I don't appreciate you, man. <laughs> can you imagine your favorite player not I even can't. making it to a championship? I can't. Imagine. I'd be fucking fuming. My favorite player is a champion. He's a legend. He's a leader. He's changed the game. You know, I have one of those, so I don't. You know, soon to be champ over here. Mahomes is one too. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, jump to Mahomes. Uh, Mahomes has one. Huh? Now let's talk about uh, Joe Burrow, Christ. the Cleveland Browns, the most overrated quarterback in the National Football League. So, just gonna ask you guys, how much blame is on Joe Burrow for this game against the Cleveland Browns? Week one, throwing for eighty something yards, eighty four yards, completed forty five percent of his passes, I believe. This was Joe Burrow's worst game of his career. Pretty comfortably, uh, but he's not he's not solely to blame. I mean, they got shut out in the first half. You were two for fifteen on third down, 140 yards of total offense, completed 45 percent of his passes. Joe Burrow was not good, not at all. Um, a lot of people are, you know, there's I don't want to say excuses, not not the right word, but it was raining. Even though Deshaun had a better statistical game than him, offensive line allowed 13 pressures. Burr got hit 10 times, only sacked twice. But he was constantly under duress. There's the clip going out there of, you know, Miles Garrett out there between the legs and just violating that interior offensive line. Um, and then the receivers. Chase held to less than 40 yards. T. Higgins targeted seven times but zero receptions. The offense was really bad. But I don't think we would be doing the Browns justice if we just talked about how bad Joe Burr was. I agree with that. Because the first game of the Jim Schwartz era, off to a great start. She was electric. He was, I mean... You saw Miles Garrett and Zadarius Smith move around the defensive line. Talk to him, right? When they did blitz Burrow, which was, it wasn't all the time, but he only completed 25% of his passes against the blitz, which is by far the lowest of his career in any game. Last season, he completed about, um, do I actually have the number? I don't have the number. I lied. <laughs> um, but he was around like middle of the pack, like 14th, 13th in terms of against the blitz completion percentage. Um, yeah, last year was 14th in adjusted completion percentage against the blitz. The Browns, though, whether they were playing... Particularly, particularly in man coverage, Joe Burrow could not do anything. He completed two passes when the Browns played man coverage. The guy's overrated. He could not do anything against the Blitz. So the there's no doubt in my mind the Bengals will bounce back. But I think the bigger story of this game is the Browns' defense and how dominant they were. You know, if the Browns it is dominant defensively, the offense just has to be good, and they're going to be a Super Bowl contender. That's how elite this defense was. Jim Schwartz has an extensive history with toying around with defensive fronts, and we've seen a plethora of that. You know, we know Miles Garrett is an edge rusher. Well, he was putting Miles Garrett on the center. The alignment, they had a wide alignment so they can take advantage of the speed of Miles Garrett and Zadarius Smith on the edge. 
they both had six pressures each in this game. There was times when Sedaria Smith and Miles Garrett dropped back in coverage. I mean, Jim Schwartz really played around with the defensive fronts a ton, a bunch of stunts, and really didn't give the Bengals and Burrow the same look every single drive. It was different looks, and it's really hard to just play football that way when you're trying to make up for everything, and especially since you know Joe Burrow got a calf injury. He wasn't practicing. So all of those offensive signals, managing protections, you're all, it's all going to kind of be, the communication's kind of be a little, it's going to be a little rocky when that happens. But the Browns, average time to pressure of 1.95 seconds, the That's six nice. fastest average time to pressure by defense in a single game since 2019. They allow 2.6 yards per play. They held Cincinnati to two for 15 on third down. And a big reason why Joe Burrow wasn't good versus man-to-man is because he was trying to take advantage of those blitz looks. When a team is blitzing you, what does that mean? You have one-on-one on the outside. Well, Joe Burrow's thinking, I have one-on-one, Jamar Chase against Denzel Ward, and T. Higgins against Martin Emerson. Don't go over there, Riv. Don't don't go over there. Don't ever try that shit again. (laughs) For me, if that's a – it wasn't completed, but it's still a good play because it's like, listen, I have one-on-one on the outside with Jamar and T. Higgins. I'm going to take a shot. Those shots, great coverage. Some of them kind of miscommunication by the receivers and Burrow. Burrow was inaccurate. He was all over the place. I was game. waiting. Thank you. Yeah, I was and waiting for that too. I needed. I needed yeah, some, some like some some truth. Yeah, that is everything I'm saying. Is Agreed. True. Everything Agreed. We just didn't hear much. No, of, but if you didn't, uh, you know, if yeah. you didn't mention Burrow, was then I wasn't yeah. going to no, allow listen, that. Because the truth of the game was that the defensive line. Absolutely shit. dominated. Unbelievable. The Bengals offensive line and them rushing only four yep. allowed for more defenders in coverage. And listen, as a quarterback, you have to let routes develop down the field. No doubt. I mean, that's number one. If routes can't have time to develop down mm-hmm. the field, then you can't generate any offense. But you've told and us even, a lot that and even with you know and even with Joe Burrow, like that's the schematic part of it. But yeah, Joe Burrow, he wasn't accurate. It didn't look like he was completely healthy. It was it was raining. Let's give benefit of the doubt. It was it raining. It was pissing I mean, rain. It was hard to grip. Hey, the ball. I said this about that. Trey Lance. Yeah, Nobody yeah. wanted to hear it. Uh, it Fucking stop. gross. But man. it's a it big was reason pissing why rain. Deshaun Watson didn't have himself a bad yeah. game. That's why you have to look at Joe Burrow and look at this performance and think, what the hell happened? I mean, listen. But essentially, there, every, were, there was a bunch of times when Deshaun Watson was throwing the ball and the ball slipped and was inaccurate and hit the ground. The ball was affecting both quarterbacks. It wasn't until the second half where the rain stopped and the Bengals were going on a little bit of a drive, but then they got stalled. Deshaun Watson was able to lean on a running game by Nick Chubb. They were going, they were running their offense with a lot of play action looks. They went empty to take advantage of mismatches. Ultimately, Joe Burrow last year was the least blitz quarterback in the NFL. Even with the offensive line being bad. Teams defensively played the Bengals, and they said, listen, we can get home with four or five. So we're not going to blitz Joe Burrow because we have to cover Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. And in the AFC Championship game, they doubled Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. But the Browns completely took that apart. They said, you know what? First game of the season, we're going to blitz the hell out of the Bengals. We're going to trust our young secondary to hold up against T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. They blitzed on 38% of dropbacks. Burrow, two for 11 for 16 yards on those blitzes, one first down. Teams blitzed Burrow at the lowest rate last season, and Joe Burrow is one for 11 on 10-plus air yards. So the game plan for the Bengals' offense was kind of very simplistic. It's like, you're blitzing me, I'm throwing a goal ball to T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. Some of those incompletions were inaccurate balls. Some of those were perfect coverage by the cornerbacks. Ultimately, my biggest takeaway from this game is not Joe Burrow, Agreed. is not the Bengals' offense, even though against teams like this that can cause mismatches, it is concerning. The ultimate takeaway from this is that the Browns' defense is going to be an elite unit this season. Agreed. This is going to be a top-end defensive line. It could be the best defensive line in football because they can finally stop the run. My defensive player of the year is Micah Parsons still, but Miles Garrett could very easily win the award. He's been a top-end edge rusher. I would say the best edge rusher. But the problem is the defensive line around him has never been good. So he's always been double-teamed at a very high rate. But now you can't do that. So now you can move him around the line, and 
he he's going to look dominant like this week in and week out. This is how Miles Garrett is going to play throughout the entire season. I don't have much to say, I, Riv. I, I really want to put the floor on you for the fact that we know that this is your this is your agenda. Real quick, all I will all I will talk about is I agree with a lot of what you're saying. I don't believe that we're gonna we're, we shouldn't be highlighting uh, Joe Burrow and and company as the main reason or the the big takeaway from this game. You're 100 percent right. The credit needs to be given to this Browns defense, the defensive line getting pressure on Joe Burrow, forcing him to to rush his throws, for, forcing him to rush his reads, and the secondary also stepping up, making some playing some very great coverage. On T. Higgins, T. Higgins wasn't able to bring in a single catch. Denzel Ward, Denzel Ward had him in hell in the in the opportunities that he did cover T. Higgins. He they, all around they just had a great game plan. Miles Garrett being able to to be flexible and versatile, moving all over the defensive line. Zadarius Smith and him are going to wreak havoc on quarterbacks. It's just going to be a field day, given the fact that Miles Garrett is amongst the elite of the elite at the defensive line position. Ah, man, you know, Joe Burrow is now one in five against the Cleveland Browns in his career. It's a kryptonite, man. So um, this is not something new. You know, th- he just hasn't been able to beat the Cleveland Browns. This is something that's been happening. Um, unfortunately, you can't talk about the defense without talking about the faults of the Bengals offense. You know, this, talk to him. this defense is just too versatile. They can pretty much do anything they want. They can run man. They can run blitz. They can do whatever they want because the secondary can hold up with the best. We've just seen it. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Board is, if not the best, one of the best trios, wide receiver trios in the NFL. Joe Burrow is one of the most precise, smartest quarterbacks in the NFL. And this secondary put those boys in hell. Denzel Ward, who's been one of the most underrated corners in national football. Greg Newsom, young and upcoming. Martin Emerson, them boys had T. Higgins, Jamar Chase in hell. And then you had that pass rush. I mean, like, this this, this Cleveland Browns defense we all knew before, like, the season started would be legit. We knew that Miles Garrett, if he gets some help, this secondary was good enough, they can make an impact. We probably didn't see 24-3, to 3, you know, this complete shutdown performance. But we knew anytime you play the Cleveland Browns with this defense, games are going to get ugly, it's going to be a dogfight. And we just seen it. That offense didn't look great. You know, outside of Nick Chubb, Deshaun Watson didn't look great, but Nick Chubb doing what Nick Chubb does, putting on a backpack show, was in the rushing game. He was loud with every run he had. And then this defense putting on a clinic. I just think, you know, Joe, like, Joe Burrow, he wasn't accurate in all his throws, but T. Higgins, you know, he, you got to respect when a quarterback just got you in hell. And T. Higgins, a lot of the he times, was he was pretty much in hell. Jamar Chase couldn't really get any separation, couldn't get open. And sometimes when your receivers can't get open, there's not much you can do as a quarterback, you know? So Joe Burrow, he tried to make a best of the situation with a messed up calf and a bad offensive line. You know, it's something you can't, you know, there's a lot of issues going on with that. But at the same time, this Cleveland team, they're legit, man. This is a first game at home. You have to set a statement. Deshaun Watson, this defense, you come together, Jim Schwartz, you have to make a statement. They, this, All the pressure was on Cleveland. The Bengals can lose the next game, and people are still going to believe this team can make the playoffs, this team, this team can run the table. But for Cleveland, everything is going to be magnified. Everything is going to have a microscopic scope on it, and they're going to be sitting there, and they're going to overanalyze every little thing about the Cleveland Browns. And even with that game, Deshaun Watson playing bad, nobody cared about the weather with Deshaun. They were just saying he doesn't look good. He was playing like shit. You know, me and Drew was throwing little ha-ha jokes on Joe Burrow on Twitter. But in reality, people are going to just over-critique anything for the Cleveland Browns. So they have to be on their A game. And that defense was 100% on the A game. And next week, you know, you got Pittsburgh, another team that you have to put your performance on. You have to stay 10 toes down. And I keep telling you about this Cleveland Brown team. They got that dog in them. I the do. aura is there. Deshaun Watson got very odd aura. And it's oh. it's, it's, <laughs> it's very much the infinite <laughs> offense. This team is going to get very, clicking. Very odd aura. Very, this, this, sure. very, very odd, odd aura. aura. And this team is going to – listen, Coop. There's Coop, something strange about him. Yeah, Coop got very. open. Moore got some plays going. DPJ is going to get it going. And Joker's going to get it going. It's not going to be raining every game. For sure. And even God if willing. it is, that's good for this Cleveland Browns defense because they're going to get physical. They're going to beat you up all game. They're going to get and, handsy. Oh, for sure. They're going to set t- Denzel Ward grabs. Fuck it. We yeah, here. That's fact. Who cares? If you're not going to call it, it's not a call. Sound like another corner I know. Did you have, no. uh, did you, I don't know if you had this number, so apologize, but the Browns in the first half, Blitzboro 53% of the time. This that's is the highest he's ever faced in his career. Yeah. yeah. You know, teams historically. Just have not blitzed Burrow. Like last year, teams avoided blitzing Burrow because they were afraid of 
what he would do to them. Some if, teams if don't he, got that trio in the, in the secondary, you know. Yeah, like Deshaun Watson to me, I didn't I didn't think he had a bad game. I really didn't. He didn't. I thought he that missed some some, some, gimmies, some yeah else. some balls were now that first half was nuts. I kind of blamed that a little bit on the rain. Fugly ass game. Just felt like every throw was at the receiver's feet. He is the one thing with him is that he is still holding on to the ball a little bit too much. Yes. He is. But bless you. bless you. Thank you. But outside of that, I thought Deshaun Watson played well, and all he yeah. has to do is play within the offense. And last year, the Browns, I think, ran a total of like eight empty formations, which means that they didn't trust Jacoby Brissett at all to like dissect the field and look at mismatches. Him. But Deshaun Watson, Future Jack like, quarterback. in the first half, it was a lot of that. It was yep. a lot of Deshaun Gotta Watson let him get comfortable. just looking at mismatches and trying to have him pick apart a defense. So I think Deshaun Watson will get better as time progresses. And he was sure. putting a lot of oomph into them throws. Like, he was trying to really get it out there. Listen, man. You mentioned the stars on defense. I think somebody that's going to fly under the radar in this discussion, I want to mention him, is, is, nah, is Grant Delpit, even though okay. JLK is great, too. That's my yeah. dog. Is Grant Delpit at LSU. I was very high on him coming out of the draft. Hasn't really found his footing yet. He was injured when he came into, came into the league as a rookie. But... He was one of those guys providing safety help on a lot of those goal balls, and he was somebody that was getting a lot of pass breakups and really muddying things up. So Grant Delpit, I think, has always kind of had that starting. He's always been a starting safety. He's just had to put it together, and you get Juan Thornhill back with Grant Delpit, a talent on his defense. They got a lot of it. This is the best opportunity to break that division curse of never winning the division. You got Baltimore banged up. They seem like they get hurt every year. It's unfortunate for them. You got Cleveland, the team you just beat, so the confidence is there. This defense you know can put up a fight. And then you got the Pittsburgh, who just got their asses kicked. You feel like you can put your defense against that offense and have extreme success. You know, this is the oh, the one time where you can look like, yo, we have a legit chance to win this division. It's probably one of the toughest divisions, if not the AFC East. This is the next one up. So you got to, like, this is the confidence is extremely high in Cleveland NFC right now. East? What do you think, bro? Are you just talking AFC in general? No, I think this division is better than the NFC East because because the after the Eagles and the Cowboys is a drop off. Uh, Drew's talking about the curse. Oh, the curse! I'm so sorry. Um, the curse for me. I mean, Eagles guys. So I'm gonna say the curse is we're gonna break the curse. No, I'm I'm with you there. Yeah, but it's a chance. We, Cowboys are fucking nice. They're uh, dumb good. So I'm, when's, I would, when's the first time the Eagles and Cowboys play this? Hopefully year? deep. You know, we get these wins up, you know what I'm saying? And see them when we see them. I am curious to see how the Bengals are going to change their November offensive 5th. approach first game. next time they face the Browns because last year, 90% of their offense after week five was shotgun-based. You got to kind of switch it up, man. You kind of got to get more quick passes inside Joe Mixon there. was solid that game. Yeah, he was. He was averaging like 4.5 yards per He's carry. He was there. good. But ultimately, man, I, I don't know. I feel like the Bengals have to have more counters offensively, even with Joe Burrow being rusty. Even with the conditions, even with the offensive line, the offense cannot have this type of But you of mentioned output. that this was the first time they've seen that type of pressure and that yeah. type of blitz. And so they should, as we know, this team and Joe Burrow have a counter for the next time they play. And maybe they don't. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Listen, I'm, I'm looking for. I'm maybe, looking forward to week two. Then maybe I'll come. Too. Maybe I'll come in and say Cleveland the blitz Bengals. You know, maybe I'll come in and talk my shit. You know, but you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. You know, this week in the NFL, I would love to go first. Uh, this week in the NFL. The Atlanta Falcons, my goodness, what what an interesting game that was where Bryce Young did not have the best rookie performance of the weekend. I'd give that that title to Anthony Richardson. But my biggest takeaway from this is that this offense is going to be what I expected. Uh, It's going to be a primarily rush offense. But what I didn't expect was that Tyler Algier would outsnap B. John Robinson. But it's not the fact of not knowing that Tyler Algier isn't a talented dude. We knew that. Was an 1,000-yard rusher. Yes, he was behind one of the best run-blocking offensive lines that there was in the game last year. But he's also a very talented dude. Put that on full display against the Panthers. 15 attempts for 75 yards, 5, five yards per carry. Was able to get into the end zone twice. But let's give some credit to, to the rookie, Bijan Robinson. 10 rushes for 56 yards, 6 catches for 27 yards. And one of the most impressive debut touchdowns you will see from a running back. Hits the quick step back. Hits the quick mm-mm, in and out into the end zone. Very, very special play from a very, very special individual. This rush offense is going to be fantastic. And it will be, once again, a top three <coughs> rush offense in the National Football League. And this game was won on the shoulders of these two men. Desmond Ritter, uh, I, I can't watch this. Uh, he didn't play a bad game. He didn't make. He made no, really, no mistakes. 
Caught his he, own pass. He did catch his own. At one pass. point, he was four for four, zero yards. It was really he frustrating. Was he was heading one, into the ten fourth, yards. He was heading into the fourth quarter with fifty three yards passing. Yeah, and and it, it breaks my heart because we were talking about this yesterday on the fantasy reaction. You have two of the most special, most talented receiver, low key receiver and tight end. One of the most talented tight ends in the National Football League, just with such a unique skill set in Kyle Pitts and Drake London, one of the young premier wide receivers that we all know, we all see the talent that Drake has, that these two guys cannot be unleashed, that these two guys are the third and fourth options on this team because they don't have a quarterback that they trust to push the ball downfield. And you, it, it, it is very evident you watch the tape. He does not have the confidence to push the ball downfield. And if he takes a shot, it's once a game. And, and we saw that to Kyle Pitts. Yeah, and Kyle <laughs> Pitts bailed him out because he just throws the ball up in double coverage. Kyle Pitts fights through a that DPI. Was a and that was a great throw. That, he, that, that wasn't a bad throw. <laughs> it, was, it was one-on-one. -on -one. The, safety, the safety was to Kyle Pitts' left. Kyle, Kyle Pitts was one-on-one, -on -one and, and was Desmond, Ritter, Desmond Ritter led him to By that the, throw. By the time the ball got there, he was double covered. Pitts has to get out of the way and adjust to the ball. It's one of the best catches we saw in week one. You might call it a good throw. He would by the time the ball got there, he was double covered. Now we're gonna see. We're gonna see Riv. Look at the throw. To finish my statement before Riv does see this clip, this offense is going to be primarily Ooh. on the two running backs. I'm I'm very excited. It's kind of nice. See. That's a great it was a that's, great throw. It was that's, a, that's that's a, a great safety read. Was a great that's Kyle Pitts, Pitts bailing too. him out. I'll be honest. No, but listen, when you have a, a a weapon like that. Oh, I oh you I know. Just no, give him a chance. Oh, I know, sure, but they don't give him a chance. He got Pitts, three targets. Pitts was Pitts was one on one with the safety. It looks like, it looks Drake, like Pitts was doubled the Drake whole time. Drake London though. had zero catches, one target. Kyle Pitts, he read it. Joel just mentioned it. Had what four targets yesterday? Yeah, that's good. Throw. Two two days ago, excuse me. Shout out to Kyle Pitts. It's just that was a great throw too, though. He look, put he could have been inaccurate. Like you know what I'm saying? I mean, Kyle, Kyle Pitts, Pitts had to adjust sure. to it. See, Riv, not really. He is that on Pitts or is that Ritter? More Pitts for okay. sure. Yeah. It was more. more pits. It was more Pitts, but that's not a bad throw. That was a great throw by Ritter too. Ritter threw so, it yeah. away from the safety. My this, just my this week in the NFL, something that was let me not say sur overly surprising, but more so the fact that Bijan did get out snapped, and that the goal line work was primarily being given to Tyler Algier. Never you forget, uh, Dell's laughed at me about Tyler Algier when you drafted oh, in the him, draft. Bro. Look, he well, could be the leader rusher. Yeah. Okay, well, he won't be. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. We know Bijan is still going to be very productive, but I went on the Ball Game podcast. Shout out to them. Oh, Ball Game. And they Legends. asked me for, like, a hot take, and I was like, my hot take is I don't think Bijan is going to finish as high as everybody thinks when it comes to fantasy. Just because so I— So what's he going to be? I mean, he's not going to be number one. He was being drafted sure. as, like, a top four what is he? running he back. Was, so this week, he just finished as running back nine. Yeah, I don't think he's going to finish as a top three running back. In top he was draft top three running back. In oh. in a week where he didn't even see fifty percent of snaps, he still finishes as RB nine. I mean, I understand, but my concern wasn't that Bijan isn't great. My concern was I'm not that, saying that. My concern was that Arthur Smith is going to still use Tyler Algier a lot. But even with using Tyler Algier a lot, he still was a top ten running back. Yeah, but I said top three. I didn't say no. top nine. Again, but in week one, the as will, a rookie, they will go up. he still was top nine. That's what so I'm saying. So over the course of the season, Al Jair is going to get less. He's not going to get still his looks. Bijan's just looks. going to continue to be more and more yeah. unleashed. Tyler Algier won't go away. He's very good of a running back. But that doesn't mean that, that Bijan still can't get his because he's still getting six Six receptions as well. Well, ultimately, my take is that he's not going to finish within the top three. He was drafted as a first-round pick in almost every single fantasy draft. So if he doesn't finish as a top three running back as a first-round pick, that is kind of disappointing. Hey, week one, he's off to finish. a solid start, finished I mean, top nine. I understand, but for me, I just know what Arthur Smith likes and what he does. He's a Ar fucking criminal. Arthur Smith is not— Is he? Is he a criminal? He's, he's not a criminal. Maybe no, for, for fantasy. fantasy. For fantasy, I'm saying. I, he I feel wins like games. it's due to situation. It's not his fault that Desmond Ritter's his QB. I go get a different quarterback. Who? Whole, who? Whole off season. Who? who? Anybody. But who? Jimmy G. Okay. <laughs> he okay. might not want anybody. Listen, that would have been gas, been actually. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Damn it. I think when it comes to Arthur Smith, he likes playing his way. <laughs> Fuck, bro. He likes rushing the football, and I Jimmy feel G like... would have been awesome. <laughs> week one... What Arthur Smith's game plan was, I think that he will dial up more plays for Drake London and Kyle Pitts moving forward. God willing. Just because last year, the Falcons <laughs> ran the ball on 55% of their first downs, but they also had the highest play action rate on first downs too. To begin the season, what the Falcons have to do 
is the Falcons <laughs> have to set up the run. They have to have teams fear the run like they did last season. So I think that's what Arthur Smith is setting up for. That's why Bijan got so many carries. That's why Al Jair got so many carries. Why do you say Al Jair? It's John Algier. <laughs> Al Jair, Al Jair. It's okay. It's, it's the right. same Just thing. Saying, it's, no, not. it's like Rip you, saying Golder. Or what do you say? Uh, go, go, ah, some bullshit. Some shit. <laughs> you Al-Jair, talking Al-Jair. to the fact that he farted is elite, <laughs> yeah. elite, elite. <laughs> Podcasting, bro. I thought honest. he just burped. No, I didn't bro, know he farted. farted yeah. and you kept. I going. thought it was like, a burp at first, and they started laughing. Yeah, like, like you keep, yeah. keeping your composure was so elite, bro. Shout out to you for no, that. No, but but just because it's a man's name, you gotta respect that. It's Tyler Algier. Tyler Algier, got it. So for me, Arthur Smith, he's just trying to set up this offense so teams are gonna start respecting <laughs> his run more. Desmond Ritter, we're gonna talk about it in the quarterback debuts. For me, my this week in the NFL is two players. One is Jesse Bates. Two interceptions, a forced fumble, five Amazing. tackles. Great, game. Great Amazing. debut. He gave Bryce Young two welcome to the NFL moments okay. because Bryce Young threw two interceptions to the middle of the field. He's going to learn very quickly that in the NFL, safeties play much higher up. And it was on the same concept For with sure. Bryce Young Definitely. through both those interceptions. And my second one is Calvin Ridley. Just had to make sure he didn't steal one. Eight more. receptions, 101 yards, one touchdown. I mean, Calvin Ridley is going to have a top 10 wide receiver season. Like, he's going to be that good. For the entire year, he's Trevor Lawrence's first option. For sure. It's not Christian Kirk. It isn't. It's Calvin Ridley, and he showcased it week one, and I'm happy about that because I got him in a lot of leagues. I love that pick for you. Um, Drew mentioned my this week in the NFL a bit before, but I think the most surprising game of this whole week one was the fact that the Rams <laughs> went on the road into Seattle and won. Without Cooper Cup. I When we're doing the power rankings, I had the Rams at like 27. I was like... Just I'm giving the respect to Stafford Cup, who was healthy at the time or, or coming back from a hamstring, and Sean McVay. And I was like, I think I'm giving them respect for him here at 27. They went into Seattle, and Matt Stafford looked like he didn't miss a beat. You know, last year he was banged up. The offensive it's line was terrible. 330 yards, 24 for 38. You mentioned it earlier. Puka Nakua, my fault. Puka Nakua, who um, they're a day three pick, fifth round pick from BYU, who had the talent but had injuries in college. He was getting a ton of hype in training camp in the preseason. Didn't do a ton on the field in the preseason, but week one, getting 10 catches for 119 yards. Tutu Atwell, also 119 yards. The fact that Matt Stafford is out there getting Tutu Atwell and Puka Nakua 100-plus yard games tells me everything I need to know. First ballot Hall of Fame. Stafford is back. He's in that top 10 quarterback conversation. Wow. Um, For what he did week one. Talk his shit. The fact that in this offensive line is still trying to mesh, still trying to get together with Sean McVay, Cooper Cup will hopefully, God willing, come back week five. If they can survive and they could be, you know, three and one, even two and two once he gets back, this is a team that was your overreaction. I'm with you. They could fight for a wild card spot in a really weak NFC. So those, because I remember I asked you about your tier list. Now, where does Stafford go back to? He would go back into the DAC range. Back to, okay, yep. okay, okay, yep. cool. So I told you, he still got a lot left. Matthew Stafford's never been out of it. He's, he's just been He injured. was just hurt. Yeah, it was me just probably overreacting. And their defense, too. Like, we were, I know I was hyping up Seattle a ton this offseason. Geno has 112 passing yards. He never had less than 180 last year. DK Lockett got banged up. JSN all shut down. Ken Walker at 64 rushing yards kind of got away because the game was a blowout, but their defense was out of this, like a lot better than I was expecting. They were 11 of 17 on third down, 400 total yards of offense. Seahawks had 3.9 yards per play. Both sides of the ball, they were a lot better than I was expecting. So I got two. Um, My my goat, my Messiah, my God, Um, Justin Jefferson. (laughs) Man, first half had 140 yards, bro. That's, that's what I'm yeah. finna talk about. First half, though, he looked like he didn't miss a beat. No. OPOI. Yeah. On his, he was just different. You know, yak yards. He he wanted them one. Second half. Talk about aura. Yo, his aura, aura is definitely nuts. high power. It's insane. Um, and then second half, two targets, 12 yards. He had a quote. He said, we just missed some plays. Didn't execute fully on certain plays. But I didn't feel like they took me out of the game. Just the ball didn't come my way. So, thanks to pick a side, I went to go look at the, you know, the replay of the game. He was indeed open. You know, uh, Kirk Cousins had twenty. Kirk Cousins had twenty two plays in the second half. Just for some reason, didn't get him the ball. You know, for whatever reason that is. And of course, Jetta's contract talks. They kind of died down, but because he doesn't really want to talk about He'll it during the season. Bag. Don't worry about no, that. he will. But <laughs> the the thing is, will he get his bag in Minnesota? Has been the brewing oh, yeah, question. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're so, gonna tag him. It's gonna get corny if yeah. they don't. Tagging is such a nasty. He's thing. getting. He's I getting thirty a gone. year. I need a gun. I don't. I don't care about the teams and and how you know. Lucky they I are. I need him somewhere else. Very but for the most part, that. you they know, um, they could have won that game. 
uh, Kirk missed uh, Jettas a couple times. And then my number two is my good old buddy, J.C. Horn, man. He has missed 18 games in his first two seasons. Now he's dealing with a hamstring. Definitely one of the better, young, underrated corners in this business. He was amazing last year. He's, gonna, he's out multiple weeks, right? Yeah, he's going to be out for a couple weeks. It's they, uh, Trey, Troy Hill is going to take his spot for right now. It just sucks because he, if he's fully healthy, he's he, can, he can be in that conversation for a top 10 corner in this league. He has the talent. The talent is there. But unfortunately, he hasn't been able to stay on the field. And that sucks because I really do believe in my guy. But he will miss some time for a couple weeks with a hamstring. And that hurts for a young team trying to make a you know some excitement going on. Let me ask when you guys a question. Games. Are you guys out hey. on franchise tags? Relax. Um, I am. The second year franchise tag is whack. I feel yeah, like that's disgusting. It is kind of ass because especially when you get franchise tag like Kirk Cousins was like two, three two, years yeah. and you're just getting and, franchise. And, you, you know and, how many and for a franchise tag, you have to stay with that team, right? Yeah, well, you that's, don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't have to like play technically. Yeah, right? see, you that sucks. That means you're you not don't your play. Money. You miss. You yeah. don't get your money. You miss a whole year in football. Yep. You can't just miss yep. a year. Like that. So that that yeah. shit is ass. Like nah, I don't yeah. want to be here. I don't want to be here. You shouldn't have to franchise tag. It's one of the biggest luxuries that all teams get that really screw over the players. Yeah, franchise tag. It, it limits it player movement for the players. a lot. Puka Nakua, you know he has a very similar profile to Cooper Cup yep. in terms of what Ooh. they like to do as route runners. Yeah. Okay. In the first five weeks, until Cooper Cup comes back at least, Puka Nakua is going to get a fair share of, of targets. Yeah, there's 15 a, there's a, targets. Yeah, there's an 80% want. chance Puka doesn't have a face on Madden. I'm going to check today. Probably. No, nah, he so doesn't. He was a fifth round pick. Oh, yeah, no BYU. Shot. Did he play? Him and Zach maybe overlapped. It's just Maybe week not. one, but Beep. with the Seahawks, um, you see very early. Freshman, two of their tackles got injured, Charles Cross and Abraham Lucas in the game. and, and that, Those are the best tackles, right? Yeah, and that definitely added to the pressure they were able to generate on Geno. And the defense, I mean, the defense is still not good, bro. Like, yeah, so the, the video with Geno. The Gino, Seahawks defense is bad. Yeah, so when he was like, oh, shit, um, oh, my God, when uh, Aaron Donald was coming through the middle. Yeah. Nah, that had me crying, yo. Gino? Yeah, he was scared oh, as hell. He was like, oh, my God, just threw the <laughs> ball. He saw Aaron Donald. That's a scary you guy, know what? bro. I was looking at the comment section of our top 10 NFL players, and when you said Aaron Donald, you got a lot of pushback on that. That's kind of the most ridiculous shit I've ever seen. Yeah, he's quite easily a top 10 player. Yeah, ever. people were very, like, it's top. Lawrence Taylor, like, almost no gap at all. Aaron yeah, there's Donald. not. There's not. He's definitely a top 10 player. People were ever. excited. Nobody said Mahomes. That was a, another well, we big said, comment. We, we said that he easily yeah. can be. Yeah, people were like, no, don't put Mahomes up He's there. not Peyton yet, but he definitely can Talk be. Talk your shit, Twin. It's my goat. So the dad die. Talk your shit, Twinsky. Seven uh, interceptions in a playoff run. Mahomes would never. He, he actually. <laughs> You're cooking. Uh, back, I think he also is I can one, look it of, up right now. one of 10, 11 quarterbacks that has um, 10 touchdowns uh, in a playoff run. Mahomes 10 is, is nuts. crazy. And to do it in five years. 10, yeah, no. Yep, 10 and 2. He had 11 and 3. Oh, this guy's good. No. <laughs> yeah. were, were those years with buys too? No, this is playoffs. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. They always had a yes. buy. Yeah, 90% saying, of the yeah. time yeah. had a buy. He, he, he can quite easily go to hell. I yeah, 2021, they lost to the Bengals. He went 11 and 3. And then 2019, they went undefeated. So he won the Super Bowl. They went 10 and 2. He has the best passer rating in, in the NFL playoffs. And we history. need to fall off. That's your Luca? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Mahomes, Mahomes Luca is, absolutely <laughs> wishes he was Mahomes. <laughs> Mahomes is Jordan. Mahomes is Michael Jordan. Oh, okay. He's Everybody, LeBron James. Going. He doesn't lose as much as LeBron. So nah. He's what Michael. Do you mean? He's Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan's kind of nuts. That is Michael, a high like, that's bar. Tom, that's Tom Brady. Brady. Yeah, yeah, now lost. Brady. I like. I like the LeBron. Yeah. Like Even the LeBron, LeBron right? is like a little still like. He's oh, got to get there. He's, he's got to get there. Um, but he's lost in the Super Bowl already. He's lost in the AFC Championship. Yeah, LeBron what, never lost. The MJ never lost in the in the finals. But he lost it in the. No, first no, no, that does, that's not how that works, buddy. It's, it is how it works. No, no, no. About? When MJ gets there, he doesn't lose. Mahomes, unfortunately, got there and lost. He lost he twice. Two I and think. one. I think he lost twice in the AFC Championship. Lost in the Super Bowl. Who? Mahomes. He did. He lost twice. No, yeah, yeah he lost twice. Lost to the Brady. Lost to the Bengals. Lost in the Super Bowl to. I'm pretty 100 percent confident Michael Jordan is also undefeated in the um, Eastern Conference Finals. I mean, he played during an no, expansion. He's era. not. In the Eastern league. Conference Finals, I think he is. No, he's not. He lost to Detroit. In the second round. You said Eastern Conference Finals. Oh, you're right. Yes. 89. Yes. Yes. That's when... And 90. Then it might have been 90. I think 89, he lost to the second round. Because I know in 91... Scotty got hurt. That's exactly, I think that was 90. That's correct. Yeah, he played during the expansion team era. Well, LeBron has done his bit more impressive. Played against Plumbers, bro. Well, I did. Oh, so that's why you're saying he's Jordan. I... I fuck with that. Nah, nah, yeah, yeah. All right, now, now I'm with you. Now I'm with you. 
It doesn't matter. Nah, what you he say. cooked. Mahomes, Mahomes is neither. He's Mahomes. Neither. Yeah, Mahomes, Mahomes is neither. Expansionary. That was the best Knicks teams ever. I want you to know that. And they were ass <laughs> offensively. That doesn't matter. Great defenses. We had Anthony Mason starting. Shout had, out to him. Rest in peace, him. Shout out, yeah. Rest, you, I mean, you had Melo starting at one point. She didn't go anywhere. So what's your point? Yeah, defense wasn't there. So the defense wins championships, you know. How you got Julius Randle? We could do something with that. That, that was <laughs> so Jalen Brunson and no, what Randall. You, what you can do with a, a Julius Randle is put him in a package and trade him. Mm. So to that you get, you get a okay, let's not get that crazy. But you get Japan? someone that could play alongside Jalen Brunson. Maybe we the could trade him. Maybe New we York. could trade him to the Bulls and they'll finally, you know, make the playoffs. Zach would something. cook with Jalen Brunson. Let's stop. Let's yeah, stop. Yo, let's get, go. Let's, get Zach let's to New stop. York expeditiously. Let's stop like he wouldn't cook. Stop. He would cook. Yo, why don't we have an, a basketball podcast? What is there to talk no about? Idea. I need that soon. Everybody wants us Come to on. talk about FIBA like so bad, but oh, dude, the watch. truth about FIBA is that like the games are going on like five. I'm not game. watching them, shit. But I will say um, the the um, the season starts at the end of October. And we have to do previews soon, so we need to well, get that. We, we just need one Eastern Conference, one Western Conference. Oh God, I, I can't. Yo, I hate those episodes. Straight. I hate I those. Hate we have those to episodes. split those they up, bro. They do suck. Yeah, no. Two or years we, doing or, it two years in a row was terrible. Top, not top, just playoff teams. Top or if down. we could do, no, if we could just do divisions do. for a, 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 a episode and just call it a day, it's five teams. We can do that. Rem- I remember depth. pitching that to y'all, and y'all almost had a fucking aneurysm. It's just that divisions don't matter. They don't. It yeah, doesn't. But we can just keep it the it's five. Like we're teams. We're gonna talk about the Atlantic Division yeah. today. Hey, Let's we keep make it the five teams. Matter again. Yeah, we should, we should, we keep it the five teams. We can talk about it in depth. It's 16, 15 teams is just like. I'm not. I'm ah, exa- are we gonna tired. preview? Yeah, the, we get to fucking Charlotte. We get. To we're like, school. ah, fuck them. Their ass. Who you wants know? to talk? But I, we need to give them their respect. Should, yeah. Are we gonna talk about the in season tournament? We're gonna preview that. Fuck yeah. We should for sure. That's gonna do be that. a vibe. I can't wait for that. We're gonna talk about um, Kevin Porter. No. No. no, he doesn't deserve our. He time. doesn't deserve it. Yeah. Didn't we talk about Miles Bridges? We did. So maybe we do. We do have to give him some time. He's to, a bad to guy. let it be known that he fucking He's, sucks. He is a pretty terrible. And throw him at the bottom of the prison. The prison. I'm yeah. all for that. He sucks. I think, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm all for that. Ranking new quarterback debut. So, I was hoping that Aaron Rodgers would be one of these guys. But, Hate that N.A., fun. he's not on the list. N.A. <laughs> Derek Carr. I mean, how Jimmy would you rate his first uh, four drives? All right. Uh, do you guys know what N.A. means? <laughs> what, what does N.A. Not stand available. For? Not applicable. Available. Applicable. What do you think? I'm going available. not available. Not available. Not. Applicable. I feel like if it's not like that's just too, not available, bro. It's not applicable. I that's just, just so see. fucking doing too much. I, that's just. I wanted to know what if you guys knew what it meant. It's uh, all not. Ava- it says the same thing to me. It does. That's what so it's synonyms. Jimmy just Garoppolo, Baker Sorry, Mayfield, Riff. smarter than the person who made that uh, phrase. <laughs> 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 and the up. next, we kind of made it a little bit different. So, Derek Carr, Jimmy G, Baker Mayfield, all with new teams, but. These are the three quarterbacks, first time being the week one starter. So we'll add them in Jordan Love, Sam Howell, and Desmond Ritter. So are we going from one to five? What or are we do going you five think? To four? What do you Listen, think? Listen, last time Dell started from one. Did he? When? Yes. I don't believe you. You're, you're throwing allegations. No, no, no I swear you're, to God. You're did. typically the one that starts no, I, at one. I, I swear to God. All right, so what was it? What list? What was it? Let me go back in the podcast. <laughs> no, what the, the fuck? It was. um. Because he definitely did that. He I'm did not, it. Yeah. I just don't no, remember what it was. The only thing I remember is when I did my quarterback list for TikTok. And I started at one. Well, and also, if, we're, if, you're, if you're counting uh, you NFL standings. You did do standings, it recently. I just forgot. NFL you standings did. does not count. I, no, it wasn't standings. He did, he did it recently. I just forgot. I, have, I actually have no clue what you guys are talking about. Because we all would have done it the same fucking way. We never do it. We never, ever oh, do it the same way. Oh, When we were talking about the college quarterback prospects. And you, meant, you mentioned Caleb first. You oh. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't, you went one to five. Didn't you go one? Didn't everyone go no, one to five? No, you went first. You went first. Oh. Yeah, you, you set the tone. You set the You're the old guy. All right, I'll start. So it's six quarterbacks. So, in last place for me, it's going to be Mr. Desmond Ritter. Uh, just did not do anything to move the needle for me. It was primarily the rush attack that really won them this game. A credit to the defense as well. You mentioned it already. Jesse Bates had himself an unbelievable day. But he just did nothing to really impact the game. 15 completions on 18 attempts. Yes, super efficient, but 115 yards. Just really did nothing to really get this offense going. It was primarily that rush attack that really got them the job done. Now, next on this list, underwhelming debut for him is going to be my guy, Sam Howell. 19 of 31, 61.3 completion percentage, only 202 passing yards, one touchdown, one INT, one lost fumble. Looked pretty uncomfortable in the pocket. I was expecting more from this offense. 
Jahan really never really got going. First that first quarter, he got a few targets, he and did, then they kind of just he, he got three receptions extremely yeah. fast. Then the offense really just kind of stalled. He had some nice plays. That touchdown to Brian Robinson, very tight tough. window, sidearm sidearm throw. He had some impressive moments. Him being five here is not a testament to what he can be. It's just a matter of giving respect to these other guys because <clears throat> it is deserved. And him winning this game ultimately, coming back from behind, but being in that position in the first place, not ideal against a team that we think is going to have potentially the number one overall pick. Are we going through the entire list, or are we going like well, now you do two, five, you do two? Yeah, so it's already, I'm already going. Sorry. Uh, number number four is going to be – sorry, man. Uh, number four is going to be Fuck. Baker Mayfield. Oh, dude. That's, that's, I, I actually hate when we do that. Yeah. Like, like talk, for talk for 15 like to 20, 20 minutes. minutes. Like, can uh, we just give me the fucking rest of the fucking finish? One, no, one, Drew. I'm you, Drew, done. Drew. I love you to death. You are my brother. You talk too fucking Let me much. Fucking you cannot finish. start a list. I bear, I'm almost done. Oh, just come on. That's on y'all for letting me start. Here we you go. You said I'm no, going to start. Said, yeah, you, go said, you said that. Let me fucking no one finish. Said you go first. It's too late. Number four, Baker Mayfield, 21 of 34, 173 yards. But what he did that was huge, two touchdowns and a huge first down to end the game. Really clutch of him. Solid performance, able to get the win against Minnesota. Number three, Jordan Love. He had he had an up and down performance, had some highs, had some lows, but overall a solid game. They trusted him. He looked very comfortable in the pocket. Had a had a clutch fourth down that Aaron Jones ended up scoring the touchdown. Two touchdowns to Romeo Dobbs. A solid game overall, especially for his his debut of the 2023 season. Number two, this is where I slot in. I'm actually going to go number two, Jimmy G here. This is an on-the-fly change-up. I think that Jimmy G had a a borderline perfect clean game. The Broncos defense couldn't get any pressure on him, had the least pressures of all these guys here. And on top of it, he essentially was just pushing the ball wherever he wanted. He had over 80% completion percentage to come out with the victory. Credit to Jimmy G. Number one, Derek Carr, for the adversity that he faced, the pressure that he faced. I believe he was sacked four times, was pressured in one uh, one of the highest, most pressured quarterbacks in the National Football League to come away with this victory in his debut. A huge credit to Derek Carr. You fuckers for rushing So do me. you guys want to go? Yeah, we could. Um, <laughs> so we're letting Drew get his own yeah, list, and yeah, then we're gonna do our own. Yeah, thing. yeah let's let's uh, do the one. So one, I one. I had Sam Howell at six, just because like you mentioned, Desmond Ritter didn't do anything exceptional. It was fucking ass. The it wasn't thing, ass. The reason he just wasn't, the, he was a, the reason why I had Desmond Ritter above Sam Howell is because while he didn't do anything exceptional, he didn't make any mistakes that's either. A fact. Mm-hmm. Where Sam Howell. Two turnovers that resulted in points for the Cardinals. One was a field goal. The other one was a scoop and score a touchdown. And he had a lot of other like turnover worthy plays. There was a potential interception on the throw to he McLaurin. Only had two. In in the second quarter, he threw it kind of behind McLaurin. A safety could have pounced on that. Um Yo, this guy, Desmond Ridge, is actually mad nice. A dot of three point two. <laughs> Damn. He and cooked. The timing on Sam Howell's throws. Or just when he's throwing and he's confident, they get there. He made a number of impressive throws. But his timing is a little bit off. And he allows these defenders and defensive backs to really pounce on the ball. And defenders can kind of dictate where he's going to go with the ball. He had a high screen to Brian Robinson that Brian Robinson had to jump and stretch out all the way out for. It's sort of a one-handed it, catch yeah, he had to do it too. It, it went through his fingertips, and that could have been an interception because a defender was right there. So for me, I look at Sam Howell, and there was a lot of potential for defenders that could have broke on the ball. He had two turnovers as is. There were other plays there where I, I was like, okay, you know, let's ease it down. I thought the commander should have beat the Cardinals handily. They should have. I, I don't, I don't, and I think because Sam Howell turned over the ball, this game became much closer than it had to be. And in the second half, they weren't able to really generate much offense either. So for me, that's why I have Sam Howell at six. 202 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Oh, he's talking so 61 much. 61% completion talking percentage. Right. Right. Like, right. Y'all yeah. be on deck. We all he's talk a lot. Crazy. No, no, you... You're done. We all talk. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> different though. It's yeah. like I'm talking a lot for this one, but like when you do it for like you six it, in a yeah, row, it's now like, it gets even longer. We're all giving our list. We do this all the time. First time. We never complain though. We let yeah, you. So we keep let it you fucking left. quiet. Anyways, we're uh, just we're just doing six or one. Yeah, six yeah, but five. I feel like six, we all have the same. Six. Okay, six. so y'all, y'all have Sam Howell. I have Sam Howell. I would have had Ritter at six. I think I think Howell had some higher highs, some lower lows. The turnovers, the interception of Zayvon Collins looked like it was coming off the edge, drop back in coverage, the scoop and score fumble. It was really just that last couple of drives of the second quarter, Sam Howell had a couple really boneheaded plays. 
I thought outside of that, he was good. Desmond Ritter, on the other hand, just wasn't asked to do a lot, didn't do a lot with it. Um, so I would probably have Ritter six and Howell five. So I have Howell six because uh, he uh, turnover worthy plays. He had turnovers in the game. They should have handily beat the Cardinals with Ritter at five because I'm Spot just gonna six. I'm gonna spin Not back. Um, Ritter didn't do anything exceptional, but he didn't do anything really bad. He just kind of played the game okay. Didn't make mistakes. Didn't put his team in a terrible situation. Howell just wasn't good. It's the fucking Cardinals. He played like shit. Smoked them. Yeah, he played they like shit. Let's just call it what it is. He played like dog shit. <laughs> he that's didn't not, play like dog shit. He played like shit. shit. It's the Cardinals. It's magnified. He's turning the ball over looking stupid. And the game-winning touchdown. He might, against he might the Cardinals. It should have been that situation. <laughs> it should have never been that. He might not be the star at 10 of the year. It's not a hot take. Um, Yeah, Ritter, Ritter at five. Cook up, brother. For me, Although got, he was confident in him being the, the answer for the commanders was? as well. You. <laughs> me? Yes. When? What? When we did the one to ten, you are like a six. I was like a six. Yeah, he could. I be was a like starter. a four point five. Seven. <laughs> I, I said ah, as yeah, a six to be me. the starter. That's it. That's that's it. I'm fifty fifty on him. Screw you. Give me your fifth. Desmond Ritter is fifth, four. just because he didn't make any mistakes. You know, the Panthers' defense has to get some credit because they're really good, especially their pass. Yeah, defense. they were getting after it. Yeah, they have like, a good. The Falcons have a good rush line. Their pass defense, or their, excuse me, their their pass. Um, exactly. Under the rest, you know, I'm not a big fan of Desmond Ritter's pocket presence. I feel like he's very jittery and he escapes. I know and you're a big Desmond Ritter guy, though. He's I'm a huge Desmond Ritter guy. I never said I'm Desmond Ritter. I know you're a big Desmond Ritter guy. Ritter you know, he can, was a franchise? I just said, you're crazy. Okay. I just said Ritter can <laughs> hold the float. Hold, hold the bolt steady. That's you it. said that he was the next Matt Ryan. Yeah, mm. crazy. <laughs> Don't ever disrespect me and Matty Ice again. You want Matt Ryan to be a Jet? There's only one Matty Ice, the guy with the Super Bowl. But, yeah, that's why Ritter is fine for me. Just no mistakes, but nothing crazy either. And I thought the throw in the fourth to Pitts was, was pretty awesome. It was a pretty good throw. Number four, Jordan Love to me. Mm. Um, the accuracy was spotty, but the decision-making wow. was good. 55% completion percentage. Oh, a lot of his inaccurate passes, though, I looked at them, and I was like, it's good decision-making. The antis- anticipation was there. The footwork was there. Just the accuracy wasn't there. That one off his back foot that he's throwing deep, I think it was to Jordan to Reed. Musgrave or No, uh, it might have been to Luke. Lu- yes, yeah, you're yeah, 100% yeah. right. That That's the only one that I look at and just think that if he hits this one, we're looking at a bang-up game. Yeah, that that was a uh, – statistically, he was great. 245 yards, three touchdowns. The moments that stuck out to me the most, though, were converted on third and 13. Touchdown on third and seven at the goal line to Romeo Dobbs. Third and six conversion. Third and ten conversion. Fourth and three touchdown on the Texas route to Aaron Jones. Third and eight conversion. Desmond, I mean, Jordan Love was just converting back-to-back third downs in crucial moments, and that's why I have him at four. Oh, we do, I thought we were doing two. I oh, thought we were doing four and three. I'm sorry. So next one, number three. See, this is We never do this. We literally never do this. We do it. Do do it, though. Please just ignore him. I have number, nothing else to talk about, so I'm just gonna be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> number three, I have Baker Mayfield. You know, okay. just he had a good ass game. He, he had a clutch, great game. Bro. 173 yards, two touchdowns. I was crying. He had the great game. Back to back first down conversion plays, the throw to Chris Godwin, yep. then the scramble for the first down. And Baker Mayfield, man, just what a moment! Just the adversity. The Get your weight up, little boy. Oh, it was tough. Yeah, he was man, talking crazy. Guy, I'm not gonna lie, the aura was there was for that good. game. Nah, the His aura, aura was, was crazy. Yeah, hey. Listen, this could have been a week one overreaction, but with how bad the NFC South is, the Buccaneers could be in it. They could be in it. They beat the Vikings. I'm hurt. I'll be honest. Uh, at number four, I have Baker. Started off pretty poor, three for eleven. Two of those three were were screens, but finished off the the game eighteen of twenty five. Um, the first half capped it over the touchdown to the Bucks. I thought he played fine. Like uh, you said, mate, I don't know what you said, but I thought he was fine. It was it was mostly underneath stuff. Uh, he did Baker have a touchdown to Mike great, Evans. Bro. He, he was fine great. to me. Um, to me, I thought the Vikings kind of gave him this game multiple turnovers. They had really no business. The, the Bucks that is winning this game. The Vikings gave it to them. Number three, I have. Um, I lost my list. Number three, I have Jordan Love. I thought he had a solid day. Three touchdowns, zero interceptions, 123 passer rating. He pushed the ball down the field, fifth highest A dot of the day. Um, he did have some misses that got to clean up, but he also had impressive throws. He had Fucking the, the Texas route throw to Aaron Jones. It's a, it's that a good was a nice little on the on the money off the back foot. Um, he had the Dobbs touchdown, both Dobbs touchdowns, were really the one where he scanned the field the first one, finds him in the back of the end zone. So I think that for your dot. for your rookie, or not rookie, but for your debut as a franchise quarterback on the road, couldn't ask for much more. Jane, uh, Reed was s- sneaky the best receiver that day, but, you know. 
Sneaky. 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 Sneaky the best receiver. Because I was going to say, Romeo, he had Romeo the was two good, touchdowns, but, but he Reed, had, what, 28 yards, something Reed, like that? Reed, Reed was outside. Yeah. 34. Reed, Reed was for sure outside. Yeah, Reed he, was good. He made some noise. Yeah. The best receiver, low key. Aaron Jones. Yeah, got to hope his oh, hamstring. Of course, you know, yeah. My no, God. he got it. He His hamstring was hurt when he's running, so yeah, hopefully. He didn't you know. play after that. So that was a big point of emphasis when we were talking yeah. about the Packers preseason, that Aaron Jones was going to be the marquee guy. And he um, was. Four for me is Baker. You know, I thought he was solid, but he was really clutch. And I thought for a Bucks team that needed some juice, needed some life into them, Baker in the fourth kind of gave him that, you know, made some big-time throws. And the number three for me is Jordan Love. I watched that game from start to finish, uh, to the fourth quarter when it got really bad. And uh, he was good. Like, I thought, like, the inaccuracy was there, but he was poised, he was composed, and he was really good for a guy who's, you know, on the road, his first time officially starting as he he's knowing this is his team for the year. He was solid. You know, he made some throws. He was inaccurate in a couple of those, but for the most part, the decision-making was there. He made the right read for the most part. So that's my three. Packers Jordan being Love. the youngest team, yeah. youngest offense, that's exciting. They took a big time risk, but it could pay off. It could. Hoping you know. that Christian Watson gets back fast. Luke Musgrave had a handful of moments where he was open too. I don't know, honestly. Hopefully, he's back this week. Yeah. But the reason why I had Jordan Love below Baker is because I, I really thought that Matt well, Lafleur, huh? Matt Lafleur flexed his play calling muscles in this game. Like Matt Lafleur, there was he called a very great game. There was receivers that were high school open in the game. I mean, he was just really getting into his bag. The touch, the near touchdown to Aaron Jones on that screen play. Mm-hmm. I mean, Matt Lafleur was just very in his bag, and he made the day. He made the day easy for Jordan Love. That screen pass though was risky because he's turning his body cross field yeah. to, to make a lob pass. Yeah. That's one of those that if a defender's in that vicinity, That's that six. could be a pick six. Yeah. yeah. But it's a nice, ex- it's a well executed play that you only take every once in a while. The nicest play for me was Jordan Love on fourth down. Two of them. This was one of them. The on fourth down, the Texas route from Aaron Jones looks him off, t- draws the the linebacker to the right, allows the middle of the field to be open. Aaron Jones takes it. But one of those that he's looking off the the middle linebacker again reads on a crosser. Yeah. But the linebacker kind of goes to the post route. And Jordan kind of hits him with a no look pass. Yeah, that was amazing. That pass was filthy. That's why you know I think Jordan Love is a good starting quarterback already. I think he can run his system, and I like this for Matt Lafleur too. Just because with Aaron Rodgers, you had that criticism. Well, is he good without Rodgers? Well, now we're gonna get to see. You know, now we're gonna get to see this how will, good he is. And this I will think be more of the floor system because yeah, I mean it sure. was the floor system with Rodgers, but of course Rodgers has a lot of influence. Jordan Love not as much. Number two, I had Derek Carr. Just because he had a very bad red zone interception, so did Jimmy Garoppolo. To be fair, um, the game winning t- the game winning pass to Shahid was amazing. They had you saw like the mic up. Yeah, yeah, I saw was, the mic up. Oh dub. my goodness! Shout out to John Derek for Shahid. Carr. I love Derek Carr. And I'm glad he got the first win for the Saints at home. I had a ton of people going to my mentions when I compared Dalton and Carr, and they're like, "Oh, Dalton would never make that pass." That was a dot. Yeah, it was. I'm just like, it's it's week one. Let's relax. It's like. Give credit where credit is due. Can you give credit where Andy credit Dalton is due? Andy Dalton was very good last year. He was. But just come on, bro. He Future just Jack. won a game. Nah, he did just win a game, but still, that's very all these backup quarterbacks. Just but yeah, Derek Carr played really well. Number one, though, I think it was Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, he was on target with every throw. <coughs> he had the number one on target pass rate. He torched us. Just abusing Mathis, really. It was like, he up. was going wherever Mathis was. Jacoby Myers. That's why he had. Two touchdowns on a day because he was just targeting him. <laughs> Kobe got out of New England. Fucking guys, over here. Can you give it a break? <laughs> Man, listen, Jimmy Garoppolo, even despite leaving San Francisco okay. on yeah. week one, number one in EPA per play. Yeah, I think the efficiency king. You know, Jimmy G had a projected 100% overall huh? for yeah. that game. Yeah. What number was my brother to a two? Project, what'd you say? It's just, uh, what's the thing? Um, it's somebody who makes graphs on Twitter. Based on oh, oh, yeah, yeah, a yeah. bunch of different percentiles. Bro had 100%. That's tough. Uh, I don't think awesome. Jimmy G has done that in a long time. <laughs> um, my number two is Jimmy G. He was he was basically what he was in San Francisco. Super efficient. He was fourth in EPA. He goes into a hostile environment on the road. Josh Jacobs couldn't do anything, averaging 2.5 yards a carry. Got a W against the Broncos. I, none of us picked the, Bron- uh, the Raiders to win that game. We were all surprised. Number one, though, I thought was Derek Carr. Um, I thought you were surprised? Yes. I wasn't surprised. You picked the Broncos. Yeah. You, you said you were going to smoke them. You said, I put the house on it. <laughs> yeah, what are we doing here? Um, Derek Carr, I just thought, did a little bit more uh, 
<laughs> with, with what um, Jimmy G only had like 26 attempts, 25 attempts. Derek Carr did a little bit more, commanded the offense, completed 70% of his passes, over 300 yards, multiple big time throws. He had the most deep attempts in week one with nine. Um, got the ball to his playmakers in Alave and Michael Thomas. Got the W. Number two for me is Derek Carr because honestly, I thought he played great, but I do think. Ryan Tannehill cost the Titans more than Derek Carr won them That's the a game. Fact. He sucks. I, I, I do believe Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill was fucking. Poop. Yeah, he put them in, ex- and he still had a chance to win the game, even yeah. with him playing like shit. So, but I think Carr was really good. You know, he great quarterbacks played bad week one. Man. No, for sure. Except um, Ryan Tannehill, my brother was a was the best quarterback by far. Well, when you're elite, one. you play yeah, elite. Chris Olave is here, by the way. Uh, one and ones. Oh my god. And then so uh, number one, Jimmy G for me, he just played a perfect game. He completely destroyed the Denver Broncos, which was a shock to he all of us. Destroy his. He was, he was efficient. <laughs> Bro, no, he no. was efficient. Yes, he, he had 100 yes, percent great. Destroy. Yeah, he destroyed he was you guys. Efficient as fuck. He, he completely dissected and treated you guys like uh, high schoolers and puppies, and just dialed <laughs> you guys up from nail to nail, quarter <laughs> to quarter. Oh my god. It was truly embarrassing for you. Honestly, you guys should go back to the drawing board because this is the Eagles just let Mac Jones throw for over 300 yards. Uh-huh. And, Mac Jones, and Mac Jones could probably go to Oak, uh, to Las Vegas and play you guys and do exactly what Jimmy G just did. What, 200-something yards? Dissect and nah, destroy and win. Better. Mac Jones would be better. Respect probably Mac way Jones. better. Mac Jones, baby. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, Jimmy G just did what we thought he couldn't do, and do he won mean? the game. He, he, we all picked Denver. We given the facts. And we all were wrong, and I'm happy to be wrong. We all did think, though, that Jimmy G might have been fucking go to hell, Shanahan you prick? <laughs> man, what if the Broncos selected Mac Jones instead of Pastor Tan, man? No, we, we're, we're not doing worse. that. I don't think that's <laughs> ideal. No, the question is, what if we drafted Micah Parsons over Pat Sertan? Cool. Mm. What about Justin Fields? No. Okay. <laughs> He's out. Not this one. Not this one. I was hype. I, I remember I wanted Justin. I was like, let's I go. Yeah, and we I took Pat. And in hindsight, I was like, okay, I can live with this. And then Micah ended up becoming the best defensive player, n- not named Aaron Donald. Yeah, yeah PS2 was cool. He couldn't yeah. stop Jimmy I mean, listen, G, it's, it's a pretty good... We got the best corner in football. Yeah, it's it's a, rarer it's, to find an elite corner than it is a defensive lineman. I just hate that we are never going to see Mac Jones in a 49ers uniform. You never that know. That was destiny right you there. You never know. You got to get it. Crazier things have happened. Purdy's better. I'll just say I'm glad no, the not. show's over he with. Is. If Mac Jones is on San Fran, he's a top seven quarterback. Well, Holy fuck. Mac <laughs> <and> Jones. <laughs> top now, he's seven. A, I'm talking about he might finish... Statistically, he statistically, statistically, he will be in the top 10. He was not going to be a top seven quarterback. Bro said he's All Trevor right, Lawrence. Yo, this guy's nuts. Mac top Jones, seven is, yeah, man. Trevor Lawrence. That's literally him. Trevor Lawrence. And Tua. Ah, he'll we'll get there be, one day, hopefully. He'll never be that. He'll get there one day, hopefully. Shanahan system, he could be that. I mean, if you put if, Fields if in Niner's system, McDaniel, he has 2,000 rushing yards. If Mac was on the Dolphins. Yeah. I love this man. Do you really? I love him. It's good for you, bro. That's my brother. If Justin Fields was in the Shane Hoff, he had 2,000 rush yards. I don't know if he'd be accurate enough. Honestly. He'd have 2,000 rushing yards, though. I think, yards, I think we're all missing the point. What if Zach Wilson was in that offense? What if fucking Zach Wilson He'd was destroy there, the man. offense. <laughs> he'd literally shit. ruin Shane What if the Shane Jets Hoff? drafted Justin Fields like they should have and the Niners drafted Zach Wilson? I'm going to be honest. The Jets should have drafted Mac Jones. Remember when you should guys were Justin. pushing Zach over Trevor Lawrence? What a Ooh. dark day. Who's this guy next to me? Okay, I was going to say. Yeah, you too, bro. I, listen, <laughs> that, that, that was straight dream. delusion. <laughs> what straight a dark delusion. Jack is my guy. But I redeemed myself getting back on the Trevor train very easily. Brother. Redeem, huh? Brother, yes. Redeem. Yeah, now you said he could better than uh, Joe Burrow after this year. Joe Burrow said, and Josh. He said, I said oh, number two. I said that last year about Trevor Lawrence. Did you really? Mm-hmm. That he could be the second best quarterback in the league that was, year? No, so last good? year we had a... You were high on him. You are. Yeah. Last year we you had are. Glee. Did you said that last year? No, last year we oh, had a TikTok I don't know. clip. <laughs> Y'all don't remember? Y'all don't remember? I, we don't. Last year, I don't know if he was in it, but last year we had a TikTok clip. Who are you taking for the next 10 years? Trevor Lawrence or Joe Burrow situations being equal? We had you a, said I, Trevor? <laughs> yeah, I, I usually Trevor. remember How high you were on things. Burrow, though? You said that, and then he went to an AFC championship game? Ah, I don't Super Bowl. Think, I, don't, I don't think you cooked. I'm fucking crying. Wrap up the show, please. You're He's trying, gonna look at the clip. He can yeah. probably find it in like thirty. Yo, didn't seconds. you guys end the show a couple of weeks ago? Why don't you end this one? Me, us. We did it. It was like off the fly. We were. I think we were high. I don't think we could do it again. Mike, it's so easy, and that's gonna do it for this episode of the Pick Side Podcast. It's just the way we did it was perfect. Are you guys like, ready? Yeah, I got clip. He got. He got it. I told you to find it in thirty I'm seconds. One quarterback for the next ten years is it Joe Burrow or Trevor Lawrence? Oh shit! It was me. This is the beginning of next year, or excuse me, the beginning of last year. His pocket presence is really better. He has a better arm. Do you see what he's doing with less talent? With Joe Burrow, you know he was graded with. 
the kids cooking. You got Jamar Chase, and we talked about it before. When you get a number one, it elevates your game. When you have that type of talent, sometimes it can he gloss really? over the deficiency you have as a quarterback. Let's say they have the same situation. I'll take Trevor. You're talking raw physical attributes. So we all cook. Fuck that fraud, bro. Let's just look at last season. This guy, Joe Burrow, his ability to scramble in and out of the pocket. The thing about it is that Joe Burrow, you know that he has these limited attributes. Top five. Which Cry. means that Joe Burrow has <laughs> to be. Limited uh, attributes. I have no problem with that. So, or Trevor. It's really close. So then where's Trevor? This is what I'm saying. Joe Burrow has to reach. This sounds great on us. Yeah. yeah he he look, <laughs> if anything, we are the ones who pushed it. <laughs> Trevor Lawrence. Those physical attributes, great coaching, great supporting cast, and he can read defense at a high level. He can be one of the best quarterbacks. So who are you taking? It's tough. I love Trevor. Fucking guy takes forever to answer a fucking question. I said Trevor Lawrence. This Go back. I didn't hear it. He can be one of the best quarterbacks. So who are you taking? It's tough. I love Burrow. I love Trevor. Too. I'm fine. I'm going to go with Trevor Lawrence. Would you guys so we all did. So you thought you cooked, but in reality, me and Drew cooked. <laughs> no, Listen, cooked you, you say, you're saying he I ain't cooked because it, it was a tough question. Burrow's my guy. Me and Drew so, locked it in, though. He was like, Trevor going, Lawrence, stamp it. But Well, that's not a foregone conclusion, but Trevor Lawrence can fuck? be better. Yeah, of course. Yeah. We locked in, though. Yeah. Nah, it's a foregone conclusion. For us, it is. Fuck Joe Burrow. Caleb, QB2. Fuck you, man. Oh, that's rude. Yeah, that's, that's twice now. Would you choose him or me? You're thinking you know about it. it. That's and nuts. We're, we're predicting Joe Burrow or me? Oh, no, I'll choose you, of course. Uh, you were I'm not a big You thought about it for too long. What about his Mahomes? Way too long. Wait, yeah. Way too long. What was James Harden? I, I respect if you take James Harden. James that. Harden and River Brown are hanging off a cliff. You can only <laughs> save, save one. one. I I'm respect saying, if, you take, and if you take Harden, he gets a chip. Ooh. Oh, fuck. You add in that, he's going to be really James. put me in a bad predicament. How is he getting the chip? He's the man. He's how, the how number one. the fuck you he, want? He, 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 he somehow some way 35. plays Golden State again in the... In the, the then he plays uh, the LeBron. Then, then he beats the Celtics. Celtics. He no. wins in 2018. Or that short. I'm going to save Riv. Just because uh, it's a better man than me. It, it just, <laughs> he's, he's lying to our face no, right now. He's lying to our face. This is the face. reason. This is the reason. I will save Riff because if Harden wins a chip and Riff falls off the cliff. You can't brag about it. I have it. nobody to brag about it to. That's Boy, true, man. This the guy that This the guy that if Harden was a ring, I'm like. And he proves me right you. every I year. I told you. Yeah. You got his one. So that's why. The Jets have internally discussed trading for Jacoby Brissett. He's a good player, bro. Nice. That is a good player. A That's going to wrap up the show, though. Make sure you guys go download Mojo Fantasy. Link is in the bio. Use code PAS for a $100 deposit match. And that's going to wrap it up. You guys can follow us on Twitter at Pick Aside Pod, on Instagram and TikTok at Pick Aside Podcast. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.